allowing me onto your platform uh, for today uh, and to uh, provide an opportunity to speak to the Sangha. Um, I know the topic that's been provided today is the uh, six Sampardas to talk about them. I'm mainly going to speak about the four Sampardas. Um, whenever you lot are ready, I'm, I'm happy to go. Um, and if you at any point get bored or you've had enough and want to tell me to uh, be quiet, please let me know. And I appreciate that. All right. So um, today, obviously, I just want to thank Sangha for uh, listening in. We're going to do a talk on the uh, six Sampardas. I'm going to focus on predominantly the four Sampardas um, that were given a right to teach and educate and exist during the times of the Gurus themselves. So the four Sampradas that we're going to mention today are going to be the Odasis, the Nahangs, uh, the Nirmale, and the Sevapantis. There are a lot more Sampradas that we can go through and up Sampradas. Um, and if there's time, I'm quite happy to mention those or we'll talk about them later. I just think that the, the main four Sampradas here, the Odasis, you know, especially the Odasis, who have been really marginalised within the last 70, 80 years, are worth talking about with regards to uh, their relations within Sikhi. Um, so, yeah, that's where we're going to start today. Um, the Odasis. The Odasis have been around prior to um, Sikhi emerging, in the same way that the Sufis are considered to have been around prior to Islam starting. Um, they were considered the mystics, so... The Odasis, according to Sanatan Math, the the um, the old faiths state that the Odasis stem from uh, Sanak Sanandan Sanatan Sanat Kumar, who were the four sons of Brahma, who are um, individuals who never marry, never never grow up, but are enlightened individuals, and they pass down this knowledge, and they're considered Odasis. So the big issue we have is identifying. What a Dasi order is a Sikh order and a Hindu order, which has uh, become very, very much merged within the last 70 years. But within Sikhi, the Dasi order was started by Baba Sri Chanji. Baba Sri Chanji was the eldest son of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji, eldest Sev Jada. And they were born in Sultanpur, which is now um, a part of um, uh, Godputla and Baba Sri Chanji really became um, a visionary within the Odasis at the time of Sri Guru Nanak just settling within the area of Kartarpur now in Pakistan. Baba Sri Chanji himself was very distant from the world and remained in a meditative state, as states within the Sri Guru Pratap, uh, Nanak Pratap, sorry, it states within that as well. The Odasis are very different to the Nats, um, you know, because the Naths are distance from Sikhi, but there has been some sort of emergence of thought within the last 100 years. So the Adasis actually stem from Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji. So Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji allows the uh, Adasis to exist. The Adasis have a different form and a different uh, way of living, but under Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji, this is not shunned. Um, according to the Biddhis and the Odasis, there are actually three Gaddis given out by Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji, which is a controversial thought. The Gaddi of the Guru was given to Sri Guru Angad Dev Ji. So they, they even state that the, the Gaddi of the Guru Guruship stays within uh, the lineage of the Gurus that we have, the Guru Bansavan. So the, the lineage of the Gurus goes through there. But they state that two other Gaddis were given. One was the Gaddi of the Odasi that was given to Baba Sri Chanji. And the second, the third was the Gaddi of the Biddhis, which was given to Baba Lakhmi <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, so yes, there was um, the the emergence of the Udasis happens then. So Baba Sri Chanji at the time then starts the Udasi movement. The Udasi movement is the original missionary movement. So the Prachar of Sikhi was done by the Udasis at the time. Although we can originally see from the workings of Baba Sri Chanji, that the praise was all done of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji as the Jagat Guru. They were at Kalpurk, and in the same way that we see it in Gurbani, the praise within the Odasi Matras by Baba Sri Chanji was exactly the same. But uh, Guru Nanak Dev Ji were Paramatma, they were here. 
and Baba Sri Chandji made sure they propagated the name of Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji within uh, Punjab and further on. So Baba Sri Chandji goes from India into Pakistan, into Afghanistan, where we can find their places of pilgrimage, where they where they've actually stayed. So especially when in Kabul, there are two Udasi Deras. I don't know if they still exist now, but they were there in the 1970s. Um, and the Udasis basically um, did the Prachar of Sikhi in the early days. And we can see how far they went by the fire temple within Baku, uh, Azerbaijan, which above the fire temple itself has the Moon Mantra written upon there. And then the name of the Udasi Sadhu who was there doing the, the puja and the worship. So the Adasis were originally, like I said, they separated at that time when Guru Angad Dev Ji was given the Gaddi due to the hostility by um, the uh, Adasis and the Biddis on the, the Guruship. But by the time Baba um, Sri Chanji had returned to Amritsar and Sri Guru Ram Das Ji was on the Gaddi, the relations were mended. They were mended before that as well, but um, we see through the historic texts of the Gurpurtap that the Udasis um, really came back within the fold of Sikhi, within, within the times of the Gurus then. So within the fourth Guru, we get the Prasang of Baba Sri Chandra Udasi um, having their feet um, uh, cleaned with the, um, the beard of Sri Guru Ram Dasi when they questioned why their beard was so long. And Baba Sri Chandji then says there, and then this is the reason why the Gurgaddi never remained in the house and came to yourselves because of the Nimrata within Baba, Sri, uh, Baba Ram Dasi, Sri Guru Ram Dasi. Obviously, the relations continue on within the fifth Guru and the sixth Guru, where the, guru, the Gurus meet Baba Sri Chandji a number of times. We also get the stories within the Gurpurtap to say that there was a yearly treaty, there was a yearly amount of money that was provided by the gurus to the uh, head of the Biddikol. And the head of the Biddikol, even though it was Baba Lakhmi Dasi, it became Baba Sri Chandji very quickly. And, you know, 500 mora, gold mora and a horse was provided every year. Uh, so the relations between the Adasis and the, the Sikhs are still separate up until uh, although the the relations are very close, the um, the teachings are a bit different. It's only until we get to the sixth guru and Baba Sri Chandji asks Sri Guru Har Gobindji about their five sons, and obviously Baba Sri Chandji themselves never married, never became a glisti, ask for one of the guru's sons to be given to the Adasi uh, order, and it is that point that Sri Guru Har Gobindji uh, elects Baba Gurditta Ji to be that individual. And Baba Gurditta Ji is given the title of Jagat, Jagatka Tikka. So Baba Gurditta Ji, who is the father of Tirmal and Sri Guru Har Rai Ji, becomes the head of the Udasis after Baba Sri Chandji. So all of a sudden, within the Guru lineage, we now have the, the head of the Udasis and the Udasi order. The Udasi order from there, Baba Gurditta Ji, is pivotal in actually creating the Udasi order we see today. What he does is he takes upon the four main shish, the main students of Baba Sri Chandji, and he assigns them different areas. So the Udasi order under Baba Gurditta Ji create the four tuni, the four orders. And the four, uh, the four, sish, four shish or four Sikhs or four students under Baba uh, Gurditta Ji are Balu Hasna, Fulaji, Goendaji, and Alamastaji. So these individuals then start their four different orders in the four directions that Baba Gurditta Ji has sent them in. What we also get during the times of the Gurus is the, the further increase in the capacity of the Odasis and their orders. So we have the four Thune started under Baba Gurditta Ji who is the head of the Adasis, and then he passes, uh, once uh, Baba Gurudita Ji give up their mortal mortal form, the four individuals, Balu Hasna, Fulji, Goenji, and Alamastaji, are the individuals that spearhead the movement of the Adasis. However, under the, <clears throat> the other Gurus after that, so under Siri Guru Hardaiji, 
we get three individuals who are blessed and they are ordered to start their own Udasi movements under them. So we get Bhai Sotarisha. Uh, Bhai Sotarisha is mentioned under the stories of Guru Har Gobind Ji, uh, Satin Barsha, Sri Guru Har Rai Ji, and Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji. So Sotarishahi were one of the Bakshish orders that were started. The second Bakshish that was given was the Sangat Shahis. So the Sangat Shahi order started under Sri Guru Har Rai Ji. And you get the Pagata Pavaniya Ji. So they're a third order that were bestowed under Sri Guru Har Rai Ji. Uh, Sri Guru Teg Bahadur Ji bestowed the order of the Miha Shahiya Ji. The Miha Shahiya were the fourth Bakshish. And then Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji <coughs> starts the Jita Maliya and the Pagta Maliya. So in total, we now end up, by the time we get to the time of Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji, we get four orders that are um, put together under Baba Gurdita Ji. And we get six orders uh, known as the Bakshish. Um, which have been given the uh, the authority to start their own uh, upsampada of udasis. So in total, we have ten by them. And the reason Guru Gobind Singh Ji states that we've now got the four tuna and the six bakshish, which total ten upsampadas of udasis. And this is to compete with the naths, uh, such as under Goraknath, Pangarnath, um, Parthri, and people like that. They had ten different upsampadas. You know, one of them is mentioned within the Japji Sahib, Ai Panti Sagar Jagati. That's one of the Upsampradas of the Naths. Uh, and Guru Gobind Singh Ji said, we will now have 10 uh, Odasi orders uh, in order to compete with the 10 Upsampradas of the Naths. Now, the, obviously, the Odasi Samprada is completely different in the way that uh, they worship, uh, the way that they continue their lineage today but um mentioning them within Sikh texts i'm trying to think of obviously within Sri Gopratha they are mentioned a number of times the Odasis have got their own grunts to mention their own lineage um the one place we do get a mention of the Odasis is the Bhichitra grant within the Sri, Gur- uh, Sri Dasam grant Guru Gobind Singh Ji within there is writing about the the battle of Pagani and within the Battle of Pagani, he mentions that the Udasi order comes with the Sikhs, with the Singhs, onto the battlefield. And what takes place during that time is the Udasis run off uh, the battlefield, fearing for their lives, and they take with them a bead of the Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, the Sarup, that they, they, they were there to protect that Sarup, apart from Kirpal Mahant. Kirpal Mahant takes a club uh, during that battle, uh, Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji asks him what he's going to use as a weapon, and he, he says, This is the club, this is what I'm going to use, and he, he fights that battle. Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji, within the, the um, Bachitra Nartik, writes that if it wasn't for the valour of Kirpal Mahant, that he would have had the Adasis removed from the Panth, they would have been kicked out from the Panth at the time. So there we get a mention un- under Sri Guru Gobind Singh within the Dasam Granth of the Adasi still being within the order. Um, so, and that's all due to the valour of one month. Uh, Guru Gobind Singh also within the Sri Guru Pratap Surya Prakash mentions the Adasis when they are leaving Anandapur Sahib. When obviously the treaties have come in and the Singhs have had, you know, cannot take um, the the enduring times that they've had um, and want to leave an Anandpur side. Badavas are given and people are left. It is under the uh, guidance of the Adasis that Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji leaves uh, Sri Anandpur side. Because they asked Sri, uh, Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji, how are we supposed to have longer here? How are things supposed to continue? And Guru Sahib gives them uh, uh, the Updesh and they continue on from there. So that's that's what the Adasis were. As shown within the Gorpata, when the Adasis uh, sorry, when Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji left the Takht Sahib, it was the Adasis that looked after the Takht Sahib and all the Gurdwara around it. And it's through those orders that the Adasis were the original missionaries and the caretakers of the Taram Sahib. They also cared for all the, the Grants and they performed Purjan. The other thing about the Adasis were the Adasis were seen as uh, individuals who uh, did not <coughs> possess a fighting character. They did not, and they weren't perceived as a threat to the government at the time. So they were allowed to perform their purchase. <clears throat> so we get the 
Sikh Udasi is coming from Baba Sidi Chanji. And then you get the story of the other Udasis um, coming from Sanatan Math, which I'll cover again. Um, the history of the Udasis continues on, where we see um, the card saver first come of Sri Harmandasai, which is where they made sure that the card saver and the sarovar is uh, of running water, and the water is um, channeled through uh, the nairs and the rivers and everything close by. You know, that all that seva was carried out by Mahant Pritam Das from Sangalwara, which is outside uh, the Rabar side. We see, obviously, the stories of Sangat Das who went and used his abilities to get a line to bring all the um, wood for the Lunga um, at the Rabar side. He used to bring that in every day. Um, Maharaj Ranjit Singh Ji is linked to the Udasis through Santokdas. Mahant Santokdas was the head of Brambuta, which is another uh, uh, Udasi Dera, which is situated just outside the Bar Sahib, and still exists today. And the other thing we also see is if we have a look at some of the old grants, uh, such as the uh, Gurtid Sangra, which is made by uh, Panditara Singh Narottam, where he mentions um, going to all these different uh, old Gurukars uh, from the times of the Gurus, which are there to um, keep the historical place of the Guru alive. He shows a, a lot of these deity are looked after by Udasi Mahants or Udasi Sevadars who are doing the Seva. Uh, obviously, we get <clears throat> two incidents that um, distance the Udasis today from uh, Sikhs of yesteryear. So the two incidents that come along are, one is, obviously, it's just happened about 100 years ago, we've just uh, all remembered the Saka Nankana side, where Mahanta Narendas, who was the Adasi there, was corrupted by the, the British government and uh, obviously led to the Saka where um, we had, obviously, the Shibdiya take place. That was a pivotal moment uh, where the Adasis began to become ostracised from the rest of the pump. The second was the movement of the SGPC and the land grab, where any Guru cards that were linked to the Gurus or linked to individuals linked to the Gurus, such as um, we see uh, by Saloji's uh, Gurdwara in uh, Amritsar and places like that under the SGPC, in the same way they were looking at anything under Baba Sri Chanji um, and they were looking at a land grab. So all the Dere that were under the Adasis were considered to be now SGPC land. The Adasis at that time realized that this is all they had because they weren't householders and they weren't in relationships, they didn't have families, um, especially at that time, they never used to. So what they did was they changed their story. The Adasis then distanced themselves from Sikhi and in order to keep hold of their deity, um, stated that actually Siri Guru Nanak Dev Ji wasn't the guru of Baba Sri Chanji, it was actually somebody called Avanashi Muni. And then they linked themselves back to the same Udasi order that you find today within um, the Sanatan month. So the Udasis then changed the story again to say that the, you know, the four sons of Brahma, they followed um, the Udasi order and their lineage goes all the way down to Mahant Santarin. And Santarin was the head Mahant who was at the incident of the uh, Satcha Soda incident where Siri Gurunandirji had 20 rupees to feed the sadhus. And that's where they say Santaran ended up being Gurunandirji's guru and then Baba Sri Chanji follows from there. So the Udasis distance themselves really from the Sikhs of today. And a lot of Udasis, if you don't know them, will still give you that story. The, the Udasis are from this Sanatan order. If you actually sit down with the Udasis and go, actually tell me what the truth is, they will tell you, well, we are Sikhs, but if we turn around and say we are Sikhs and this is what our lineage is, then we lose everything that we have. The Adasis end up leaving the Panth. Uh, again, Isan Singh Ji Muskeen does a, a really good piece of Qatar on the marginalisation of the Adasis uh, from the Panth and what we lose from them. And the big thing is that he says they were the original missionaries, they did the Prachar, they were able to circumnavigate and get into these areas of Sanat and Taran that we probably can't get into today and do the Prachar of Siri Guru Granth Sahib. There's a massive difference within the, the 
rituals and the red and the code of conduct of the Avastis that we see to everyday Khalsa uh, adherence to something. Uh, the big difference you have is the Guru Shish relationship. So they do not um, take the Khande Bhatte Dharma. The Amrit that they take is a Charan Pahal. Um, so uh, water that has been anointed by the feet of their Guru. That's what they take and they adopt a living Guru. Um, to both worship and follow. In Odasi uh, Diras, today you will still see that they will have statues, lots of statues of their uh, gurus and the, the gurus above them and people like that, including places like Brambhuta and Sangalwada, straight outside the Um The Odasis, the reason for this, the Guru Shish relationship, is the Odasis, instead of worshipping on the form of Param Ishwar, they spend their time worshipping on the form of Ishwar, which is a Sargon Swoop. So they look at a form uh, and worship upon a form. And they worship the five forms of Ishwar. And those are the predominant forms that they worship. So the five forms of Ishwar are Shiva, Vishnu, Suraj, uh, Shakti, and Ganesh. Those are the five that they focus upon. And their Prachar is even focused upon the same as well. So... Whereas within the city, uh, within the Gurdwaras, you will get both. You'll get the worship of the Sargun and the Nirgun. So the Nirgun is when we do the Katha of Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib Ji and the Shavad Guru. And then the worship of the Sargun is when we listen to the historical accounts of the Gurus. Um, in the same way, the Adasis focus on Ishwar. So they, if you go to any Adasi Devas, you'll find that the majority of the Katha they perform is of the Bhagavad Puran or the Purans themselves, the 18 Purans, they'll do that. You will also find that the Guru Pratap Suraj Prakash is um, one of the main grants that they do cut up on. Um, because obviously the, the Guru is a Sargon form, and they worship the Sargon form through the Murtis and the previous Guru. Um, <clears throat> I have been back to India not long ago, well, actually it's five years now, but in the last five years when I went, I visited a number of Adasi Gurus. Uh, and a number of Adasi Deiras, and I spoke to their their Mahants or their Gurus or whatever you call them within there, but they uh, were very different. They still had the Adasi Deiras and the Murti and things within them, but they were doing the Katha of Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji when I went there. The Katha was being performed of uh, the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji within the morning. Katha midday uh, of Bhai Gurdas Niwana, and I was surprised that the Gurdas up in the evening. They did an open Katha as well every now and then of the Bhagavat and the Gita and things like that. But they were moving back towards the old Sikhi Parchar. Um, I met a Kathakar who came to Leicester within the early 2000s. Uh, his name was Bhai Yavanashi Ji. He was a Kathakar who performed in Leicester and he was an Adasi. Um, his knowledge was far beyond what I'd see with the Katha cards that we had here. And he, like I said, he performed the, the Katha of Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib Ji and Guru Pratap every day. But he, he explained to us that because they move from Udasi Dera to Udasi Dera, what they do is normally do the Katha of the Bhagavad and things like that uh, because they spend their time mostly within southern India or, or middle India where uh, there's a lack of seats. So it's the only way where they can do their Prachar of these grants in order to then talk about Sikhi and then talk about Sikhi to the masses without openly talking about Sikhi and influencing them in that way and marginalising themselves. The Adasis of today are very different. <clears throat> so like I said, the majority of Adasis we find now are very different. Um, one of the things, because they have self-marginalised themselves and uh, distanced themselves from Sikhi, uh, in order to show that they're not Sikhs and they don't want their diras and um, uh, garants to be taken off them. They have now, one of the things that you will see them doing is the use of tobacco, which obviously is a budget within Sikhi, within the Rehabs. But they do, you'll see them either chewing tobacco or uh, smoking tobacco, which even they say is not something they used to do, but it's something that's been started in order to say that they are completely different. However, we have had, you know, recently some some Udasis that have come up and been instrumental to Purchar of today. Um, one of them is Swami Brahmdev. Swami Brahmdev, unfortunately, has passed away now, but he had a number of books, um, but one of them was the Dasam Granth and the Sri Charitra Pakan. 
when you talk to any of the uh, sadhus or professors, they said there was nobody better to talk about the the influence of the Chaitra Pakyan, the authenticity of Siddhi Guru Gaur in writing this text, than Swami Brahmadev, who was an Adasi. Um, he was uh, completely knowledgeable in everything to do with the Siddhi Dasam Granth and was pivotal in making sure that um, those individuals who were out to uh, present a case for the Dasam Granth not being written by Siddhi Guru Gaur Singhji was opposed. Uh, other, fa- other great Adasis um, of the order, Swami Isha Das and Swami Shantanand, uh, have been doing Katha, like I said, of, of the uh, of the Grand Swami Isha Das. He has passed away there. Uh, Swami Shantanand here in Jalandhar has sat on their Gaddi. Uh, and they, like I said, their Prachar is, is of, of the Grants within Sikhi as well as of those within Sanatan. But you'll see them at um, numerous. Um, Guru Kars doing Katha, Barsis and things like that. And their relations have become a lot more close to Sikhi uh, as they used to be. So the Adasis in that way have, <clears throat> are one of the first Sampradars that we get within within the Panth. Uh, they have been marginalised, they have moved away. Um, but there's a massive history around them. If anybody wants to learn more about them, I can point them towards some books, uh, some Matras and uh, some of their scriptural writings as well. So that's the first of the four Sampradars. I'm hoping you're still all there and listening to this. Um, and if that's the case, I'll uh, continue on with a quick brief uh, history on the Nahangs if you're lot happy with that. I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that as a yes. Thank you. Hanji, of course. <laughs> thank, <Hanji. you. laughs> no, thank you. Um, right, the uh, Akali Nahangs, are the, you know, more formerly known as Nahangs, consider themselves... Um, to have commenced as a Sampradha in different ways. There are those that state that they are a Sanatan Sampradha and they started from Shiva and they are the adherents of Shiva and they possess the Thamogun and they continue on the Shivite traditions, which are very similar to a, another Sampradha within Sanatan Math called the Junakara. <clears throat> that, you know, but through Sikhi, we, we see two ways. A Kalpur, you know, uh, Sri Guru Gobind Singh you men- mentions a Kalpur Ki Forge. The, these, these are the, the generals under them. You know, the Akali Nahangs come through the Gurus. The lineage starts with the Gurus. And if you ask where, um, there is, there's those that say they start under the sixth Guru, but they're former, you know, they're formalized in Dasam Pasha. But then there's others that say that actually it was Siddhi Guru, Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Ji that started the Akali Nahangs. The Akali Nahangs are said to be started in the Siddhi, under Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Ji because of um, Gurdwara Barsha Sahib that is found within Bengal now, where Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Ji had to deal with Noor Shah, who was, who was what we'd consider to be a, a, a witch or an individual with, with occult powers and abilities who had turned by Mardanadi into a, a goat. And Guru Nanak Dev Ji is there. They picked up the Barsha um, and they challenged Noor Shah. So the first time you see them with the weapons, this is obviously the incident that takes place before Maharaj picks up Salotar to challenge Kaljuk within the Nana Prakash. It's written as well. So it's said that the Akali Nahangs actually start through Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji. The tradition is passed from Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji to Baba Buddha Ji. And then from Baba Buddha Ji, obviously you get the... Um, the art of weapons being passed to Shema Pasha, and from Shema Pasha, the order going on further. Um, the form of the Nahangs themselves with the blue colour is mentioned by Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji um, first, prior to it being mentioned anywhere else, and that is within the Karni Nam as well, where Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji says that the Nilabana Paharke, you know, it states within there that. That's what the, the order will wear. They'll wear the blue colour. And within the Ogardanti, Sri Guru Gobind Singh also says, Jagya Singh Jodha Tare Neel Pesa. So they, they mention that as well. Uh, the Odasis, like I mentioned earlier, they have a completely different form. I, I, didn't, I didn't touch upon that, but they wear ochre, saffron clothing. Um, they're not formalised with a Dastar or anything, while the Nahangs are completely different. You know, they wear this blue clothing which stands out a mile. Anybody can see their form. Uh, the story of the the tall, the star, comes from Baba Fateh Singh Ji, 
which is told many times, and I'm sure most of you have heard it, so I won't go over it again. Uh, but they wear this uh, tall to start in order to increase their height so they can be trained in, in the weapons of justice. But there's also a second story that is found within the Sri Gurpatap Surj Prakash, where Bhai Maran Singh is, is said to be uh, intoxicated on, on, uh, on intoxicants with after the, um, the incident that takes place at Machivara and Chamkar Sahib. And Siri Guru Gorm seems to be seeing that, you know, he's, he's under this spell of intoxicants and his distal is everywhere. It's at that point Siri Guru Gorm seems to state that this will be the distal of the order. Um, again, you know, it's, it's something within Siri Guru Pratap. It's not mentioned quite often. Um, it's mentioned actually within the Bharata Mat Darpan by Mahanta Ganesha Singh. He mentions it within there. So the term Nahang itself um, is defined um, in Farsi as being a crocodile, a magarmach, and within um, Sanskrit as being a pujang, which is a snake. So that's what the Nahangs are supposed to, when their fighting orders are, that's what they're supposed to be like. As fierce as a crocodile is a snake, they can battle wherever. Um, but Nahang it, itself means uh, to not have any um, pride, to not have any pride at all. So the Nahangs themselves are, are considered a separate order. The difference you will find within the Nahangs is their veneration towards all three Granths, which is the Sri Guru Granth Sarji, the Sri Dasam Granth, and the Sri Sarabha Granth. They consider all three Granths of an equal status. And you'll see that if you ever go to one of their uh, Amritsatyas, you'll see all three Granths present. Um, their recitation of the Granths is you know, you know, more than anybody else when it comes to especially Sarabla and Dasan. Um, uh, and that happens because their, you know, their link to Siri Guru Gobind Singh Ji is greater than all the other Sampradans. I'll say that with that. They have three Ishtadivs. Uh, so they consider three things worthy of worship the Nahans. So you get a Galapurk is the first, the first Ishtadiv, the first, you know, the greatest of all to worship. So the, the Nirgun form. Um, and then they give the sar- uh, the uh, not sargon form but the shabad form. So they say um, that the shabad guru is the second ishdev, and then the third ishdev, which is considered the sargon form, is the shastar. So these are the three forms that are to be worshipped by the nahangs, uh, which is completely different from the pacifist forms of the nirmalaya seva Pantis and the udasis. Although they do worship weapons. They don't worship or venerate weapons in the same way that the Nahangs do. Um, so, yeah, so they say, you know, Puja Kalda, Vidar, uh, you know, they, they mention these three things and it's mentioned within their bolas as well. The I'm going to touch on a couple of differences within this Sampurda to any of the other Sampurdas. Um, I, I know somebody will probably ask a question later. Um, I'm trying not to focus upon the differences because the differences are what separates us and I'd rather focus on what we all have in common uh, as some of us. The marriage. Um, the marriage ritual, according to the Nahangs, uh, was that previously, I think, yeah, it's Gyani Guru and the Singh Nangli who's written about this and he's mentioned it within his Katha as well, that previously when Nahangs were getting married, they used to Marry with the lava being performed, but they used to circumambulate Sri Guru Granth, uh, Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Obviously, during the times of the battle, and when they, after Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji had passed the Gurgaddi on to Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, then the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji would be used as the Ishdev to do the uh, lava. However, it's, it's mentioned that within the jungles, when the Gurus did not have access to Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, the and Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji had to be kept by either the Odasis or Nirmale or other orders while they were being hunted, if they were to get married, they used to succumbulate five Nahang Sings or five Sings, five Amritari Sings, uh, which I think is a, an, interesting, an interesting thing to, to look upon as part of marriage rites. Um, Chatka. Chatka is something that will be mentioned, the, the consumption of, of um, uh, Chatka Mahas. The Nahangs consider themselves above karma. Uh, and again, it's written within the Parat Matadarpan as well, that the Nahangs will spend most of their time 
reading Barney, reciting Barney. So these sorts of things of, um, you know, eating chuck guys above karma. And they lived according to situations where they lived in jungles and that was their only form of staple diets at the time. It says uh, within the Red and the Red Rama that food as in this, it was seen as a necessity and it was not due to the desire for um, the taste of meat that the Nahums ate meat. It states within the um, Red Rama, I'm just trying to remember, it states within the Red Rama, it states, Swadala Langar Veke, Lalich Ate, Be Swadala Veke, Nindakare Sotanakaya. So it says, you know, you, you eat longer because you, you need to eat it. But if you eat longer due to its taste, then you're at Tankaya. Um, but the mention of Chakka's uh, form of diet within the, in the Hung way of life is mentioned within the Prachin Pantprakash by Pai Gatan Singh Pangu. The Red Nama Pai Desa Singh and the Mukta Nama Pai Sahib Singh all mention the uh, diet and the consumption of Chakka. Um, Shahidi Deg is a, uh, another thing that is a staple of the Nahangarat. Shahidi Deg is a, a, a tradition that they still have, which is mentioned within the Rad Rama by Desa Singh and the Suraj Prakash. It is mentioned as well. No other Sampradas uh, actually have this or the Chatka within their, their Rad or their daily life. But it is. Uh, important to the Nahang way of life. Their traditions with martial warfare, um, prachar of their traditional tenets continue to this day through the um, both the Buddha and the Tarnada. Obviously, we have a number of a number of different uh, upsampradas within the Nahang order. And they have minor differences between them, but the majority of them continue on to go uh, with the same tenets, uh, and you'll find that. So I, I didn't really want to focus a lot on the Nahangs. There's a lot of stuff on the internet already on the Nahangs. Um, I'm happy to answer questions later on on the Nahangs, and I know there will be some. I've purposefully tried to keep it short. Um, the Nirmalas. The Nirmalas are the third order we're going to go into. Um, and again, this one was started under the guidance of Siddhi Guru Gorbinson. The Nirmala order trace their, their lineage back to 1688 when Pandit Raghunath, who was uh, within the Guru's house, uh, not Guru's household, but within the, the court poets, was there to teach the Sikhs um, other grants and things like that. And he was there as, as, a, as a Brahmin with the other Brahmins within the Guru's court. Siddhi Guru Gorman Singh asked um, Pandit Raghunath, if he would teach the Sikh Sanskrit. And at that point, obviously, Raghunath said no, that he, that he wouldn't be doing that because of the, the differences in social castes and customs that they kept. And at that point, Siri Guru Gobind Singh Ji then sends uh, by, uh, by Gandha Singh, Karam Singh, Sena Singh, Veer Singh and Ram Singh in their ochre clothes to go to Banaras to learn. Initially, when they go, obviously, they, they are told they won't be able to because they're dressed up with the Shastras and everything else. And then Guru Sahib says that as long as they do not um, cut their hair, they'll be, uh, they are to learn the Vidya however they can. The five Nirmalas went and learnt the Vidya, learnt how to uh, read Sanskrit, um, which was essential because, obviously, we had the court poets at the time under the guidance of Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh Ji transcribing different texts for the Vidya Sagar Granth that was being created. So the five Nirmala go to Banaras. They learn their Vidya and they return back to uh, the guidance of Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh. The five Nirmala then trace, this is why you'll see um, a lot of the Nirmala orders saying that they're either uh, linked to Pai Dea Singh Ji or Pai Taram Singh Ji as a start. So what happened was the five Nirmalas came back and they were placed under the guidance of Pai Dea Singh Ji and Pai Taram Singh Ji. And it's for that reason that Pai Dea Singh Ji and Pai Taram Singh Ji are seen as the heads of all the Nirmala orders. And it's the reason why all the Upsampradas claim their lineage back to them. So you might go onto the internet and see Pai Dea, Pai Dea Singh Ji's uh, 
Sampurda, such as your Radha Sahib Sampurdas today, or Harkwari Sampurdas, or Baba Dalil Singhji Sampurdas, you'll see them all going back to them. So 12 Up Sampurdas find themselves linked to Paideya Singhji, Piyara Paideya Singhji, and six of them are linked to Pai Taram Singhji. Uh, with regards to the garbs that you see the Nirmalas wear, you'll see some of them wearing either white clothes, some of them wearing ochre clothes. You'll see, um, like, Santa Kahar Singhji, Santa, yeah, Kahar Parwale, Santa, Santa Kahar Singhji, Kahar Parwale. They wore blue clothes like the Nahangs. You'll see uh, Jolali Sant, who uh, will wear a, a farla and other things. Uh, we had uh, Mahantapal Singh Loyawale, who now passed away, but they used to be in hung before they were Nirmali. So even as a Nirmali, they wore the ochre clothes, but still had a Nihang Fadla. So the garbs are different. They don't, and unlike the Nihangs, where the Nihangs have a basic uniform, the, the Nirmali don't. Um, they, they have different uniforms. And, well, to the point that you will now find Nirmali, um, who do not keep their kiss. Um, you know, I can't account for that. I know somebody might ask me that question today, but the lad that was started uh, under Siddhi Guru Gorbhan Singh does not account for that neither. But you'll see that the different garbs and different guises for the Nirmala Sabis. Um, the Nirmalas are essential to Sikhi when it comes to um, the history of the Sikhs being retained in a written format or the guidance of different grants being created under the Nirmala. There's a text called the Nirmal Sampardai, um, which can be found on the Punjab Digital Library. And if you have a look within there, the handwritten grants that are available, written by different Nirmala Sants or Nirmala students or sadhus or institutions, that there's hundreds, there's absolutely hundreds. You know, the earliest Nirmala text we see is under the guidance of the Guru. So the Adhyatam Prakash, which is a Vedanta text that is still taught to the Sampradas today, or still taught to people who want to become Gyanis or Pracharaks, was written by Pandit Sukha Singh, uh, and that was written as a court poet. Um, and like I said, that's still taught to them. We get um, individuals who say that actually the only people that uh, can consider themselves the Khalsa are the Nahangs, because they took the Amrit under Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh and everybody was at the time when they hung, what we see uh, Santa Maran Singh who took his Amrit under Siri Guru Gobind Singh uh, from um, the Panjabiyar at the time was head of the it was part of the Nirmala movement at the time and he was the teacher of Pandit Gulab Singh Pandit Gulab Singh went over to uh, Banaras wrote a number of texts um, out of which only four main ones survived today uh, Adhyatam Ramayana Pabla Samrit, Mokshpant Prakash, um, and I'm forgetting one. Um, yeah, so there, there were four texts all together written by uh, Pandit Gulab Singh. There were actually a lot more, but because Pandit Gulab Singh was a Sikh, the Brahmins were not happy with him taking the video that he was hearing um, and uh, then putting it into a written format in, at night that they actually set fire to his, his abode there. And he uh, lost a lot of his works. The Nirmali have focused on mostly Vedantic texts, or um, they look for the universality or the universal oneness of religion. So they focus on monism. Um, they don't look at the boundaries of this is Sikh, this is Muslim, this is this is this, or this is a Gnostic text. They look at is there the truth in this, uh, and that's where they go. So their focus is on Vedanta, which comes from, um, you know, 4,000 4, surtiya of the, the Vedas, which then creates things such as the, the Gita or the Upanishad. Uh, they don't focus mostly on historical texts, but they focus on texts guiding an individual into the inner oneness and becoming one with God. So the inter instrumental, we see how instrumental they are, especially in the 18th century when they start writing their texts, such as Kavi Santok Singhji's Gopratav, Surya Prakash and Nana Prakash, which are read today, uh, and the Pracharis done in all the grants. 
we get people like Panditala Singh Narottam writing numerous dikas. Um, we get a Gyan Gyan Singh who, who's there to mention. You get, you know, the Garab Ganjani Tika, which is an interesting Tika by Govi Santokshanji on the Sri Jabji side, which is actually created in order to um, oppose some of the misguided um, things mentioned by Swami Nandagan within his texts. Um, we have all the grants by Mahant Ganesha Singh. We have obviously texts being created today from the Nirmali all the time, um, the Vedant Paripasha, um, the Grand Sandat Pandit Gobind Singh. Like I said, I, I could do a, a whole book on different historical texts written by the Nirmalas, um, but it's massive. They were instrumental into providing the prachar to the communities around Punjab and outside to the other communities as well. They again are seen as uh, pacifists, and they are pacifists to a point. Although, like I said, I'll, I'll go into some examples where, where people have crossed over. And while the British were targeting the Akali uh, Nahans after the Anglo Sikh Wars or prior to that as well, it was the Nirmala and the Adasis who ended up doing the Parchar um, within the caretaking of the Guru Kars and the Deiras. They also obviously were the ones under the um, Maharajas, different Maharajas, such as um, um, Kavi Santokhsin, you're working under the Maharaja of Gente, where he is given the opportunity to put everything together with regards to his text. Or you get the Freed Court Maharaja putting the money towards uh, Gyanyu Badan Singh and the Freed Court here, um, Nirmalas, putting together the first Tika of the Siri Guru Granth Sahibji. So the Nirmali became court poets uh, as well. They worked under the court poets, they worked under the Maharajas, um, where they got the ability to to write all their texts. Um, I will mention something that probably is controversial to some people. Nirmal, the stream Nirmal Panthabod by Gyanyi Balawan Sindhi Kota Guru The Nirmal Panth Itihas and the Malwa uh, Panth Itihas, they all mention uh, many of Sampradas of the Nirmalas. One of them is the Girivar Sampada. The Girivar Sampada comprises of what we would consider to be your modern Tuxal today. So your Sant Sundar Singhji comes under there, Sant Yeni Gurbat Singhji, Sant Yeni Mohan Singhji, Sant Kutar Singhji, Sant Janel Singhji, they all fall under the Nirmala Sampada there. I'm sure somebody will question that at some point, which is fine by me. So that's a quick run of the Nirmalas. Nirmalas, again, like the Odasis, have two, they have two sets of orders. So you'll find Nirmalas that uh, are very strict to the Kalsarad, and they will go with, it's a, not a non-pacifist order, because um, they do learn all their weapons, they do all that. But what they don't do is obviously the Chatka, the Shihidi Dig, uh, those sorts of things they don't follow, which the Nangs do, but they follow the punch cars, the Red, Yubani, the Shabad Guru, you know, people who are really strict on that, like Santhari Singhji, Dandari Wale, Sanjigji Singhji, Karko Wale, the Rara Sahib Sampada, you know, they're very strict on that. But you will also find within the Nirmala order a Guru Shish order that exists very similar to the Adasis, where you will have some um, adherence within the Nirmala order take. Uh, either Charnapal or Nam from an uh, oh, be given Nam from an, a Nirmala teacher. Um, I've been to some places where that does exist, um, and both of those traditions continue within the Nirmala order. And you'll find even within the Nirmala order, there's arguments between the two different uh, institutions uh, about why it should and should not continue. So yes, that's a quick run on the Nirmal order. And the last order I want to run through is the Seva Panthis. Seva Panthis um, are the fourth order that was started under the Gurus. Seva Panthis were actually started under Siri Guru Teg Bhavaji by Kanayaji, who everybody knows is the, uh, the enlightened Sikh who saw nothing but Siri Guru Gaur and Sinji when administering aid to individuals on the battlefield. Pai Kanayaji was actually given the, the ability and, and the uh, permission to start the order of Seva Panthis under, under Siri Gurtegh Babaji. 
the same up on Thieves are um, known as the Udden Shahis today. Uh, the Udden Shahis is, is what people um, consider them to be. So the reason for that is due to Pai Udden Shah, who um, was third in line um, as the leader of those that Sampradha. So we have Pai Kanayaji. Pai Kanayaji uh, handed the Gaddi over to, or the leadership over to Pai Sevaram. Pai Sevaramji then passed the, the leadership over to Pai Adansha. Pai Adansha was instrumental in uh, Sikhi Purjar at the time as the head of uh, the Seva Panthis. Pai Adansha, uh, quite differently to the Nahangs Nirmali and the Adasis of the time, was not looking to have a Siddhi Mahant. There is no Siddhi Mahant at the time. Um, so a, an established leader of that Sampurda. The Buddha Dal obviously had their, their leaders, the Nirmalis had theirs, and the Udasis had theirs, but Pai Udan Shah was against that. And he was also against a specific garb, uh, so he did not want a uniform for, to identify who Seva Panthis are. So within the Seva Panthis, um, he, the line that he recites within uh, his historical accounts is Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji's Pekh the Kari Jagat Kul Logan Kovas Kim Antakala Kati Kutio Bas Narakamolin, which basically states that through a guise, you know, through being a charlatan through a guise, it is not something he's looking at. And he, he didn't want to put a guise towards the Seva Panthis. So you'll find Seva Panthis wearing all sorts of traditional clothes, whether it's they adorn white clothes or black clothes, or, you know, it, it's, it's all really different. Um, by Mani Singhji, um, who is Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji Lakari for the Dam Dama Sahib, is also counted as one, the head of the Seva Panthis within the Sattu Gali uh, Sampurda, of Sampurda, which we find at Amritsar. Um, again, the Seva Panthis are considered pacifists as well. Um, they spend the majority of their time looking at serving the community as well as Purjar. Uh, so the, the Kaar Seva. Um, the orders come out originally from the Seva Pantis. The Prachar is very similar to the um, to the Nirmalas, where their focus is on, on Vedanta. The focus is on Gurbani and looking at Gurbani in a way that what you're looking to preach is the um, the oneness of the individual and becoming one with God. The Prachar by the Seva Pantis which is completely different. What you'll find with Nirmala is that the Nirmala starts translating um, specific Sanatan texts into um, into a Gurmatha Braj Pasha so that we can read it, so that we can work on it. So one of the texts that uh, Pandit Gulab Singh wrote was um, Prabhupada Chandranatha, which is from Krishna Mishra's uh, works within the 12th century. So that is changing to Bridge Parsha. So what we see there is they look at the Sanatan texts and they're slowly translating them. The difference we see here with the Seva Panthis is they move the other way. They look at the spiritual texts that found within Islamic faith. So you find the Masanavi by Rumi, which you can pick up a translation of in any bookstore around the world. And that is translated into Gurmukhi. Um, you can still find this publication at the Patiala University to purchase. Another text is the Paris Bhag, which is written by Ghazaliyat within the 10th century, which is the alchemy of love. Uh, again, you can find that um, within bookstores. Those two texts are translated into a Gurmukhi format, and Katha was done of those uh, through the Seva Panthi order. And I think a big reason for that was that the northwest frontier is where a lot of Seva Panthis were as well. So they were more towards what we'd consider Pakistan and Afghanistan. And they were towards there. And it was to bring adherence in from those sorts of regions. The Seva Panthis were, for a time, being really pivotal on creating different texts, uh, different resources that we can find today. We find the Partia of Pai Kanayaji, the Partia of uh, Pai Sevaram, Partia of Pai Adhan Shah, the Partia of Sai, uh, the Fakir Adhya, which is, again, uh, really different, where 
It's got four hagiographical accounts of four Sufi saints, including the female saint Rabia, um, that is written by the Seva Pampis. Um, you get Babirksar, which has been translated by Devit Singh Nirmala into English, known as the Vivek Pardipika. Uh, there's lots and lots of texts that come in there, Vedantic texts as well and then you see that you get people like Sadhu Gurdit Singh and people like that who are translating um, or creating texts and doing tikas of the Japji Sahib and people like that uh, very influential um, up until again these labels uh, you know, Sikhs have gone into the last hundred years and looked at these labels gone why are you this, why are you this, why are you this uh, the Satogali Upsampurda um, is really known for the Santa Mir Singh Ji, Santa Mir Singh Ji Stika, the Amir Pandar that a lot of people read. Um, the Mahant at the moment is um, Mahant Khan Singh, prior to that was Mahant Tahir Singh, uh, Pandit Nisral Das, they've all been influential within the relations between the Sampurdas. Like I said, they're involved in the card Seva from now on. So those are your four main sampradas. I know I've done a really quick run. I've tried to keep talk within an hour. But one thing you'll find within the sampradas is that they're not exclusive. They always work together. Some individuals are not e exclusive to one sampradha as well. Um, quick examples of that. Baba Sahib Singh Ji Bidhi. Um, they were born after Siri Guru Gobind Singh Ji spoke to Baba Kalatari, who was the head of the Bidhis. And their son Baba Ajit Singh took on with Baba Ajit Singh Bidhi. And the Vad was given, a boon was given that they'll have a great son. Baba Saib Singh Ji Bidhi is considered a Bidhi, an Adasi, and a Sevapanti, and has links to the Nirmala as well, linked to the Nirmala Sampradha as well. You know, Baba Saib Singh Ji Bidhi was also a Shastatari, was involved in battles. Um, the, there's a big Gurbalas Baba. Uh, Saib Singh Bidhi, written by the Seva Pantis as well. It's an absolutely huge grant written about his life. Um, you know, and the Baba Saib Singh Bidhi was crucial in getting the Nihang missiles under the leadership of Maharaja Ranjit Singh Ji in order to start the Sikh Empire as well. Um, considering Maharaja Ranjit Singh Ji's grandfather was in one of those missiles. And at the time we had members from one missile killing another member of another missile. Baba Sahib Singh Bidhi is considered as part of all those Sampurdas and had got them together. You know, uh, other, like I said, oh, I spoke about pacifists uh, in Nirmala's. The majority of them are today, I can, you can see that. But Baba Bir Singh Ji, Narangabadwale, Baba Kudha Singh Ji, they were involved in the wars and the battles. Santa Ram Singh Ji, Magarwale, uh, San Jawala Singh Ji, Hardkawale, both fought in the world wars that took place in Europe. Um, so they're not all pacifists, you know. If um, the contention of the Girivar Sampada under the Nirmalas is considered, or well, Sanjana Singh Ji definitely wasn't a pacifist. Um, but yes, what you'll find is that between the Sampadas, even to today, the Vidya is taught to people of different Sampadas. Under the tutelage of Santhiani Gurbachan Singh Ji, you had Nihangs, Nirmale, Seva Pantis. Uh, and Udasis. Udasis had learnt from Santhagini Guru Vashna Singh Ji. Nihangs such as uh, Sant, uh, Teja Singh Ji Meruwari learnt under Santhagini Indajit Singh Ji Rakhavewari learnt under Santhagini Guru Vashna Singh Ji. Um, Mahant uh, Surjit Singh Ji Seva Panthi learnt under Santhagini Guru Vashna Singh Ji Seva uh, uh, as well. Um, you know, and like I said, it, Nirmali, there's so many Nirmali orders. Sant Sucha Singh Ji uh, who was the head Mahant of the Nirmalas, was also from Pindara, in the same village uh, as the Pindara Sampadra. And he had obviously been under the guidance there as well. Um, so the orders are interchangeable, but what they have given and been built the foundations upon what we have as Sikhi today is only within the last 100 years that we get the movement of the Singh Sabha and the SGPC, which has marginalized those traditions and those sampradas. But within, I'd say, that at least in the last 20 years, there's been a reawakening of, of ideals of going back to traditional roots, of looking at the sampradas and uh, bringing them back to the forefront of teaching and creating a, a 
decoder that we had previously. So yes, that's a, a quick, I know it is a quick, well, some of you won't think it's quick, but it's a quick run on um, on the seek sample of those. Um, and I know there will, there may be questions, there may not be questions, but that is that is the talk for today. Um, if I can hand that over to somebody to uh, just um, give a quick talk, and if there are any questions to relay them, I'll, I'll do my, my utmost best to answer whatever I can. So, Paisab, uh, we have a lot of questions from the Sangat, and uh, Sangat G, if you guys would like to ask Paisab any questions, please put them in the question box uh, located um, above the general voice section. So, the first question we have is, um, is it true that Baba Siri Chand put a curse on the Gurus or Sikhs? Um, and the person says that they heard this in Suraj uh, podcast. And uh, the second one is, do Nirmalas also receive Amrit? Um, that's, well, first question I'll go for is, there's the story that takes place within the Sri Gaur Pratap Suraj Prakash. What happens there is, you get the story of uh, Kamalaji, who is a student of Baba Sri Chamji. He is sent to see Guru Arjan Devji, and he is given a command by uh, Sri Guru Arjan Devji that, uh, sorry, by Baba Sri Chamji, that he is to go there and ask Sri Guru Arjan Devji why the tithe that is normally given to the Bidhis has not arrived. As I mentioned earlier, the gurus kept their links with the uh, uh, with the Bidhis up until the time of Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji when they met uh, Baba Kalatari Ji. So every year, what used to be given was 500 golden mohurs and a horse. But Baba Sri Chandji did not receive it one year. So the Gaur Pratap states within the Granth that Kamalaji is sent to Amrita to see Guru Arjan Dev Ji and ask him about this. They are also advised by Baba Sri Chandji that whatever they do, they are not allowed to sit down. They have to do standing. Sri Guru Sri Guru Arjan Dev Ji, then before seeing Kumala Ji, tells them that he has to go and partake in the Langar. Obviously, within the Langar, the, the, every Langar Institute is to be seated with the rest of the Sangha to sit on the floor and have your Langar. Kumala Ji did both things. He adhered to the instructions of Baba Sri Chandji where he remained standing. And um, he uh, had his Langar and then went and spoke to Sri Guru Arjan Dev Ji and asked for the horse and things like that. When Bhai Kamalaji was given the five, uh, 500 gold coins and the horse, and made his way back to Baba Sri Chandji, he relayed what took place with regards to the Guru not speaking to him immediately and wanting to, um, him to partake within the Langar, but he had to do it standing up because of the, the bachan that was given by Baba Sri Chandji. It is then mentioned that Baba Sri Chandji curses the Guru. Now, Yes, that is written within Sri Gurpratap, but the Guru is above, above all. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll say this now. Um, you know, that is what is written in there. It is written in there. But who can curse the Guru? Nobody can curse the Guru. Um, only because we already have um, the Shabbat Pakka Feri Pani Toa, which Agni Apa Jalai, which is recited in, in the presence of Pai Miyami. Um, Sai Mi Amir by Sri Guru Arjan Devji and, Sri Guru, and he says is that true you know can you do that in the sake of love will you be able to burn yourself in fire and Sri Guru Arjan Devji already says that we'll, we'll show you that we'll do this they already prophesied what was going to take place at the Tapi Tavi uh, you know and, and uh, their Shahidi um, but it was already mentioned and people have stated that obviously it was due to Baba Sri Chandji's curse that this took place Karnaji had already given that same curse to Sri Guru uh, Arjan Dev Ji as well when Sri Guru Arjan Dev Ji would not uh, put his writings within Sri Guru Granth Sahib uh, and obviously you get Bilu, Shah Hussain and um, I forgot who else at the time um, there was another project as well um, but yes yeah, it is written within the Guru Pratap that is mentioned I'd say yes it's a, you know, it's a piece of writing that's written within there the, but the Guru's life was predetermined and predestined in order for Sri Guru Hargobindji to erect the Kal Takht and uh, start the Kal that, that way. So, question one, that's, the, that's my answer to that. Um, question two, do the Nirmala take Amrit? Yeah, Sanjana Singh took Amrit. 
the distribute some uh, the taxama gives out some uh rada sag some parda takes it takes some all the all the um Nirmala institutions take on with. However, like I said, there's two types. They have a Chandpahal and a Khande Bhattiramak as well. So this is the wranglings they have within their own institution. There is um, Bhaitira Singh Nirmala, who I know really, really well, who's, you know, who's written two really, really good books. One on the Sampradha, uh, Seva Panthi Order, one on the Pavra Samad. He is now writing a book on the Nirmala Order in English. And it is going to contain everything with the workings of and with what the differences are, the differences in garbs, the differences in the Upsampradas. It's going to take a couple of years to come together, but it will explain all that. But yes, um, you know, I um, I took my Amrit through um, the Nirmali. So, it, you know, it was a Kandabad to the Amrit and no different to anybody else. Um, but yes, that, the institution of the Nirmali, same as the Seva Pantis. Same as the Akali Nahans take Kandabhata Dhamma. Faisab, so the next question is, how can the relations uh, between Jatha Bandhiya be improved? A lot of people argue over what is authentic Maryada. How can this be overcome without taking Maryada away from Sampradas? Well, the thing is, it's, you have to look at it... <clears throat> The relations are improving themselves within the Sampradas. For too long, Sampradas focus on the minor differences. You know, we don't focus upon the 95% between all the Sampradas that exist as the same. You know, but we will wrangle over the 5% that's difference between all the Sampradas. Um, you know, Gyani uh, Ram Singhji uh, of um, Sangarama, they did a speech not long ago when they were here within the UK when they were with the Akhand Kirtan Jatha and they both of the Jathas got together and they said exactly that they said for far too long we focus on minor disputes minor issues if there are minor issues they are there they, they always will be there the the change of time does that where you get influential people starting their own orders or or putting their own little groups together it happens Unfortunately, what, what I think that some of us should do is focus on what is the main focus. You, you see it at the centenary events for Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh's Gurpur or Siddhi Guru Nandir's Gurpur where you get uh, sadhus, leaders, um, proficient speakers. They all come together in order to speak about the same, um, same focus or same topic. You've had a... The Nantaris have put together a a talk on Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Ji last year within Delhi, where you had the Adasis, the Sevapanthis, the, the Nirmali, they were all there. Um, and I, I think it's that, it's, it's going above the ignorance, focusing on what is similar. Um, you'll always have the wranglings of people going, I don't agree with that, I don't agree with that, I don't agree with that. Because you get that now. The Nihangs will not agree with three orders. The Adasis won't, and Nirmala Das uh, Dasis and Sarah Pantis won't agree with what things are in the hands of. Well, let's, you know, that's what they want to do. That's what you want to do. You go with it. You, it's in the same way as, like I say, I look at the, the Sampradas as being university institutions. If you were to go and major within a, uh, a high state college or a high state university within any country, you're going to have differences within them. But the education is, is the same. And the goal is the same to get you to a degree, to get you to to an educational standard. And that's what you're looking for within those sampradas. I know that's probably not the answer that people want to hear, but that's, that's the way we've got to look forward. Go and learn what you need to learn from those sampradas. If there's a difference, if there's something there that you don't agree with, you don't have to follow it. So the next question is, um, it says, in the past, there was a deep connection, respect, and understanding between different Sikh, Sikh Sapradas and Jathabandis. Yeah. Are you familiar with what events or occurrences triggered uh, for that to change? Um, you get... There was, there's one big event that leads to the discord between the Nirmalas and the Nihangs that takes place at Hajul's time where the Nihangs are not happy with the Nirmalas 
not wearing a kashera anymore, wearing a toti instead, or uh, compromising some of their kakars. The Nahangs are not happy with that because in the Nahangs, you look at the Nahangs, even, even to today, the red is so strong that they will make sure that no kakars leave their side. You know, I've listened to a katha of Sant Gani Gurbach and Sinji, where a Sant Kartar Sinji, where for a second, a minute second, Sant Gurbach and Sinji were not in possession of their kakar and they put themselves at Dankaya and took a punishment. And then the Nahangs are exactly the same. So they were not happy with the compromise of some of the Nirmalas, which led to a dispute at Hajul side, leading to the death of a number of people. Um, so that caused a big rift. And you can see that in when you see some of the Nirmala writings of the Nahangs, and when you see some of the writings uh, or the views of the Nahangs towards the Nirmalas. In the Bar- Bharata Mat Darpan, you know, uh, Mant Ganesha Singh writes quite a lot on all the different Sampardas within India. However, on the Nahangs, where I'd expect uh, Mahant Ganesha Singh to write a, an incredible amount due to the closeness of the Sampradas, he writes two pages. And to be quite honest, it's, it's quite condescending uh, towards the Nahangs. And, and, but that's where it was. It was due to the arguing over the, small, over the compromise of the Red, where somebody believes this is where it should be, but you lot aren't following this. So there was a fallout between those two Sampradas. With the Odasis, Nirmalas, there was a fallout at the Gomb. Uh, this took place sometimes. And now when you get the uh, Gomb Mela take place, you get both an Akara for the Odasis and an Akara for the uh, Nirmalas. That was due to the months at the time. Um, however, they're, they're quite close now. And the Seva Bantis are quite close now as well. But it was those issues, like, like what was mentioned within the previous question, those differences within those sampradas led to the, um, the, the issues between the sampradas and the rift and agitation that, that was there for some time. Like I said, now it's very, very different. You see the sampradas very close again, uh, you know, to the point that you'll go to one of these, these big occasions, these big good pubs, and you'll see them all there. You, you'll see that Nahangs are close to them. And, you know, um, Sandarshan Singhji, who is one of the, the leading Nirmalas at the moment, Sandarshan Singhji Shastri, was previously the writer of the Guruvark Chandan for Santhari Singhji. So he's within the Tuxar, knows everybody from the Tuxars, knows everybody from the Nahangs, knows everybody from the Seva Pontis, studied under uh, uh, Indiji Singhji Rakhabiwale. So it's linked to the Nahangs. And I think what they're doing now, again, the institutions, is when they are teaching their students, they are now moving their students from one Sampurda to another to gain as much of as they can, which has improved the relations between them. But for a time being, there was that rift, especially with the Nahangs and Nirmalas. There was a, there was a big rift for some time, but that seems to have massively improved. So the next question is from a user who visited an Odasi Akara at Mandi Haryana. And the mm-hmm. user says that there was a sanctum of sorts where only men were allowed to enter it. So the user asks, are we as six uh, to let these practices be? Because uh, he finds them very unusual to see. Sorry, what was that? He, it was a sanctum of swords, wasn't yeah. it? No, no. There's like a there's a sort of sanctum where only men were allowed to enter. So a place at like an Udasi um, like institution where only men were allowed to enter. So the user asks, uh, should we let these types of practices be where only like certain places only men can go and stuff? Well, yeah, I can give you that. That's basically within the Udasi order. The Udasi order is still very, very um male orientated i can't think of many female adasi sadhus at all it is still male orientated since the time of the adasis they they consider maya to and and it is they consider the female form to be maya because uh from the stories of pringi rishi and things like that within the parabodh and the nadak they focus on those things so they keep certain places uh male only you know you, you look at Darbar side with the cleaning in the mornings. It's male only. There are lots of places that are just male only. 
when certain things go on or you know by Sadlogy's did I work female only at certain times um, that's only done so within the sanctity of some deodars or some places where are con- considered to be a religious source you know they don't want any any sort of sacrilege or anything going on that can happen the reason being you know Gurbani says pull and under sub go a pull a guru kartar you know it's only the guru kartar that is without that without blemish but all of us can fall to blemish at any point so those those practices do continue now with regards to should they continue should they not continue um i don't think i'm in a position to give a response to that it's it's not somewhere that i am at and it's not something that i can even have a profound opinion upon to change or to say that yes i agree with that i, I can just give you the facts of they do this in order to stop any any sort of sexual activity any sort of malpractices any sort of things that shouldn't go on um but there are other places you know you, you look at um Dakhtri, um Harmansa, which is Patna, within Patna Sahib, you know, the area that, where you want to go to see the Shastas of Sri Guru Gobind Singh within the sanctum. Again, it's only um, men allowed. You have to have a Dastar on, you have to be wearing a Kashara, you have to have a, a long kapan. It's only men that can go in. Unfortunately, like I said, I, I can only say that these things do happen, but to give an opinion on whether it should be stopped or it should continue, I, I can't say, to be honest. So the next question is, what books would you recommend if someone was interested in learning more about Sampardas and Sikh history in general? Do you have a list of books? Um, books, there's there's hundreds. Um, depends what Samparda you're looking at. The Nahangs is the most difficult, I'd say, to find authentic books on those Sampardas. You've got the Surya Vanshi uh, Granth, which... I've now put on Gurmat Vichar, which you can read as a PDF on there. Uh, the pa- Prachin Pant Prakash by Ratan Singh Pangu mentions the valor of the battles of the Hungs. Um, Gyan Gyan Singh Ji within his Pant Prakash mentions the Sikharaj and the Nahangs in there. So you can learn a bit about the Nahangs from those sorts of grants. Uh, the, obviously, the, the main tenets within the Sri Dasam Grant and the Sarbur Grant are essential to the the psyche of the Nahangs. So if you want to know more about Nahangs, those are the books you should focus on. Um, with, you know, the other Sampradas, there's a plethora of literature you could find. Um, with the Odasis, the, the quick two that I'd pick up is the Odasi of the Haas, uh, which you can find on the Punjab Digital Library. You've got both the Granth by Pandit um, Ooh, there's a pundit who's written about the whole history of the Adasis. There is a book by um, either Gunda Singh or Taran Singh, which is about the uh, Itahas of the Adasis. You've got Gani Isha Singh Nara's books uh, on the Udasi, Sampurda, and Baba Sri Chanji. There are so many Janam Sakis and Udasi books that you can pick up from uh, Brambuta, Sangalwara, places like that if you want to learn more about them. Um, I have got a number of other English books on life of Baba Sri Janji that you can pick up, but there's a plethora of books on them. And Nirmalas, you want to learn more about them? Uh, again, um, the Nirmal Panth Board, which is a huge book, the Nirmal Panth at the Haas, the Nirmal God of Gatha. There's so many books you can actually find as PDFs all over the internet. The majority of the Nirmala books, unfortunately, you will find in Punjabi. Same with the Udasis. You'll find the majority of them in Punjabi. You know, you, there are far few between that you can find in English. Uh, Seva Panthi's The Santa Ratanamala is the defining book on the Seva Panthi's Sakya Pai Adansha, the Parchya books. They're all essential into finding life into the... Um, and the Seva Panthis are all there. The Gurbalas, Baba, uh, Baba, Saib Singh Ji Bedi. Um, and then obviously the Vivek Paradipika, which was written by Tira Singh Nirmala, is of commentary on a text called the Babek Sir. And that's the only one that you can find in English. It's very much in depth. It's not for your 
individual who just is getting into Sikhi or getting into Vedant. It's really in depth, but there's a plethora of books. I I've got thousands of books. I've got unfortunately I've not got all my, my books with me. My my parents have to store my books. My relatives have to store my books for me because I've got so many. But if people want book ideas and to tell me what they're interested in, uh, contact me. Please contact me, and I, I can put the, put them in the direction of certain books. But there's loads on Gurumukh Vijayad. There are loads of books we've already put on there for people to have a look at in PDFs. Please have a look. The Seek Book Club on the internet has got loads of books to have a look at as well. I can direct you to some of those. Um, I've got another 2,000 books sat here in PDFs that I need to put up. So book-wise, there's loads. Literally, there's loads. The problem we have more in Seek is getting people to actually read. <laughs> they don't do it. So the next question is, what is the history behind New Age missionaries? Oh, okay. Um, the New Age missionaries really start, um, and their links really start from the Pasolda era. And the Pasolda era goes back to Chetan Das, who was actually in Nirmala, who starts the controversy in the Ragmala. Uh, from there, we get the Pasoda era where uh, Deja Singh Pasodia starts going through different tents within Sikhi and questioning their historical background and their links to the Snartan Thoma. And he's, he's just, it, it's, it was like he had an allergy towards it. Um, obviously, his history, history indicates that he, may, he was uh, attacked for the British the way he, he was attacking things. We get, obviously, the books by. Uh, so busing, questioning the Ragmala, we get people questioning the Gurpatap, Suj Prakash, the Gurbalas. Those things all slowly, slowly come together within the last century where we have two things that take place. One is the creation of the SGPC and the Sikh missionary um, uh, students. So they start their own Prachar on Sikhi. They take away what they consider to be um, tarnished by Sanatan Taram or uh, diluted by other faiths. So they take away anything by the Nirmali. The, you know, they don't like the Nirmali because they're very, very much Hindu. The Sirovantis also mention a lot of um, Vedant. So again, they're like, well, this doesn't agree to Sikhi as well. They don't agree with the Nahangs because they're. Their dig, their reds, their conducts, they see that as, as a distortion of what Sikhi should be. So again, they move away. So what happens is they move away from the Paratham, Sampradas, or Dasis have already marginalized themselves. So they start teaching what is really basic, the basic definitions. And moving away from Uttanakas, which are prefaces to make you understand where the Shabbat was recited, by who, to, to who, and what, for what reason. They stop going through the antrivarts, which are the esoteric uh, definitions, the intrinsic definitions to define what Gurbani is really saying. Uh, and, you know, those things are lost. And what we then instead have a focus is, on is Vyakaran. Vyakaran becomes a focus which we just look at Gurbani and we state that Gurbani is written as a, uh, you know, in a form of Vyakaran. So grammatically, we can get the definitions from it. Vyakaran actually starts from uh, Rishi Paniji in Banaras. So if they were scared of Vedanta, they should be scared of uh, Vyakaran because it starts there as well. <clears throat> Vyakaran is a tool that we can use with Gurbani, but Gurbani is above all these different things. So the school of thought with the missionary starts there. The second thing that we have within the school of thought uh, within the missionaries is, one, the British prior to partition looking to corrupt seek uh, researchers and influencers in order to stem the movement of separatism. And again, we have that again in the 80s. After 1984, the Operation Blue Star, we have the profiliation of the GOI, the government of India, looking to marginalize Sikhs, break Sikhs, and have them infighting. And that's where we get the modern-day um, SGPs, the modern-day missionaries. And we can see that today. We can see that especially in the last 20 years where you have individuals of that movement. Uh, you know, you've got Karl Afghana who's putting out books. 
John Waller within Canada. You've got Professor Darshan Singh. You've got, um, you know, other individuals. There's lots of individuals who are putting material out which goes against what we would consider to be Pradhat and Sikhi or Sampradai Sikhi. Um, but it all starts there. And we look at either it's corruption or um, it's due to ignorance uh, where they're looking to marginalise the old Sampradhas and just start again. So the next question is, in their Katha, Sant Gurupat Jin Singh Ji tells the history of the Dhamdhami Taksal coming from Baba Deep Singh Ji and Pai Mani Singh Ji. <clears throat> Sant, yep. Maha, uh, sorry, Sant Mohan Singh Ji uh, states about the same. Many also say that Taksal comes out of Mishil Sihidda or Gyani Samprada. Can you explain how the history, how this history relates to the Girvari um, Nirmala Parnali? Yep, that's, that's fine. That's not a problem. So the Girivar Sampurda, um within the Nirmalas. Let's have a look. Let's see if I can find, find my books. Find my, right. Sandhya and Guru Singh they state that the Dandami Taksar, uh, they state it within their third MP3 and within the Sloks of Pagat Fariji where they're talking about the Taksar themselves and passing the Gaddi on. So they state that the two Sampradas that are going at the moment is the Satawali um, Gali Sampradha, which is spearheaded and headed by Pai Mani Singh, or started by Pai Mani Singh, under the guidance of Sant Kirpal Singh at the time. And they state that the Sampradha that they are currently uh, doing the Katha for was started by Baba Deep Singh Ji. Um, and they state that within the Sampradha, because it is... <laughs> I didn't want to mention... I run a podcast called Sikhism in Snippets, and I've put those snippets on there. Uh, they are available for people to listen to, so it's not something I'm uh, hiding behind or anything like that. It is there. Right, what you have with the the Girivar Sampradha, especially within um, Gyani Balwan Singhji's Granth, and you have it within the Nirmal Pantatahas, you have the uh, Pindarakala Sampradha, which comes out of Girivar. It states it within there. It states it due to um, Baba Kajan Singhji, who were obviously the father of Sant Indra Singhji Pindarawali and Sant Sundar Singhji Pindarawali. And what they do is they obviously put their sons under the tutelage of Baba Bishan Singhji Muraliwali. Baba Bishan Singhji Muraliwali is um, Sampada comes into the Girivar Sampada, so that's where the link comes in. Now, what I'd say about the institutions is they're interchangeable. Just because somebody like um, Mahandashan Singhji, who is down as a Nirmala, previously was under the Tuxar and has been under the um, Nihangs, doesn't make him no longer a, a Nirmala. So what happens with uh, this within the... Um, the Tuxar, where you get the mention of the Tuxar uh, Mukis, so some good words and singing and people like that, being part of the Girivar Sampada, it doesn't take away where the lineage started. The Tuxar is what we see with the Dum Dummy Tuxar or the Tuxar lineage we see today. Is It is people who, adherents who have retained the knowledge from the time of Siddha Guru Gobind Singh and passed it down. They are not looking at what Sampradha, the individual that they're passing it down to is, they're looking at who is who it's being passed down to. So that's what you're looking at with the Dhamma Mitra side. You're looking at, we've got these 14 Jatadars or 15 Jatadars or however many, you know, I'm not going to dispute who's, who's the Mukhi, who's not the Mukhi. But what you have is the, you can show the lineage of this person passes this knowledge to this person, this person passes this knowledge to this person. In the same way, if you are to go from one university to another university, for an enrollment course for a year or two years or three years. Uh, but you go as a part-time thing from one university to another. It doesn't take away that you are majoring at a specific place. The argument we have with individuals who are Tuxalis, who consider themselves Tuxalis, will say, we are a fifth Sampurda. The issue we have with saying that the Tuxal is a separate Sampurda 
is that if you look at Granth such as the Pant Prakash, especially the Navin Pant Prakash, which is written by Gany Jansen, he mentions all the different Sampradas in there, you know, including the Nantaris, and mentions them as being a separate Samprada. But we do not get the mention of the Dandamitaksal within there. And for that reason, you know, they've always remained within the Nirmalas. Now, Piara Singh Padam writes a text called the Sikh, uh, Sikh Sampradas. And within that, he writes that there is a fifth Sampradha known as the Gyanu Sampradha. He writes that within there. And it is a separate portion. But the problem we have is trying to link it back. Uh, and like I said, um, we can say that Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh started the Sampradhas in 1704 at Sri Dham Dhamma Sahib and the Dham Dhamma Tuksal starts from there. And you know, it starts from Bob, uh, Baba Deep Singh Ji, who was in the Hung, and the Kalin Hung. Um, there are issues with, with states that you can say that the knowledge has been handed down, but to state that the Gyanis Sampradha is separate, the only problem you have is trying to find it written within historical texts. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to see if I've answered your question there. Can you do me a favor and just go back through that question for me? Sure. Uh, so the question uh, says, um, in their Katha, Sant Gurbhajan Singh Ji tells the yeah. history of uh, Damdami Taksal coming from Baba Deep Singh Ji and Pai Mani yeah. Singh Ji. Sant yeah. Mohan Singh Ji states about the same. Many yeah. also say that the Taksal comes out of Misal Shahida or uh, Gyani Sampradha. Can you explain how this history relates to the Girvari Nirmala Par Parnali? So that was yeah, your question. Right. No, that's fine. So, yeah, like I said, the, the big issue you have is that, right, the Giri Vaj Sampada, what I'm going to quickly do, I'm going to rack out the book if I've got it. Um, and see what I can find in there. But the Giri Vaj Sampada within uh, this book mentions the Sampada itself. So, Nirmal Panth Board Page 657 um, starts with the Giri Vaj Sampradha. So let's see if I can quickly grab that and just find what it says. 657, right. So it says here, the, the Giri Vaj Sampradha starts from Pai Taram Singh Ji, out of the Panch Biara. The Sampradha then goes on to uh, Sant Karam Singh Ji, who was one of the individuals from the Nirmala, who was sent to um, to Banaras to Lenda Vidya by Sri Guru Gobind Singh is the commencement of the Nirmala Sampradha. The knowledge is then passed on, um, which goes all the way down from Sanjay Singh Ji, all the way down to Pandit Gulab Singh Ji. From Pandit Gulab Singh Ji, it goes down again to Mahant Hardas Singh. Right, I'm just trying to get where we are. With the Pindri Sampada. Right, so it has it down from the Pindri Sampada going down to uh, Mount Bishan Singh. So that's where we get. So it goes from Pandit Galab Singh, uh, Giri Varvari. From Pandit Galab Singh, Giri Varvari, all the way down to Mount Arda Singh. There is a lineage in between these. I'm, I'm just not going through all of them, that's all. From them, it goes all the way down to um, Santa Bishan Singh Jumurali Wali. And then obviously Santa Bishan Singh Jumurali Wali were the teachers to Santa Sundar Singh um, Pindar Wali. And that's where the link is to the Girivar Sampradha. The Girivar Sampradha can show a link all the way down to there. And like I'd say, if somebody wants to have a look, it's pages 657. Uh, of the uh, of the Sri Nirmal Panth board, from page six five seven all the way to it finishes on. Let's see, Sant Gyani Mohan Singh Ji, Sant Gurdayal Singh Ji, Bhopparai, Sant Jayab Singh Ji, Sant Sant Gyani Narayan Singh Ji, Ladai Kewale, Pandit Hakik Singh Arvind. So yeah, it goes down to them. So if you want to read it and don't mention Sant Kartar Singh Ji. Um, from there, and Sanjana Singh as well, and Baba Thakur Singh. 
So the Giri Versampada mentions all the way down to Baba Tarkasinji within this book. It's, it's lengthy. There's, there's over about 20, 20, 25 pages mentioning on the lineage. If somebody wants to message me, I can try to photo all the images and try to send it, send it to whoever the, um, has posed a question and they can have a read through themselves. But yeah, it, it shows the Padanali going all the way down. Sorry. I, I think that's all I can do at the moment with that. No worries, myself. So the next question is, um, would you say that Udasis focus more on yoga and Theyan while Nirmalas focus more on learning the Vedas, Purans, Granths, etc.? Uh, no, right. The the big see people think that the Nirmalas are focused on the Vedas and the Purans, and they're not. They're not focused on those at all. They're focused on Vedanta. Vedanta is completely different. Out of the Shir Shastas, so Shir Kar Shir Gur Shir Pradesh, Gur Gur Eko Vesanek, within the Kirtan Sura, it mentions the six schools of thought. So one of the schools of thought is Vedanta. Um, I've covered this in a podcast with the Sorge Academy, which should be out soon. But Vedanta is what the Nirmalas focus on. The Vedanta is the oneness of Atma and Paramatma. So where you get the tenets within Gurbani saying Mantu Jyot Sarupa Apana Mool Pashan. So Atma Ram Ram Hai Atma Sri Guru Nanak Devji states. Or you get, uh, what's it, uh, within the Japji side it mentions as well, you know, Jog Jog Eko, yeah, it goes into, uh, sorry, within, from the 16th body to the 19th body it mentions the state of the Jeev and Ishwar. So what the, the Nirmala's focus on is the oneness of becoming one with God. That is the whole point. So they use Vedanta. Vedanta is concerned the Gyan of the Vids. Now, where we talk about the Gyan of the Vids, we're not talking about the ritualistic opinions. We're not talking about the different ways of worshipping the deities. We are talking about those 4,000 surtis out of 100,000 surtis. Surtis basically means like uh, Dore uh, that we'd find within Gurbani. 4,000 Dore, which mention how to become one. Those are elaborated upon within the Upanishads, and those Upanishads are elaborated on within the Gita and the Gurbani and things like that. So what their focus is on is that. Uh, the Purans, the Purans and the, uh, the Vedanta are completely separate. The Purans are mythological stories of how the deities did everything. So where you get your serials on TV on, Vishnu and Shiva and things like that and the stories and things that they did and what they didn't do. They all come from the Purans. Uh, Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh obviously translates some of the Purans when we get the Mark and the Puran uh, to do with Chandi, Chandi Divar, Chandi Charita, Chandi Charita Rukata Balas. They all come from the Mark and the Puran. Um, so they focus on the Sargon, uh, things like that. Now with regards to yoga, yes, you're right because Santagani Guru Bhajan Singh Ji touches upon the state of the yogis outside Brahmbhuta when they were at the bar side and they say, you know, we look at the yogis at Brahmbhuta and they were just hanging off trees and doing this and doing that and putting themselves in all these yogic positions which are of no use. That's what he says. Um, so the focus of the Adasis is not really yoga. Patanjali's yoga is specific to Sanatana Math, and they focus on that. The Udasis do, you know, I've, I've met a number of Udasis, and they have absolutely no clue when it comes to yoga. They've studied mostly the historical texts when it comes to the stories of Dev, Dev, Devi and things like that. They focus on the Bhagavad uh, Mahapuran, which is the stories of Vishnu and Gita Bhakti and things like that, and then they focus on Gurbani. That is what Udasis should be on. And what you're seeing with a lot of Adasis today is that they are mixing more with Nats. So they, their um, religious rituals and their tendencies and ceremonies are now becoming more similar to Shivites and Agoris, where their focus is not on those sorts of things anymore and more on the Tamagun aspects of, of tobacco and intoxicants and, and Jantar Mantar and things like that. But no, realistically... Vedanta is a focus of um, the Nirmalas. Vedanta was the fo focus of some of the Adasis, but really the Adasis are more into the Sargon Bhakti. 
But yoga is something that's come into some of the Adasis, but I've not really seen it. If somebody can enlighten me from where they've been to Adasi Diras and they've seen that sort of um, focus upon yoga more than anything else, I'd, I'd like to know because it's something I'd like to go and see myself and, and question where that's come from. So the next question is, where do the Ravadasis fit into the Sampraday? Why is it that the founding Sant of Dera Sachkhand Balan Sant Swarandas is known as Sant Swarandas Udasi <laughs> also, and other Sants such as Sant um, Surinder Das Katharwale claiming to have had Seva Panthi Vidya from Taksal in Sri Amritsar? Yeah, there are, the, the, like I said, you will have um, in the same way as you have uh, Kabir Bantis today, they will go from place to place wherever they are sent. So, um, Samgeni Mohansinji, I'm just going to use them as an example. Samgeni Mohansinji obviously left this, this earth now and left this mortal plane, but they spent five years under Samgeni Guru Bhutan Singhji and then they moved around to different places where they, they learnt Vidya. In the same way that of Dasyas and all the other Sampradas will do the same, you'll get the um, the different Sampradas sending their Vidyarthis to different places in order to learn Vidya. Vidya is Vidya at the end of the day. It doesn't matter um, who the student is. The, the importance is on teaching them the, the Vidya. So yes, you will have um, individuals coming from different Sampradas to learn within the Tuxals, within the Udasis, within the Nirmala. Um, it doesn't make them Nirmala. It doesn't make them Udasis. They can say that, yes, they've, they've been taught that. The Udasis are their own um, Sampradha. They actually come off Pagdaravadasi in the same way as Kabir Pantis come off Pagdaraviji. You know, but their mixture within, um, obviously, Sikh circles, Punjabi circles, knowing that the Punjabi community obviously adhere to Bhagdravadashti and their Bani within to Ransaji have been able to not grooming is a different thing. Um yeah influence influence individuals into um establishing adherence into into their faith. That's what they've been able to do. But to say that they are Udasis is a different thing because Udasis do not teach um, the same tenets as you will find within the Ravdasi Sampada. Um, the Ravdasi Sampada is completely different. And you'll find, like I said, that if you want to know about all the different Sampadas that existed in India about 100 years ago, the Parat Mat Darpan by Mahanta Ganesha Singh, which is available in a PDF, is the one to have a look at. And you will see within there that. The Ravdasis are, are a completely uh, distinct uh, Sampradha. Um, I'm not sure why they consider themselves as Udasis or whoever is in charge of them considers themselves Udasis, but, but they're not because I'll bet you any money that they, their focus will be on Bhagatara Vidasji and not the focus on Vishnu, Shiva, Shakti, Ganesh and the Suras did every day. So the next question is, could someone go from Nihang to Udasi slash Nirmala or from Udasi slash Nirmala to Nihangs? Yep, very easy. Uh, example is uh, Santa Namdas, who you get within the Udasi order, who did the Tika on the Sri Sarbalograt, uh, did the Tika on the Sri De Devi Nene. Uh, according to Baba Santa Singhji, he was originally a, a Nihang Singh. He was a Nihang who went and changed uh, to become an Udasi. And then he did the Tika on the Steek, sorry, on the Sri Sarvara. So yeah, we've seen movement there. And like I said, I've, we've seen, obviously, within the uh, Nirmala order, where you've had Akali Nihangs come and uh, become uh, Nirmalas. You can move from one order to another. It's, it's not an issue. Like I said, you look at somebody like Mahansarji Sinji Seva Panti, he took his umrah from Santagyan and Gurbachan Singhji and came into Tuxal there. He became the head of the, um, the Seva Panti uh, movement. So there's, there's natural movement between um, those 
a sample of those. There is, and you can move from one to another. So the next question is, uh, Pai Sab, have you translated and published all of the Katha that Sriman Sant Gyani Gurbachan Singh Ji Khalsa Pindravale's Katha uh, on um, Siri Japji Sahib? No, I wish that was the case. I've been, <laughs> believe it or not, it's taken me from 2004 up until now. So what's that? Nearly 17 years. 17 years to get up to the 26th body. So Santagyani Gurbachan Singh Ji's Katha of the Jabji Sahib so far is available in eight parts in an English format. Um, and I have released that. The eighth part has just been released in the last week. Uh, it's just being published and printed. I am hoping by the end of next year that the completion is done um, of the Sri Jabji Sahib and we'll move on to other Barneys uh, that, that I've already got written out. Sandhagani Guru Bhutan Singh Ji's Dika of the Jabji Sahib, um, what I've tried to do with that is the Dika is not exclusively just Sandhagani Guru Bhutan Singh Ji's Dika. It's I am you encompassing the Sri Amir Pandar Dika, the Katha by uh, Gyani San Singh Ji Muskeen, Sant Avtar Singh Ji, Badani Kalawale, Gyani Thakur Singh Ji's Katha, Sant, uh, Sant Hari Singh Ji, Rindarwale, Sant Jigji Singh Ji. I've got the um, Garub Ganjani Tika as well. Um, and I've got uh, Sadhu Gurdit Singh's Tika of Jabji Sahib, along with the last one is Pandita Singh Narotans. So what I try to do is have all of them together when I'm putting to the translations together. As you can imagine, just the Jabji Sahib itself is, I know it's 38 body, it takes 20 minutes to recite for some people. But the Jabji Sahib, um, when I started it, the Moor Mantra book itself is 178 pages long. That's just the Moor Mantra. So it's taking me a considerable amount of time, but it will be done. Um, unless, obviously, my time is up and uh, somebody else will have to finish it up for me. So the next question is, what is the history of Nanaksar and why did they form? Well, Nanaksar, Nanaksar forms through um, its links are actually into the Seva Panthi Sampada. And you can still see it today. It's the Seva, the Seva going on, the, the movement of Baba Nan Singh Ji, where he did not create his own uh, a permanent place, move from place to place every day. Um, they did not have money near him or anything like that. Um, it's very similar to the old guard Seva movements within the Seva Panthis. Um, and it, it formed basically more focused on uh, the Sargun Pagdi. That, that's, what, that's what it seems to be more focused on, apart from, you know, they still teach everything else. Gurbani is read every day, the amount of parts and some parts that go on every day. But obviously, it's, it's, um, it comes more from a Seva Panthi sort of Nirmala background, but been adapted more towards a Seva Panthi sort of way of life. Would you say that an understanding of Vedanta is a common thread between the Sampraday? And also, uh, would you say that only through Khande Dipal um, can Udasis be accepted uh, in the Sikh Panth going forward? No. Um, well, f first one, Vedanta is um, it's not exclusive to the Sampradas. It's exclusive to Gurbani. Uh, you know, it's, it's within Gurbani. Gurbani covers all, all Gurbani talks about all the way through is the oneness of becoming your Atma and merging within Paramatma. That's, that's what Gurbani talks about. The whole point of this life is to become one with God. The whole purpose of this life is you've got the ability and the opportunity to do that. So that is what Vedanta is. Vedanta is becoming one with God, where there's no separation. And Pagata Birni Ji says, you know, you cannot become mukt after this. You cannot become liberated after this life. So if you do not do it within this life, there is no liberation afterwards. So Vedanta is something that runs through um, the, the old Sampradas, not because it's exclusive to them, or it is a connection between them, it's because they all saw that that was the oneness of um, Gurbani. Uh, you know, and that's the aspect of Gurbani, that's what Gurbani is teaching. And that one is to become one with God. 
So that's what that is. Would the Adasis becoming Kundalini Boho, you know, taking Kundalini Boho? No, no, I don't, I don't see it as that because if that was the case, um, then Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh Ji would have, at the time of administering to the Amrit, either kicked them out of the Banth or said to them that if they want to become part of the Banth, they have to take um, the Kundalini Boho the Amrit. Because their read was already started by the previous gurus, it had, it had not been changed. Um, and if, for me, it's the case of if the guru didn't kick them out of the bunt, it's not for me to kick them out of the bunt or say why, why they, what they need to do to come back in. The Adasis, if, like I said, the Adasis are completely different. They're Guru Mantra is Satanam. You know, they have Guru Diksha. They learn from Guru. They have Charan Paho. They don't take Amrit. Um, and if they do take Khandibata Dhammat, they're no longer Adasis. They're Sikhs. They don't remain Adasis. So the next question is, uh, are you familiar with the Mahapuruks that did not sign the Ratanama? Uh, it is said that it was supposed to be revised and visited at a later date, but that never happened. No, unfortunately, I can't elaborate on that at all. I, I, you know, I don't know which which of the Hatanama we're talking about, uh, or what incident we're talking about. So it would be wrong for me to e even mention. It. I can have a look, but it would be the same as anybody else, where I go away from here and do some research, and um, you know, I'll, I'll just give you give you whatever findings I can I can find. But unfortunately, I can't provide an opinion on that still. So the next one is, what influence did the Patiala Maharajas have on the Sampradas? Um, I think that the big thing you have with the Patiala Maharajas, not on the Sampradas, but on the Sikh Empire, the big influence you have on the Patiala Maharajas uh, with the, Samparda, uh, with the uh, British Empire was the fact that they signed a treaty with the British rather than signing a treaty with Maharaja Ranjit Singh so the British were able to influence those areas very, very quickly and uh, bring their um, troops up to that point, well, the East India Company. Um, this obviously would have had an influence on anything that was being written within the courts, uh, within the poets. Uh, you know, I can't say, I, I can't even think of some of the um, texts that were produced within Patiala at the time or under the guidance of um, Kapoorthala uh, and... Patiala, and I can't remember where else, but they were all under the guide. They were all had signed a treaty under the British. Um, so they had, um, you know, uh, distanced themselves from Maharaja and Singhji at the time. So, yeah, just putting an opinion on it, I'd insinuate that um, they still would have had court poets, they still would have been involved in making texts and manuscripts. I'm not sure that there would be an influence away from Sikhi, but I don't know what the influence was by the British upon them. So the next question is, which Sampradayak Jap Sahib Katha would you recommend? Um, Jab Sahib Katha, um, if you are going to listen to any of them, I've got, I've got numerous amounts of Jab Sahib Katha. You've got Gyani Shir Singh Ji's, which is, I think is quite basic. Gyani Chakra Singh Ji's is quite basic. Sanjanel Singh Ji's Katha is really, really quick on the job side, but it is better than the majority of them out there, uh, without a doubt. Uh, the best one available is Gyani Harpaj and Singh Ji but you have to have the patience to listen to that because they speak very slowly and they go over certain bits again and again. But their Katha has to be the best on the job side at the moment. Um, I can't say there's a better one available on the internet. I have got Katha by, like I said, by um, Gyanin Shir Singh Ji, which I need to put up. Uh, Katha by, um, by Paramji Singh Khalsa as well. I've got his job side Katha. I need to put that up as well. Somebody like Gyanin Kalwan Singh Ji's Katha is, it's not really Katha, it's more lectures upon the, the single body. Um, I, you know, it's not something that I like listening to. I'd still say Sanjana Singh is the best. 
if you want a written Tika to read on the job site, then the best one is by Pandit uh, Kavtar uh, Singh Nirmala, which is probably the most in-depth Katha of job site I've ever seen so far. There are obviously old manuscripts of um, job site uh, Tikas available, but then not in a written format that I can decipher at the moment. But yeah, Pandit Kavtar Singh's um, job site is available on the Siki Book Club um, uh, it's available to download it's well worth looking at that if you want a really in-depth dig of the job so otherwise I'd, I'd still say you know Yanni Abrojan Singh is you want one that's done within the space of two and a half hours Sanjanel Singh is really really good even though he even states that during the Gutha he hasn't got time to go through all the definitions you're still going to find definitions in there that you won't find anywhere else Which Samparda do the Nirma, uh, sorry, uh, Namtaris stem from? The Namtaris have their, they are their own Samparda on, on their own. They, you know, the, the issue you have with the Namtaris is the authenticity of their Samparda. They will say their Samparda comes back from, there is no separate Samparda. Because you talk to the Namtaris, they'll say, we're, we're not a separate Samparda. We are the Khalsa. We derive from Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Ji and we continue to this day with a living Satguru. So they will say that we're not a Sampurda, we don't come off, you know, you wouldn't say that what Sampurda does Guru Arjan Dev Ji feature from? He doesn't, he is from the Guru lineage. And the Namtaris will say exactly the same. They will say that our Sampurda is the Guru lineage, we're not Sampurda. You know, we've gone from Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh Ji, uh, you know, staying in the the dress of Baba Ajapal Singh, passing the Gaddi to um, Sadhguru Balik Singh, to Sadhguru Ram Singh, Sadhguru Hari Singh, Sadhguru Pratap Singh, Sadhguru Jigjit Singh, and then obviously now you've got this rift between Dalip Singh and uh, Uday Singh. Uh, but they will say that we're not a Sampurda, we are the Guru lineage. With the Guru Bansavali, we can sing it, continue on. Now, with when you start looking elsewhere, uh, if we are to look at it and go, well, where does this where does this come from? Um, it's very difficult to say because there are some people who will say, actually, the lineage just starts with uh, with Sadhguru Ram Singh. Uh, and he was a Sadhu Sant with, with great abilities from what you hear within the texts, from what you see within the stories given by the Sadhus, from what you see within the discourses of the Beyond by Santuri Ram Singh Ji on the life of uh, Baba Ram Singh Ji. And, you know, they'll say that their Sampurda starts from, some people will say that their Sampurda starts from there. And it's only when you get to their, their Satguru and the Satguru Pratap Singh that they, Sant Indra Singh Chakravati then creates that Guru Parnali and goes all the way back. So as saying, are they Nirmalas, are they Udasis, are they, no, they're separate to all that. You know, we, uh, during those times of the Gurus, we have a number of Sampradas, but obviously they don't feature. They feature a lot later on. They feature on from Sadhguru Ram Singh Ji's time, according to their Sampradha. Well, according to outside influences, if you look at their Sampradha and say they're not linked to Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh Ji, the Namtaris themselves will state that they are the Guru Bansavali, they continue on the Guru order. They are not Sampradha at all. So the next question is, uh, what is your opinion on the book by um, Gyani Balwan Singh Kota Guru, which is called Gurbani Vedant Nirnay? Um, it's uh, one of the books that I've got sat next to me. I, I personally like the book. I think it's very. I think it's good. It's uh, unfortunately a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. It's. Um, it gives an insight onto the different schools of Vedant. If people don't know what Vedant is, but what I like about it is that it provides the, the definitions that you require on um, what are the Vids, what is Brahm, what is Maya, what is Ishwar, what is Atma, those sorts of things. I, I really like those because to an individual who goes, well, what are these things? Where do they come from? You know, what Yanni Balawan Singh Ji does within his book is show, right, okay, here's Brahm. This is what Brahm is according to 
uh, what Vedant states, uh, uses the uh, the quotes from Vichar Saga and other texts to to show this is this what it is. Personally, I like it um, because it's it's a very quick very quick information on what Vedanta is, what Vedanta is as a school of thought, where it comes from, what the terms are, what the terminologies are. It goes into different types of Vedanta as well. So Vedanta is not just basically, I was on a podcast not long ago, but when you talk about Vedanta, Vedanta is what in philosophical sense is the Western um, philosophers call monism. Uh, and it touches upon uh, Vishista Advaitavad, Advaitavad, Dvaita Dvaitavad, Shuddha Dvaitavad. It touches on those those four th- sorts of things, because Vedanta in itself is a, is a bigger school of thought. So, I personally like the book. It's my sort of book. Um, to some people, it's just a load of words they're not bothered about. It doesn't doesn't mean anything. The problem, you know, with with like most of these books, especially by the Nirmala scholars, if it's not something you're interested in, it's just a book. For me, it's it's essential to, especially writing the Dika on the Japji Sahib and the Vichar Chandarodhya, I needed that book. That book was essential to writing it. So the next question is, uh, so it says, uh, there are people like Gyani Sant Singh Maskinji and Gyani Pindarpal Singhji who are called missionaries or have studied at missionary institutions. But there are also missionaries like Sarabjit Singh Tunda, who yeah. is also called a missionary and his views are different by a lot. Where do yeah. these differences come from if they are all called missionaries? Well, that's very easy. Gyani Balwan Singh, uh, sorry. Gyani San Sinji Muskeen was not a missionary. He learnt his Vidya and he says it within uh, his Gatha numerous times from uh, Sant Gyani Balwan Singhji Nirmala. He was taught by the Nirmalas and his Vidya is from the Nirmalas. Um, Gyani uh, San Sinji Muskeen was obviously heavily influenced by the uh, uh, Farsi traditions such as uh, uh, Sheikh Shadi and people like that and Hafiz and, and things like that so he was completely different due to his influence initially from Gyani Man Singh Jod, but he was a Nirmala in aspects and he says it, you know, you have him doing Katha in 93, 94 um, at the Barsina of Sandalil Singh, uh, sorry, not 93, 94 later on in that um, it's in the early 2000s at the uh, Barsina of Sandalil Singh and things like that and he mentions numerous times that he he was taught by uh, a Nirmala. He comes from the Nirmala school of thought. Um, he just didn't wear the garb, um, and he was well rounded in his education of other, especially especially like I said, Persian um, Persian texts. He, his knowledge on that was uh, fantastic, such as uh, Gyani Man Singh Charles was. Uh, uh, interesting story when you talk like, about Gyani Pindapal. Like, absolutely phenomenal, his logic. You know, his knowledge on Sikhian texts is, is amazing. But he had two, if you, um, he had uh, two lives basically as a uh, Sikh missionary. He initially was a Sikh missionary. And this is, I'm, I'm telling you this second hand because I don't know this first hand. What I've been told is he learned everything from the Sikh missionaries, went and did Gatha initially in model town Ladiana. Uh, his Gatha wasn't much liked and his views were very rigid and then he went and was retaught again under the guidance of the Jawadi Tuxal again. But he is, you know, he's still considering himself a missionary but you, you cannot take away anything in his knowledge of Gurbani. I like, you know, I, when, I, when I like listening to Gatha, I like the stories from other grants, other theorems and things like that. Gyani Pindapal Singh is really, really clever at making sure that his stories that he gives are all from within the punk, if he can. Um, and yes, they are very, very different to your people like your uh, Sabjit Singh Tundas, your uh, Gurbachan Singh Thailand, all that, you know, people like that, they are completely different to them. And it's because, like I said, they have learned from institutions that have been linked to Sampradaya Sikhi, while those people like Tunda and those lot, 
absolutely detest those Sampradayak Sikhs. They see them as undercover Brahmins. They won't go anywhere near them. Um, but yeah, that's where the difference is. Gyani Bindapal is linked to all the Sampradas, very, uh, very much um, close to all the Sampradas, has had his has had a secondary education from the Jawadi Tuxals, uh, such as with like the likes of Gyani Kalwan Singhji and Pai Tarim Bhiv Singh. So the next question is, what is the history on the different types of Rehras Sahibs, such as the Buddha, the Taksali, and Missionary Rehras Sahibs, and what role do they play in the overall mission or role of the Sampradas? All right, this is... There's, there's a big difference now if you look at the Rehras between, between the... Uh, the Buddha Dals or the Hang Sings and the Tuxal. Not, not to the degree that there is within the SGPC and what, what they recite. The big difference you have within all the Rehras comes within the 1920s where the Akal Takht is challenged uh, with regards to its reverence and um, Barney um, that people recite from the Dasam. So we get the... Um, the Adasam Granth being taken out of the Akal Tak, and we get um, obviously the Chalpais and everything being removed from the um, the Redas at the time. Now slowly, obviously, we've got a certain amount of the Adasam Barnia back within the Redas, but not all of it. So we have the big mix, the big the big shift of change happening. Like I said, at the move at the start of the movement with the SGPCs and things like that. Uh, that's where the big movement is. There is a difference between the Dohre uh, and the Chalpais read by the Taksal and read by the uh, the Nahangs. Uh, not to a massive degree, but you know, your Chalpai within the uh, Nahangs starts with Mahakal Jika Sampras for Life Chai or No Pujadusa. Jag Pacha Savuja, Jay Pujaske, Nipaka, Rai, Tidmar Apno Hate, Astra Jaleta Pujari. You know, it goes from there. It starts a lot earlier within that Chaleta. Not, not to a massive amount, but it, you know, mentions extra bits within that point. You get a number of Dore and Soratars as well that feature later on. Now, where they appear from, I don't know. Um, those people who look at the length of Barney's and the difference in Barney's need to actually look at uh, the Paratham Gurkhas, need to look at the Paratham um, uh, Karras that are available within the different ducts and figure out where that comes from. Personally, I don't know. Um, I, I personally read the, um, the Nihang, Nihang Gurkha when it comes to the Redas only because it's got the extra bits in. And uh, I think there's no harm in doing the extra, personally. Which Sampardaik Japji Sahib Katha would you recommend for a beginner and then, uh, as well as when they get more advanced. Yeah, right. Um, job Jisai job for a beginner. Uh, I'd... See, this, this is difficult. So, job Jisai for a beginner. I would say to an individual, listen to Gyani San Singh Jumaskin's initial job Jisai Katha. Very basic, very straightforward. Uh, Gyani Thakur Singhji from the Tuxal has done a very basic line-by-line -line translation as well. Personal, you know, and for somebody who's coming to Sikhi, that, that might be really good and essential for them. For me, I find it a waste of my time because it's so basic, I can tell those definitions myself. What a person should want to move on to later on is the the Katha within the Taksals. Uh, uh, the only reason I say that is because we have a lack of Katha from uh, the Nirmalas and the Odasis and the Nihangs. Especially the Nihangs, I find it really, really strange that there's a lack of Katha on the internet from the Nihangs. Um, so the Katha that I would want to get to is Santagani Gurbach and Singh's Katha on the Jabji Zan. I personally think there's nothing better than that. Absolutely nothing better. But before you hit those, you want to be starting off at Gyanisan Singh Yumasins, 
Arsenal for Gianni Tarkasins is basic. Then you want to look at the next Qatar um, Gianni Tarkasins is, which is in a bit more depth. Um, Gianni Pendelpaar sings Katha is really good, but it's more lectures. Uh, Gianni Kalwan sings Katha is more lectures rather than Katha. And then you get to some of the best lectures, if you want lectures on Jabji Saab, is Gianni San sings you Maskeen's last Jabji Saab Katha, which he did in New York. He only got up to the parties, you know, late 20s in the parties there. He didn't complete it because unfortunately he moved on. Um, and then the last one, Santagani Gurbach Singh's Katha. I can't say that there is any better Katha uh, in an audio format by Santagani Gurbach Singh. The only thing that puts anybody off is the quality of the audio in that Katha. Uh, and unfortunately, due to the errors not knowing how to do the recordings at the time, the quality of the Katha isn't good in an, as in a, an audible format. But the knowledge that's contained in that Katha, you will never find elsewhere. So, uh, in regards to the Sampardaik Japji Saib Kathas, uh, what would you say about Sant Sukha Singh Ji um, Karnal Wale Nirmala Japji Saib Katha? What would you say about that one? I, I, like, I like the Katha. I like the Katha, I, I, you know, because I've put it up on Gurmat Vijayar. I've got the videos at home. I've got a lot of Sant Sukha Singh Ji's Katha. There's a difference between what I would consider Katha and what I would consider to be lectures. Now, Katha, Santagani Guru Bhutan Singh Ji are really quick. That Katha is really quick to the point that you will hear something and have to rewind it again, rewind it again, write it down. I know how difficult it is to follow that Katha when you're writing it out. I'm sitting here listening to the Katha of somebody else at the moment and I'm typing it out and it's just easy because it's, it's just a lecture. There's no terminology being discussed. There's no Vedantic terms. There's no... There's no term being said where I then have to find 10 other books to figure out what it means. It's, you know, Sam Gennagur Bhutta Singh Ji's Katha is really good. It's much in depth. It's really quick. Sam Sukha Singh Ji Karnalwali's Katha is good. But it's a lot of stories and a lot of veering off a tangent every now and then where they have to come back. There's a lot of stories in there. And I know that because I've taken clips off their Katha of the... Saki about Mitra Priyali Nuhar, Mridara Kehana, talking about Hiranja, talking about Man Singh, talking about uh, Birbal and uh, J- uh, you know, Akbar. You know, those, there's some great stories in there. But Katha wise, it's more, it's more lectures. And I think we, we as a community consider everybody who sits on a stage who is talking about something to be performing Katha. Because that, that's how we see it. It's all termed under one thing, it's all termed as Katha. But Katha is what Santagani Gurbhachan Singh does, and it moves on really quick. It moves on really quick. They talk about the points that are mentioned within Gurbani only. They only focus on a story if it relates to that, uh, and they don't veer off in a tangent. So Sansukha Singh's Katha is really good. You know, I, I, there's, there's so many different Kathas I can put out there for people to listen to. It is really, really good, really interesting. Um, but for me, I like to stay on top of that next line of Gurbani. Next line of Gurbani, how does the, the definitions in this line fit into the next line? And you get that within some Gianni Gurbani and just got more than anybody else's. So the next question is, which Katha or Tika of Siddh Ghost would you recommend? Ooh. <clears throat> Interesting, right. The two best Dikas available of Sid Gush at the moment are found within the Amir Pandar Dika. And, and actually, the best one is found within the Gurbani Art Pandar, which is written out by Santari Sinji and Alvarado. Um, that is written from the Katha by, um, um, by Santagani Gurbachan Sinji and other Sampradayic texts, which have been used to formulate that um, Dika altogether. Those are the best two that are available to people now. Um, I have got the Dika by Mahanti Singh Seva Panthi before they passed away. Um, that is a really good Dika. It's completely different. It's written in a completely different way. It's quite straightforward and basic, but it's, it's interesting because obviously Sid Gosh is a question and answer that takes place by Grunandoji with the Sids. 
which is then compiled later on at Kartarpur under the guidance of Pai Lenaji. And that's explained to Pai Bidhi Chand within the Gurbalas Parsai Shemi by Sri Guru Hargobindji. That tika, and there's a tika by Mahant Ganesha Singh that's handwritten and not um, actually published. Those are interesting tikas that I would suggest if you ever get a chance to read are, are worth, worth looking at. There's another uh, other Nirmala tikas on the Sid Gosh, some of them completely basic, some of them really difficult to read um, that I could mention, but it's not really worth it because if somebody gets hold of them, they're just going to either go, this wasn't worth my time or this is too difficult to look at. So I would say that Gurbani Arth Pandar at the moment, you can't get hold of that. Well, you should be able to because I've made sure that was on PDF the day it came out and that's all over the internet. And like I said, the Gurbani, uh, Amir, uh, sorry, Amir Pandar Tika by Sant Kripal Singhji, Sattu Galiwane, that again is on Gurmat Vichar. You should be able to read those. And like I said, Mahant, uh, Tira Singhji's Tika Seva Panthi, I will try to uh, put into a PDF format at some point and make that available for the rest of the Sunday. So the next question is, why do you think there is such a decline of Sampardas today and the emergences, uh, emergence of uh, people like Tadriyavana and Tunda, etc.? There isn't. Uh, there isn't at all. The, the Sampardas are there. They have said many times, we will put these debates on with you. Santhari Singhji in 2005-2006 had all these debates on, on his own. Uh, San Sukhchan Singhji, Tanampura Wale did exactly the same. San Seva Singhji, Rampur Kira Wale did exactly the same. Some of the, these are, are recorded, some of these are not recorded. You know, so the Sampardas are there. What we have is, as a problem within the Sampardas is, uh, and I get accused of this exactly same, is publicity, lack of publicity. We're really bad at publicizing when we have done something positive. So Santhari Singhji went and challenged Professor Darshan Singh in New York and said, right, we will at a Gurdwara uh, have a debate on the Dasam Granth. It was started until the Sangat there said, there's supposed to be no debate on this. It's come from the Akal Takht. So Santhari Singhji stops it. The reports come out the next day within the spokesman that Santhari Singhji ran away from this uh, debate and, uh, and uh, Professor Darshan Singh won, which is completely wrong because... When you see the real videos, you see the Sangat stop it, Sanbal Jinder Singhji are there, other people are there from Rada Sahib, and they all say, you know, it's stopped, we've got the videos. It, it's, it's stopped. Sanbal Singhji said, I will not go against the, the Hukum of uh, Akal Takht, so we'll walk away from it. But then he's been on TV, he's uh, argued with, you know, him and um, Sant uh, Nahar Singhji, Hariya Velawale, have had the discussion with Kala Afghana, we've put the videos up. They have then been on TV and had the debate with uh, Jiwanwala, Gurbhaj Singh Jiwanwala. We'll put them up. The difference is that we don't publicize it every two minutes. When you go on to uh, some of these missionary sites, which I check out every week to see what rubbish they're filtering, they're really good at putting posts out all the time. The sample of those are really poor at putting out posts, books, uh, and anything to show that they have opposed a matter that has been brought up by the <clears throat> by these missionaries. You know, a big issue, like I'd say today. Um, I can find more recordings of Raghi Darshan Singh, uh, Tunda, and other missionaries who are uh, Pantpreet and people like that. More, more recordings of them on the internet than I will of Kathakar's and Pracharics within the Sampradas um, within the last year. And I don't understand why, because every Samparda should be recording everything they do. I don't know if it's a personal thing in my personal psyche. I work as a police officer. I do interviews all the time. I transcribe interviews. Um, you know, I, I listen to devices. I do all sorts. For me, I keep every single thing that I hear or see. And I don't know why the Sampradas don't do it themselves. So you know that that's the issue we have. We have a lack of publicity, and we we don't publicise when we challenge these these opinions and things. Is there any written comparative analysis of the different claims of the various sampraday bans, bansavalia, uh, where they differ? 
Um, I'm trying to think. Of a, you, you, just, just ask me that again. Are you asking if there's any books that challenge uh, any Sampradaya's lineages? Is that what you mean? Uh, no, uh, I'm just reading the question as it was written. It just says, um, are, is there any uh, written comparative analysis of the different claims of the various Sampradaya Bansavalia where they differ? Not that I've seen. Um, I've not seen a book that challenges it, challenges a Bansavli from another Sampradaya. I've not seen one. I've seen... No, no, I haven't. Um, because nobody so far has challenged those. Obviously, I've, I've heard people challenge them on stage, but nobody has actually put anything in a written format challenging a Sampradayak Bansavali. Say, say we were talking about um, the Nirmal Banth board, and quite frankly, somebody would go, I don't agree with Sant uh, Gurbhachan Singhji and the Taksal being part of the Girivir Sampradayak. Or the Nahangs going, I don't agree that Baba Deep Singh Ji or Mr. Shahid had any part of the Sampradha that Taksar proclaimed to be. I've not seen anything in a written format that challenges that. Is it So the next question is, is it true that Sant Singh Maskin Ji was responsible for building the Gurdwara where Shri uh, Oankar Sahib uh, slash uh, Dakhni Oankar was recited by Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji? What is the history behind the Gurdwara and what references are available to read about this? Uh, a really good question, and I'm going to give you the worst answer. I don't know. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm really sorry to say that I didn't even know that, and it's something that I will now look at and research. Obviously, Onkar, um, the Dakini Onkar is recited by Sri Guru Nandaji at that location. I was, I assumed, and it's an assumption of mine which you should never assume anything, uh, and they always tell you that. I assumed that there was already a Guru Kar there. Uh, I wasn't aware that Gani Sansing's Muskeen might have been responsible for uh, the building of a, a Gurdwara at that location. I'll do some work, see what I can find out, and uh, I'll, I'll try to send you, send you a message at some point so you can contact the uh, original person who's put that question down. But sorry, yeah, sorry, can't answer that. No worries. So the next question is, are there any Sampardas that have disappeared over time? And can you give a short summary on them? Uh, yeah, there's, there's a, okay, we've got <clears throat> one of the main Sampardas that have gone is the Gangu Shahi. The Gangu Shahi uh, had disappeared during the times of the missiles. Um, and they came into, right, the Gangu Shahi came into, uh, adherence from a Kutri by the name of Gangu who served uh, Sri Guru Amadas. The Gangu Shahi came in then. And they were one of the 22 Manjiyan that were given, and uh, Gangu Shahi started there. So Gangu Shahi's uh, tomb is in Kagal, which is in Dwabba. So what happened was the Gangu Shahi then, um, later on, began to exploit the battles between the Khalsa and the Mughals for their own ends. They started to exploit uh, everything for themselves. So within the Prachin Banth Prakash, you get Ratan Singh Pangu explaining how um, the Akalis destroyed the Gangu Shahi. And, uh, you know, they, they no longer exist. So they existed from the time of the Guru until that missile period before the Sikh kingdoms. Um, when they were when they were actually um, destroyed and put out, you know, you got other, uh, like I said, other sampradas that disappeared. Satkartaria, we don't see them anymore. The Handalia, the engineer who obviously uh, were involved in the corruption of the Janam Sakhis, you don't see any of those. Devan Nisads, who were one of, um, they were an offshoot of some of the. Um, what do you call it? Uh, Udasis. So obviously I said there's 10 orders of the Udasis, but there's loads more. There's Mina, there's the Bari Das, there's people that come from uh, Galabrai, there's people that come from uh, uh, oh, Ramai's brother, I forgot his name. 
No, it is, it is sorry, it is Ram Rai from Ram Rai. Uh, they come from Ram Rai, so you get different Adasi orders that have, have disappeared completely. The Bandai Khalsa, you know, Bandai Khalsa was, we could say they're an offshoot or a Sampradai, but they disappeared obviously with Banda, Banda Singh Bahadur. Um, you know, there, there are loads, the Glav Raya, Glav Das, yeah, there's, there's lots, there's lots of different, different Sampradas that appear later, not from the Guru stage, but the one from the Guru stage I can think of is the Gangu Shahi. And they were absolutely decimated by the Akali Nahangs. Um, and, you know, you can find all of that written within um, the um, Prachin Pantapagash. Um, you know, it talks about Mir Singh, Karak Singh, people like that who, who fought against them uh, and, and put them to put them to an end. So the next question is, what is your view on the relation between Gurmat and Vedmat slash Vedant? Most Sampradayak sources say that Gurmat keeps the Vedas as Shruti, but uh, Garab Ganjani goes further, uh, saying that Gurbani is Vedas in Desh Bakhan Bakha? Yeah, Desh Bakha. So in in um in what in, in a language that we can speak. Uh De Devbaka, sorry, is um obviously the language of the, the Devti, but so Vedanta and Gurumata are interrelatable because they're sending the same message. Now people get this is where the big difference is. People get mixed up with what Vedanta is and what the Veds are. They are completely different things. The Veds are the texts that derive from Rig, Yujur, Atarban and Sam, these four Veds. Now, what they have within the four Veds is four, um, four Mahavaks um, that appear. So the four Mahavaks are the essential parts of what makes up um, Vedanta. So the four Mahavaks that you get are Tatvan Asmi, Ayamatam Brahm, um, Pragyamanan Brahm, and uh, I'm trying to think of the other one off the top of my head. So you got, sorry. So you've got Pragyamanand Brahm, which comes from the Rig Ved, Ayan Brahm As- uh, Ahan Brahm Asmi, which comes from Yujur Ved, Ayamatam Brahm, which comes from Atharvan Ved, and Tatam Asmi, which comes from Shan Ved. That is the foundation of Vedanta, those four singular um, sayings, great utterances. They're called the Mahavaks. And Sandhya Guru Bhattan Singhji states that these, the same Mahavak appears within the, the Japji side. And so there's Garab Ganjani say, saying, it says, Tu Sala Salama Tamirankar, which is basically saying the same thing that you should always place yourself, you place your thoughts and faith on the one constant form, as this is also your form. Realize that you are the form of God. That's what all these four things from Vedanta are saying. Vedanta is basically saying that. So, where we get, what's the relationship between uh, Sikhi and the Veds? Well, the, uh, Sikhi is independent from the Veds. We, you know, we are not part, you know, believe the Vids are there. The Vids uh, have always been there before their Sanatana Dharam. But they are not part of our Dharam. Gurbani is independent from the Vids. The Vids talk about ritualistic nature. They talk about Soma. They talk about Dev, Dev. They talk about um, uh, sacrificing for the different um, castes and creeds and all sorts. Gurbani is above all that. You know, that is... Their rituals, they're, they're involved in their sort of karma. What Gurbani is linked in is the essential of what Vedanta is. Vedanta is saying, you know, these are the great statements. That's what Gurbani is full of great statements. The Veds have only got one Mahavak in each Ved. Gurbani is, the whole of Gurbani is a Mahavak. They are all great statements. You know, Gurnanda just says, Atam Ram, Hai Ram, Hai Atam. Or they say, in Perurag, they say, Atam Mahi Ram, Ram Mahi Atam. Uh, you know, so they're saying exactly the same thing that, you know, it is the same. Um, and what, what you're looking at is be- the correlation between Vedant and Gurbani is the same thing. In the same way, if you said to me, what is the, dif- what is the similarity between the Christian Gnostic text and Gurbani? Well, the Christian Gnostic text is saying exactly the same thing. They're saying about the emergence of the one with the divine. And Gurbani is saying the same. The Veds don't. The Veds talk about rituals and all sorts. 
Gurbani is independent to that. Gurbani will, Gurbani has those Mahavaks that are found within the Vedas, but it's elaborated on. Gurbani is all a Mahavak. It is the great statement. I'm not sure if I've covered that question properly, but you might want to ask it again. Yeah, so uh, to reiterate the question, it was, what is your view on the relation between Gurmat and Vedmat slash Vedant? Uh, and it says, most Sampradayic sources say Gurmat keeps the Vedas as Shruti, but Garib Ganjani goes further, uh, saying that Gurbani is Vedas in Desh, however you pronounce yeah, that Desh Bakar, yeah. Desh Bakar. Yeah, so yeah, that's what it is. What, what, um, like I said, within the Garab Ganji, that's that's you know, in the Garab Ganji for that Mahavak, it says, you know, Tu Sala Salamat Minka, it says, Isa Tukuma Mahavakya, and so Tu Pada say Tu Pada, Sala Salamat Pada say Tata Pada, Nirankar Pada say Azapada, Tata Pada Ka or Tuan Pada, Ka Anavan Hothair. Now, I know everybody's going to be going, yeah, you just said a load of words and it means nothing. But what, what that what Gurbani is saying is, you know, Tu Pada say Tu Pada, Sala Salamat Pada say Tata Pada, Nirankar Pada say Azapada, Tata Pada Ka or Tuan Pada, Ka Anavan Hothair. Now, I know but what, what, that, what, what it's saying there, in, in the Garab Ganjani, it states that this verse contains a great statement in the same way that the Tu in the Tu Sada Salamat Nankar represents the Tuan, which is the Jeev, the, the, the finite, what, what we would call the soul or whatever, the individual. So uh, it continues on, it says, the constant formless, which Sada Salamat, indicates the Tatpad, which is Ishwar. Tatpad in Vedant is Ishwar, which is a Parmeshwar within, within a Sargun realm. And then it says, Nirankar is the real identity. Due to this, the Tat and the Tuan have a relationship. So that, that's what it says in there. So it's, it's basically putting Vedant in there. And it says, within that Mahavak, it says, this is explained four times in Japji, Japji Sahib. So you recite in Japji Sahib every day, Tu Sada Salam to Nirankar. To, you say that four times to represent the four Mahavaks that are found within Vedant. It's also explained if somebody looks at that and goes, I don't believe, believe this, and I think, like, you know, Cam's talking a load of rubbish here. In the Nanak Prakash, it's written there, uh, again by Kavi Santok Shinji, within uh, Guru, Go- Guru Har Gobindji explaining to their Sikhs about the Japji Sahib, uh, to Pai Bidhi Chand, and they mention it there, about the Mahavaks uh, and the Vedant. Guru Gobind Singh Ji again talks about it when the Jabji Sahib Mahatam within the third root of the uh, Gurpatap Suj Prakash and then within the fifth root of uh, the uh, Gurpatap Suj Prakash by Daya Singh Ji within the Vedanta Vichar mentions exactly the same. And if, for anybody who is confused about the relationship between Vedant and Sikhi or Gurbani, I would suggest to them, pick up the Gurpratap Suj Prakash, pick up the fifth root, the last ten uh, chapters or adhyayas within the fifth root are the most difficult to comprehend and understand. You will need to either listen to Gyani Harpajan Singh Katha or somebody else's with it. But it explains Vedanta Vichar, uh, explains Kalam philosophy, explains Atam Vichar, Atam Darpan, Brahm Gyan, uh, explains all those topics within there. Uh, and and that answer to the question will be answered there. What is the relationship? The Vedas are independent to Gurbani. There are a few talks within Gurbani Shrutis or statements or whatever that are mentioned. Sorry, a few statements within the Vedas that are mentioned within Gurbani. Gurbani is independent. Gurbani is a complete Mahavag from start to finish, including the Ragmala, uh, which some people don't believe is part of it or has no spiritual meaning. It does. So Vedant is this is following the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the becoming one with God. That is all um, the Mahavaks talk about, becoming one with. Um, so yeah, so my, that is my view. Um, if you want to hear more on my view on Vedant and what it is, like I said, contact Ramblings of a Sikh uh, on Instagram. He has done a podcast with me. It was three and a half hours long on what is Vedanta and where it comes from and what it's to do with. And hopefully it's all been recorded and it will be up soon. So the next question is, which Vedanta books would you recommend to get an intro into Vedanta, uh, preferably with an English translation? 
Ooh, um, getting into Vedant, um, the best thing to do is just sit on Google and, and type what is Vedant and you will get a load of books from the 18th and 19th century which are written by English um, translators when they first went to India. Um, basic Vedant is, um, I'm just trying to think in English, some of the books by Santvari Amsinji are really, really good books. And you can find the PDFs. I've got PDFs all over the internet. Um, they're available. Um, but, you know, The Way to the Imperceptible or the five books on the discourses uh, on the beyond are available in English. They're PDF downloads uh, and they will explain the dance. I'm going to do some, some um, self-promotion here, but I have written out the English translations for the Vijayamala, Purbo Chandra Nartik, Vichar Chandra Sarkutavali. These are all Vedanta texts that have been translated into English. If you want to know Vedanta uh, more than anything, the Jabji Saipika are uh, by Sandhyani Gurbhachan Singhji, which I've been translating so far in eight parts. That covers all the Vedanta terms. Um, if you want to go in depth into Vedanta, there's a book by Lala Sri Ram uh, from the 1800s, and it's into the metaphysics of the Vichara Saga. The Vichara Saga is a big Vedantic text uh, worth reading. That's available in English, uh, but it's old English. Uh, the Purbodha Chand uh, yeah, Chandrodhya by Krishna Mishra uh, is a very short Vedantic text that you can buy, that is the basic of the Purvoch and the Nartic that yeah, Pandit Gulab Singh writes. Um, but there's, there's loads. I, I, can, I can give you loads. It depends where you want to start, what you want to start with, and what is your interest in Vedanta. So the next question is, is there a way to make a one-time donation to support you instead of a monthly uh, contribution? Um, all right, I, the whole purpose of setting up Seeking Snippets with, with this sort of thing was to bring these books to individuals. Now, I know myself, if I take money off individuals, at some point, all those kind individuals who have helped me so far, I know in some life I'm going to have to help them or something's going to happen. So the whole purpose of providing these books was to take that liquor away so I don't have to do that in another life. And I, they don't have to do that for me in this life as well. So I would prefer if people want to sign up as sponsors and I can send them books, it takes the weight off me in this life and the next. If people do want to donate, I have, uh, you know, I have, I'm not going to lie, I've had two individuals who have donated in the last two months. And they have donated, uh, you know, an amount of money which is actually helping with sustaining both books and things like that. it can be done if somebody does want to do it um they can contact me but i really would prefer if somebody just becomes a sponsor so i can give them something back for that money because otherwise that weight is on my shoulders even this life or the next so the next question is uh traditionally Within Gurmat and other traditions, Gyan was not so easily accessible, and there were more barriers that helped ensure that only Adhikari Jagyasus were given it. How do you think uh, that the Panth can continue this in today's world with so much publicly available knowledge while still keeping it accessible? I agree, I agree with you. I totally agree with you there. Uh, Gyan was not something that was easily accessible. Not just that, the the ability to take uh, Khande Bhattara Amrit was not easily accessible. To the point that Sant Kirtar Singhji, on their first occasion when they wanted to take Amrit, was told, no, they couldn't. They had to go back and learn ten, uh, five more Bani on top of their Nithinam by, you know, off their heart. Um, you know, um, uh, we've cheapened a lot of things. One is and I'd say the other one is knowledge because we have, we put the knowledge out there. The difference between Gurbani and the way Vedanta works, Vedanta is where somebody can pick up all these grants, read them, 
and then go, I am God. The essential being is that I am God, I am this, I am that. With Gurbani, the thing is very different. You know, it's, it, within the Jabji Sahib, it says it's Guru Prasad, it's Guru Di Kirpadana. One, you have to serve and find your Guru through, through your taking on with you serve through the Panch Brother, you do your Seva, you do all that in order to keep your humility. A person can read hundreds and hundreds of books, but if that ability or that grace is not there from the Guru or Ustads and things like that, you're not going to retain it. You can read, I can read a French book again and again and again. Um, it doesn't mean I'll retain it. It's the same way with this knowledge as well. So as much as what the Ustads are trying to do, um, and that's the reason why they send so much content for us to put up on the internet, is to try to give students a grounding, whereas years ago they could have come for six months and learnt in India. Now with the economy the way it is, the world the way it is, people can barely get two to three weeks off work in order to be educated in India, and that's not enough time. So what they're doing is all these books are going on the internet in order for people to gain a grounding, gain some knowledge, and gain the ability of the foundation of Gyan, but it's only when you are learning under a teacher, whether it's an online thing or whether you're learning from uh, directly under an individual, that you're going to take that knowledge in and learn it through sources or, or their methods that they, they teach it. Yeah, it is cheapened. We, we seem to have cheapened knowledge and you can learn a few lines. You can sit like people like me as keyboard internet uh, um, individuals who think they're, they're full of video, but full of their own pride uh, but that's all it does it just creates pride so still if you are learning these texts you are learning these things make sure you find knowledgeable good six uh, knowledgeable teachers um, to sit there uh, and talk to the the one thing about Gurbani and Gurmat is vichar vichar is essential um, and to bounce those ideas off of the people is necessary in, in um, pushing yourself forward both on a divine plane um, and using that knowledge to actually access your true self. That's all it's supposed to be. You know, I'm talking from reading from books. I'm not giving anybody any divine knowledge that I've got. I ain't got no divine knowledge. I can just tell you that I'm really good at memorizing these books and I'm in the same situation as everybody else. I learn all these things. I memorize these things, but I still have to, as soon as an astad comes, I sit there and I have, as my year goes on, I, I write questions on a on a a pad of paper and then I sit with my ustad and I say explain this, tell me this I don't understand this, how am I supposed to understand this, what am I supposed to do so knowledge is cheapened but it's only the foundation knowledge attaining that knowledge, working on that knowledge and and retrieving that knowledge for the rest of your life is, is the difficult thing So the next question is, where do the different nithinims come from? For example, Nihangs do a lot. Uh, most places have uh, the Satbaniya. SGPC yeah. only has five. So the, so where do these um, differences come from for the different nithinim sizes? Uh, the the differences come from the different um, different Rathmari others. That, that's where a lot of them come from. Um, you know, the, the majority, the biggest nithinim you'll find is not even with the Akali Nahangs, but it comes within the Namtaris. The Namtaris Nithanam is longer than anybody else's with regards to the number of Baniya that they read. And that comes from their Rehatnami, within their own Sampa, up Sampa there. Within the other ones, you look at, you know, I was just reading by Dea Singhji's um, Nithanam, and obviously they say the Nithanam is, um, you know, your daily Nithanam is Jabji Sahib, Jab Sahib. Then you've got the four different types of Savanya, which are read at Hajur Sahib. And the job is out in the non time, so that's more than five in just the morning. It comes from the different red army, it comes from the adherence to those red um, and that's what it comes down to. So, the next question is Max Arthur McAuliffe is a controversial historical character. What is your view on him and the, his translations of Gurbani into English? Um, Max Arthur, well, Arthur Markleff, I think, is an interesting individual. I like his books because those were some of the first books that I read going back to 1993. Um, most of you lot were probably not even born then. Um, but yeah, 1993, I picked up his books. Uh, volumes 1 to 6, I thought they were really good. The only thing that I hated was 
uh, his translations of Gurbani. His translations of Gurbani are very simple, very simple, and they are line by line literal translations. There's no intrinsic value, there's no atanikas, there's nothing like that. So what you get within his translations are what I'd call a subtlety, and you see this in uh, Paisa by Jiginder Singh Tulawara's um, sticks that you get in Punjabi. They are very basic. They are very straightforward. They're for that individual that just wants to know what each line means, but it doesn't actually tell you who's asking the question, where the question is being asked, which one's the answer. Um, it, you know, it doesn't provide anything. The two things that I would say that are the most interesting things of Max Arthur Maraclist's books, actually three things. One is his stories on the Bhagats. Obviously, we don't have them in the Gurpratavs and you haven't got the Janams. Unless you've got their Janam Sakis, you don't know their history. The second thing you find is that Max Arthur Malcolm mentions that there is one slok by Sri Guru Gobind Singh within the Sri Guru Granth Sahib. Now, at the age of 13, that to me was monumental because I then spent ages looking through the Sri Guru Granth Sahib and couldn't find that one slok and thought he had made it up until you find the Pankti written under Mahalla Dasma or Pachahi Dasmi in the Puratan Sahib. And then the next thing you find is that it is quite obvious that Max Arthur Malkliff is looking at a B of Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib Ji that is written and taken from Pai Banoji's B because he mentions a Shabad of Surdas that isn't in Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib Ji and he mentions a Ram Kali Rag Shabad written by Pagat Mirabai, which is obviously not in the standardized Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib Ji, but it is mentioned by Max Arthur Malkliff and Yan Gyansi. So, yeah, you know, I, I can't say a lot. I can say that it's an interesting read for somebody who's coming to Sikhi, but the translations of Gurbani are just basic line-by-line -line translations of the words without giving any intrinsic meaning or add, adding any value to that translation. So the next question is, what is the difference between AKJ and Dodra, and where do they come from? Uh, easy answer to that, I don't know. Absolutely do not know. And I've been asking that question for some years. Um, you know, by side by Lindy Sinji, uh, obviously he is influential within the Akhand Kipani Jatha. Um, I cannot tell you anything about uh, the Dorda Jatha at all. I've seen that they have their differences, but I don't even know what those differences are. So unfortunately, I can't elaborate on that any further. Do you envis envisage the authority of SGPC uh, being challenged as the community learns more about pre-colonial history? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. The SGPC have, um, you know, there's, there's a certain number of things that the SGPC have done that uh, have riled up the communities, whether they're Baratham communities or those communities who don't really have a footing within Sikhi, just the general public. You know, uh, with the uh, Sarsa case, with uh, obviously um, the Sacha Sodha case, sorry, um, you know, that riled up the public. When you see Narendra Modi going to Durbar Sahib, getting a, a you know, um, a distinctive um, a from Durbar Sahib Granthis and things like that. And, you know, politically, how the the Badal Authority are involved. And, you know, th those sorts of things are all going to cause the politics of India to challenge the religious um, order within uh, uh, India, especially the Barsa, and the SGPC will challenge it. You know, I, I watched a really good um, lecture by the Nirmalas on the marginalization of Nirmalas. And they say, look, we want to start doing Katha Manji Sahib like everybody else does. But we're not allowed to because we've been told unless you are wearing a blue or a white star, it's not going to happen. So you can see that they're already starting to challenge, they're wanting to challenge. And if they continue to be more politically motivated than involved in the protection of the Sikh faith within uh, the Sikh lands of Punjab, where obviously now there is a, an onset of conversions to the Christian faith they will be challenged by not just the Sampradas, but the communities and all sorts. And 
people realizing through some really good research by the Punjab, the Patiala University, the Guru Nanak University, um, obviously uh, forums such as this and and you know the internet about these old sampradas are going to make people think, well, why has things changed, and is there a way of bringing back the uh, what we would consider to be authentic Sikhism, or of bringing back the sampradas to provide the different aspects of Sikhism. The next question is, is the current Guru Granth Sahib Ji Saroop the same one that Pai Mani Singh Ji transcribed at Damdama Sahib? And where can the Damdama Bir be found today? The big question is, that where is the Damdama Bir? Um, some mentioned it's at Sanguru, some mentioned it's at other places where nobody can get hold of. The, the problem you're going to have is until somebody finds the actual Damdami Sahib Bir, it's very difficult to to do that. You know, I I was I have put the a copy of the Karra Bir, which is the Bir by Bai Mani Singh Ji, compiling both the Bari from the Dasam uh, and the Adi Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, so from Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji and the Dasam Granth, the Bari together in one Granth. And you can find differences straight away. Um, Obviously, the big big difference, like I said to you, is the Mahalla Dasma. You see the uh, buying money Singh Ji writes it as Padshahi Dasma, Baba Deep Singh Ji writes it as Mahalla Dasma for Guru Govind Singh Ji Salok. But in the standardized version of the Granth that you see today, it doesn't mention Guru Govind Singh Ji's name at all. Um, you also see within the first Shabad that you find in Sri Rag, um, within the standardized Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib Ji today, it says obviously uh, Sri Rag Mahalla Bella. Uh, within uh, by Mani Singh's version, it says Sri Mukhavak Pachai Pella, Pelli. That's all it says. And then it says Moti Kamandarusa Ratinta Hoja. So there are differences you can already see within by Mani Singh's version uh, of the Karrabi to the standardized version. So whether there is a difference between uh, the by Mani Singh's version and the Dam Damasar Beer. Uh, I don't think there would be. You're looking at the same Lakari writing that. The problem is it's trying to locate the original Dum Dum Abid. And unless you can do that, um, you know, you're not going to be able to do that. So what everybody looks at as a standardization is using the Kartarpur B, which is in the hands of the Saudis at the moment, um, in order to measure against the differences. We see differences between the Go and the uh, and the standardization grants, uh, you know, the standardization of the city of Grand Sahib as well. Um, but yeah, un until somebody's able to locate the Dum Dum Sahib unfortunately, that's again, it's supposition. I can, I can give a view, um, but to say that there is a difference or the originality or anything, it's not for me to, um, to, to do any further. So, in the realm of this conversation, how would you describe what it means to be called a Sikh? Ooh, um, it's it's to be to be. It's it's a difficult one. A Sikh is somebody who should be constantly learning. For a start, constantly learning until that point that they find that position of constantness and become one with God. That is the position of a Sikh or a Jigyasu. A Sikh is supposed to be constantly a student and learning and learning and learning. And that's why there's a plethora of books and dikas and whatnot and uh, ustads to learn from. Um, as with regards to, you know, who would I consider a Sikh or do I consider myself a Sikh? No, not really. I can't. You, you look at the Sikhs of yesteryear and you look at their Qurbaniya, their Ankh, their Vidya, we're nowhere close um, to the, the Sikhs of before. I wouldn't, you know, I can't call myself um, anything close to that. I'm a butt as it is. That's how I see myself. I'm an apostate. Um, and, you know, I try to correct whatever I can daily. But to consider that somebody you seek should be a person who's constantly on the path of learning um, and just engrossing themselves, looking themselves for the position of liberation from this earth. 
So the next question is, uh, so you talked about the stricter standards for the requirements to partake in the Amrit Sanchars in the past. Does this in any way imply that the Amrit Sanchars of those who didn't receive uh, the same strict standards uh, would be invalid or somehow considered less? Like, for example, uh, let's say the standardized SGPC Amrit Sanchar at uh, Takht City Keskar Sahib versus the one that happens in uh, Buddha Dal circles. No, because for for me, both both of the Amr Sajars that take place at both of those locations, uh, as much as the Buddha that are going to say no with with a child with with a you know Shahan of Ikarori, we're we're different. The Amr that's taken from here is different. The, the what I talk about when cheapening it is the fact that I I look at I can take the Amr as many times as I want. I can commit as many budget as I want, I can go and take it again and again and again. And it's a case of, you know, they don't ask for anything. I look at, you read the Guru Pratap, you read the Guru Vlas Pachai Dasmi, you read that, and you, and the, the whole point of those grants is to evoke a vision of what is taking place ahead of you. And when you hear the words from Guru Gobind Singh saying, I'll give anything for this, I'll give my head for this, I'll give my family for this, I'll give the Pant everything for this. You know, where is that now where the Pant Bari are asking, going, well, what is this worth to you? What is this? What will you give for this? What, what video have you learned for this? You know, what, you want to see how dedicated somebody is for that Amr. You know, Gani, um, I remember listening to Yogi Harpaj and saying, I, I, was, I was 12 or 13 years old when he was here in, in the UK. I remember listening to him um, being sat on stage and he said that he had tried to take Umrah a number of times and he got told no, no, no. Every time there was another condition, well, you know, you've not learned this, you've not learned that. Suddenly, only Kurtar seems you went to take Umrah and they were told, right, what Barney have you done? And they're like, we know the Pans Barney, we know the Lelas, we know the Nikhlam, off by heart. And they said, yeah, that's fine, but you're not taking it. Now go and learn the Pans Granthi. They want to see the dedication for that Umrah. You know, Panj Bihari gave their heads. They literally gave their heads. They, obviously, you get the, the stories with, you know, Bhakti and Chatakaya, I see this and that. Fine, if that's what people believe. That's what, well, Panj Bihari gave their heads to the Guru. And it should be a case of we're taking that same Amr. Uh, and we shouldn't look at it as something that, oh, don't worry about it. If, if I make a mistake, I can just come back and take it again. Um, it's, you know, people should be, you know, I'm somebody who has taken Amr and broken what I would consider my my red uh, and done my karahata, I know myself that you know I will not consider the umrah to be so cheap that I'll go back and take it tomorrow and do it again. Uh, you know I'll make sure that I I'm in a position where I am ready to take it. If I end up not having to take it and pass away from this realm and go somewhere else, that's my mirror mare bag. Yeah, that's all it is. But I, I think that people should be held accountable more. Or why they have committed karets, or why is it that they want to take um, the Amrit? It's not a case of the Amrit is cheap because you can go either to the SGPC or you can go to Irarasai or you can go to Nirmalas or you can go elsewhere. You, you know, it's cheap because people aren't accountable. People aren't asked why they want to take it. People aren't asked what they've done to want to receive it. And I think, you know, especially when you evoke those historical texts and listen to what is being said. You think you you imagine Sigur Gomsinji who's you know Sargun you know stood there demanding or requesting this Amrit and the Panch Bihari in the Khalsa form as as the Guru you know and they're um, they're questioning what you know they said we we gave our heads what are you going to give you know if they can question the Guru the least we can do is uh, Panch Bihari here is question the Sikhs that turn up and go the Guru did that you know the Guru will give it but what are you willing to give to the Guru? And for me, that, that's all I look at with the cheap ring of all that. Why is Siri Sarbulo Granth Sahib Ji so unknown to the public and do we see any mentions of it in any Puratan Ratanami? And while it was historically kept under strict secrecy by the Nihang Singhs, did it play any roles in any other Sampradas? <clears throat> right. Um, the Sri Sarbalo Granth is obviously 
the first time uh, I'm trying to think. The first time I had read about it was within the writings of Pandit Singh Narottam. And Pandit Singh Narottam writes as a Nirmala that he does not believe that this text is written by Sri Guru Gobind Singh. He writes that I believe this text is written by Sukha Singh, who was the head Granthi of Hajur Sahib. That's what he writes. That's the first time I have read about the Sarbur Prakash or the Sarbur Granth within a, another text. I cannot think of an early time that I have read about it. Uh, I personally don't believe that. I, I, I believe that the writing is of Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji. The, you know, complete, considering Baba Nadan Singh Ji's Gurdwara is a Sarbur Bunga. You know, I've gone through it with my Astad. Um, and obviously the Tika was first released by, um, I'm trying to think, there was a Tika released of the Sarbur Granth by Gyanni Bishan Singh Ji in the 1930s. Now, I've seen somebody with a photo of that Tika, I've never seen it in my life. And then obviously the next time we see a Tika is the one that's released by uh, the Buddha, uh, which was originally written by the Adasis. Uh, well, from what Bob or something says, and then Nahangu became an Adasi. I don't know, well, I can imagine why there's so much secrecy, because Gany Shir Singh Ji explains in his Gatha when the Gore came, when, when the British came over and they wanted to research all of the grants. They approached the Nirmala at the time, and the Nirmala said, we've got two grants, one of which I can show you, because it's a grant for everybody, and the other one is the grant that is kept for the Khalsa, and I can't show you that at all. Um, I can't remember, you know, who he was paraphrasing or what book he was paraphrasing that from. So the mentioning of the third grant is held by the Nahangs. The Nahangs are the custodians of it. I don't know why it was kept in so much secrecy. I can imagine it was kept in so much secrecy because they did not want um, the details of it going out in the same way that the British were taking the details out of... Um, the Salsaki and things like that, and corrupting them. Um, but again, that's my assumption and supposition. But I can't, like I said, the first time I had read about the Granth is featured in Pandit Tara Singh Narottam's works. What are the most authentic sources for the story of the first Amrit Sanchar during Vasakhi 1699? And where does the debate come from? <clears throat> The most authentic text would be um, not even a Sikh text. And I'm taking this from something any more things you've got. They're saying Aligarh University within India, which is an all Muslim university, which contains the, the writings of the Mughal emperors and all sorts of people. They also have the incident recorded by the spies and touts that were sent by Aurangzeb at the time of the Umar Sajjah. And that would be, if that is, if that is actually there, then that would be a first-hand written account of what a person has seen, in the same way as you'd see any police statements of an incident that took place. If that exists, and they're saying at go to university, it does exist. Things have been there to see it uh, and have it translated. <clears throat> so that would be the first, or the most authentic account. Uh, otherwise, we refer to, um, you know, we, we've got to go by the secondary text uh, of everything else that was written after that. So, you know, you look at by Dea Singh Ji's uh, which mentions it, uh, by Jetta Ji's writings, you've got obviously the Gurbalas, Parchai um, Dasmi by God Singh Sukha Singh. Um, I'm not sure if it's mentioned within the Guru Kiyas Sakya by. Uh, the Odasis. Uh, it could be because that was, it would be interesting if it is because that text is written 10 years before uh, Sukha Singh's Gurbalas by Shai Um So again, you know, I, I look at like I would, you know, with my job. So if there is anything authentic, it will be the one, the, the thing that is written at the time and place. If that exists at Aligarh University, that would be really interesting to get hold of and see what takes place. And then, obviously, after that, it would, be, it would have to be the Pratan Gods. So there are some Pradas based on warfare, some based on literature and philosophy, but were <laughs> there any other Sampardas started pre-18th century that were based on music, 
so gurbani sangeet or was it just kept by um uh, ragis and rababis through sina basina uh, for example uh like i remembering hearing sakhis that parkarma had schools of gurbani sangeet yeah well that's that's what it was it was supposed to be like uh, around the bar sahib you had the dairy of the talkers and you had the, where all the sangeet cars were and, and things like that so if you look at it i can't say that you know you look at the original sample of so the adasis i don't think there was a musical period in them the biddies until they come into baba sahib singh biddies you know i don't i don't think they were involved the sodis obviously yeah. the the guru the gurus themselves sri guru arjan dev ji recited you know uses musical instruments uh guru nanak dev ji obviously has the um the rabab with only five strings instead of four strings guru gobind singh ji creates the tals so it would have been the hujuri singhs that were around there in the same way if the gurus were able to play those instruments or have knowledge of those instruments i'm assuming that all the the hujuri singhs would have had the ability to do that we know we had the um the tadis in we had obviously uh, um the lineages coming from pai mardana ji the babis and people like that they were all there but there's not a specific sampradha that focuses on music i'd say if there is one now it's the nandari you know but there isn't a specific one from the guru period that i can say is a specific sampradha that focused on the uh, sangeet rag rita um you know and things like that what advice would you give to someone who does not have any gyan um in the same way as somebody would say to somebody who's got no schooling at school pick up a book pick, talk to people start to learn the the only the gyan is in this you know gurbani gyan is the same as um schooling and you got to go through it now what i'd say to somebody is if, if somebody decides tomorrow they go right you know i don't know anything about sikhi but i'm going to start reading all these books they're not going to get it and japji sahib covers the most essential practice in learning about sikhi and japji sahib mentions one vark which people run over really quickly so gurumukh nadan gurumukh vedan gurumukh reha sahib so gurumukh nadan says the gurumukh initially recites shabads listens to shabads learns kirtan and becomes dispassionate from kirtan gurumukh nadan then says gurumukh vedan well, what that means is the gurumukh then starts to deliberate on these things starts to research i want to know what that shabad means what well, i was listening to that shabad yesterday and it evoked a load of tears in my eyes why did it do that I want to know where that shabad is recited. I want to know why that made me feel this way. And then from there, Gurmukh Vedan basically means they start to research. They start looking through the scriptures. They start looking through the shabads. They start looking at uh, knowledge. And it's only from that that they become Gurmukh Rehya Samai. It's from that that they become they gain the contemplation uh, and they gain that physical and spiritual state that is through those things. So Gurbani tells you straight. Jabji Sahib tells you straight. Do you want to get gyan that's how you got to go and everybody does that i started exactly the same way i don't nobody starts with i'm going to read all these books and learn all these things you listen to a load of shabads you listen to a load of things and then 10 out of the 100 shabads become something your heart wants to listen to again and again and then you go well, what does that mean why is that um i'd say that's the easiest way and that's what gurbani states that kal jog mein kirtan pardana you know and then it says Uh, you know, the, those stages are all mentioned within Gurbani. Start with Kirtan. Start learning those things. You don't have to even learn what the Shabbats mean because you'll feel it, especially in a Raag, you'll feel a dispassion or a happiness or something coming from that Raag with the Shabbat. And you'll want to, you'll become intuitive to what it is. Okay, so um, the next question um, is, Do you know anything about the other Guru Granth Sahib Ji speak by Bai Mani or Bai Mani Singh sir or Shahid? Sorry. Uh, um, Shahid Bai Mani Singh is it? Yes. Um, I've heard that there are some families slash a family that has a potty of it but not available to the public. 
No, but th- not the one by by many sins. Like we said, that's going to be obviously the dum dum aside beer. The the beer that is held within a family is the Qatar for beer, uh, and that is the one that's written obviously in the in the penmanship by by Gurdasti under the tutelage of Sri Gurwaj and Deji, which is the Ardgram. So that is held with the the Sordis at the moment. That is displayed once a year um, to the Sangat. It is now obviously due to the um, the paper itself and obviously the time that it's been since the comp- compilation of the, the Grant. Uh, it's now been laminated in form, but images have been taken. Research has been carried out by Dr. George Singh and a couple of others on the penmanship of it, uh, of the Grant, and all the details are available um, on the Grant itself. But yes, once a year, it is, you know, people can go and see it. Um, sorry, he just uh, clarified his name meant Steak. Okay, the, right. There's a Sedantic Steak by by Money Singh. It's an eight part Steak uh, that is available. Um, it is uh, by Money Singh was obviously um, one of the. Uh, I'm trying to think, was he Jatadar or he's either Jatadar or he was one of the grantees at the the bar side. It's it's a Steak. It's <laughs> It's the same as any other steak, to be quite honest. I, there's not any Atanikas or anything like that. Uh, by money, Gianni Money Singh's steaks that are worth reading, I'd say, if you want to pick up any of his steaks, are the ones on the Pai Gurdasi Amara and the Pai Gurdasi Kubitsway, rather than the Ard Grant one. Because what he does in those two steaks for those two grants is a question and answer and explains why every line of Pai Gurdashi's Barney is written because there's a question before it that you only learn through an aside. With the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Jastik, it's no different to any of the others. Um, the, the best Sri Guru Granth Sahib Jastik, like I said, is either the Amir Pandar or the Gurbani Ad Pandar. You can pick up the one by Gyani Harban Singh, there's Professor Sahib Singh, there's the Fareed Kortiko, which is really good, but if you want to learn everything in one go, then the, I'd, I'd avoid Gyani Mani Singh's of the Sedantic steak of the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, and I'll go straight for the uh, Arth, Gurbani Arth Pandar or the Amit Pandar. Thank you. And the next question from Harman is, how do we view and ascertain the authenticity and importance and accuracy of Fordham Grants, or Grants, sorry, um, uh, e.g. Prem Sumarag versus Pant Prakash versus Suraj Prakash, etc.? That's a difficult one to um, elaborate because unless you are a custodian of one of those grants and actually reads it, and a lot of the times they aren't dated, it's very difficult to do that. I, it's not something I've ever got involved in myself uh, for that personal reason. Um, you know, I've read McLeod's books or I've seen the books by Kamal Roop or uh, Gurinder Singh, you know, where they're talking about these grants and they're talking about how old they are. By uh, Sutton Arm Singh from Denmark, because an amazing bit of work on, on these sorts of things. But it's, you know, Louis Fennec is just, he's, he's done some work. Personally, it's not something that I, I look at or I could even advise you on. Um, I look at the, you know, I'm a thief in that way. I look at the research done by other people and that's where I come to my views, to be quite honest. So the next question is from someone who says, uh, I remember hearing in Sant Hardev Singh Lulo Wale Katha about a grant written by a Sikh close to Guru Gobind Singh Ji as a daily dietary account which is present at Hazur Sahib. If you know about this grant, which is uh, hidden from the public, could you yeah, please provide more information on it? Yeah, obviously the the gurus had exactly the same way as the emperors, where they had the the um, patavehis. So the patavehi grant um, and the gorge boti, which are available at Hajur side, have within them daily accounts of the um, the gurus days and things like that. You know, it's, those things are important because it's within one of those grants. That you get the part of a he who's who's put in the daily account of what takes place, who writes within the grant that Guru Gobind Singh Ji Siri Mukhavak says, 
ਆਗਿਆ ਪਈ ਕਾਲ ਕੀ ਤਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਲਾਇਓ ਪੰਤ ਸਭ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਕੋ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਆਇਆ ਗੁਰੂ ਮਾਨਿਓ ਗਾਂ ਦੈਟ ਦੈਨ ਬਿਕਮਸ ਅ ਬੇਸਿਸ ਆਫ ਦੀ ਅਰਦਾਸ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਟੂਡੇ ਬਟ ਦੈਟਸ ਓਨਲੀ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਗਿਆਨ ਗਿਆਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਰਾਈਟਸ ਇਟ ਵਿਦਿਨ ਹਿਸ ਪੰਥ ਕਾ ਸੋ ਥੋਸ ਆਰ ਅਵੇਲੇਬਲ ਆਈ ਡੋਨਟ ਥਿੰਕ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਅਵੇਲੇਬਲ ਟੂ ਦ ਪਬਲਿਕ ਬਟ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਸਮ ਪੀਪਲ ਥੇਰ ਯੂ ਮਾਈਟ ਗੈਟ ਐਕਸੈਸ ਟੂ ਥਮ ਬਟ ਆਈ 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 ਹੈਵ ਨਾਟ ਪਰਸਨ ਸੀਨ ਹਮ ਆਈ ਨੋ ਮਾਈ ਉਸਤਾਦਸ ਹੈਵ ਬੋਥ ਹੈਡ ਅ ਲੁੱਕ ਥਰੂ ਥਮ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਮੈਂਸ਼ਨ ਹਮ ਵਿਦ ਅਨ ਐਕਸ where do you see the future of uh digitizing or making historical sikh texts more accessible going like for example we know uh punjab uh, library is digitizing a lot of works and stuff but there's still a lot of uh grants that are deliberately kept secret or not allowed to be digitized uh, due to um they want the people to have like a certain maryada to it so where do you think uh, this is going um i think that's that's one of the the most backward things about Sikhs if you look at any other religious institution even if you state those religions that you know are completely <clears throat> not even religious or just made up but i'm going to take on take the mormons right the mormons have got a plethora of scripts scriptures and books and what not and they've only been around for a couple of hundred years and they've digitized everything um you know the the Jews are really clever they try to put everything up even to the point of uh you know the dead sea scrolls and everything like that is trying to put everything up and all that does is it creates excitement within the communities communities then want to research and that creates um more research papers more documents more books and more people looking at what you have we are so backwards that i don't understand why we need to keep everything hidden <clears throat> especially when the most the most sacred thing we have is gurbani and gurbani is the one thing we have given to the rest of the world to have a look at if gurnandev ji wasn't going to hide their their works and the jaisi mein aur kasam ki gurani kaise kar gaya hai log they said as soon as this comes i just say it, you know because god god gives it out so we give it out to the world i don't see why we hide everything the reason why gurmat vichar was started by by amandeep singh who lives in surrey he started this website to put it on my ustad told me that you know for the rest of my life my duty was to make sure that i can put things out there for free for the sangat that should be out for free we have tried for the last 21 years to put as much as we can out there because all it does is it helps people it brings an excitement it brings people to research people look somebody might be might not be interested in one field or looking to another and i think that what punjab digital library have done is really good but i think there needs to be more of that not just in digitizing um like i said not just in digitizing books not just in digitizing manuscripts i can't believe that there still isn't a system in india for each gurdwar each dera each sampradha to record their daily katha and their daily kirtan and have it uploaded in the cloud somewhere where the world can get hold of it um, you know but what's going to mean 20 years it's took us ages to get some of the grants digitized in an audio format but we still not touched on the good balasis we still not such on john sack you got loads there um, and i i just think it's really backward that we're not digitizing quicker we're not putting things out quicker i spend a lot of time with the buddhists with the deobandis the muslims uh you know with uh i've been talk some of the druze um you know with sufis they are digitizing everything they can um and i don't know why we are so behind and why we're trying to hide everything all we're going to do is all we're going to do really is lose a race to to other people so the next question is how much was lost during the burning of the sick reference library in the 1984 attack on darbar sahib and how much from that do we have left furthermore how much do we know um about what was stolen and how do we work on recovering what was lost no see this is a really interesting question but it's not really something i've looked at i know there was a lot of information that was a lot of grants that were lost uh from the uh, kavi sant oxygen library reference library we can have a look at the books by some shamshir singh ashok on the puratan bira which are available on the punjab digital library and have a look at 
some of the different types of texts that were there. You know, you look at it, you got uh, the Prem and Bodh Granth, you got the Paraspar Granth, you got all sorts of different Granths, let alone all the Gurkhas, all the all the uh, Gurbani steaks and Granths and things that were written there. You know, a lot of it went. Whether it went through looting, whether it went through, uh, you know, being set on fire, I don't know. I imagine that we're never going to actually be able to account for what has gone missing through either method. And uh, it's just a sad loss. It's just a sad loss. Uh, you know, the methods of trying to get it back, there are people like uh, Bayan Rag Singh and people like that who've been trying to do all sorts and trying to get text back and trying to get accounts of what was actually stolen and what was looted. You know, people like that are trying. So, uh, you know, I, I'm fair play to whoever's doing that. I, I, you know, if I can assist them in any way, I would do. I don't know how a lonely individual sat in the middle of the UK is going to help, but but whatever they're doing, you know, I, I, I full support them. The unfortunate thing is I can't really answer that. So the next question is, how big is your backlog and uh, is there any way to help uh, put it up faster? Um, well, the, the backlog is, I'll just have a look, right? I'm just having a look at one of my computers now. And if I have a look at how much audio I've got on there, let alone the videos, and let alone what I'm getting in every day, I'm, I must have loads. So the backlog at the moment in audio that needs cleaning is coming up to just about 500 gigabytes of audio. And that's still going up at the moment. So it's showing it just over, showing just over 16,000 files. It's still going up. The backlog is loads. I've got loads. And you know what? What I really appreciate is the good six around the world who are contacting me at the moment and going, I have this gutter. Will you be able to put it up? And unless there's a real issue, the majority of the time it's yes, I can. I can put it up somewhere. I've got videos on videos. I've got people. So here, yeah, I've got 32,270 audio files still to go through. That's 679 gigabytes that I'm still cleaning. Uh, I've got videos on videos. I've got audios everywhere. I've got books everywhere. I've got, there, there's a backlog of everything. The problem I have is I am extremely, extremely um, anal about the way I do things. Um, I make sure that it's cleaned in a certain manner. It's named in a certain manner. I can only upload things myself. You know, like I said, I, Good Luck Vichar is not mine. I predominantly work on it. And due to my hunger, everybody thinks it's me because I have spouted for years that I'm working on it. Uh, the website belongs to a guy called Bayam Radeep Singh, who never, never wants to get involved, just stay hidden behind at the back of everything. So obviously, because it's his account, I wouldn't give anybody else access to it because he trusts me to do that. We don't want to lose everything at the same time, so I'm trying to get things up. At the moment, I'm just going through you know, Gyanish Shir Singhji stuff. I've got the Tankana Makatha, I've got Jab Sahib Makatha, I've got Dinan Ke Pratwal Sahib Katha, I've got all sorts of Katha, I've got Sud Pra, you know, and that's just Gyanish Shir Singh, let alone anybody else. I try to get what I can done as much as I can. Uh, you know, I work a 12 hour day. I've got my kids. I'm trying to work the books at the same time to make sure there's two books out every month, every two months. I am sleeping as little as I can. On top of that, I've got the podcasts, got Gun with Richard. I'm trying to do as much as I can. Maharaj, if, if, uh, if God my allows, I'll, I'll get things done. If, if not, then uh, whoever inherits my computer will have a backlog of stuff to do. That's, that's all I can do. I'll, you know, with regards of getting help, it's the, the help that I'm getting is what I, what I need, and that is go to six around the world going, I have recorded this. Can I send this to you? Can you put it up? I would prefer that. That's what I want. I just want more coming in so we can get it out for the next generation or this generation, and they don't have to run around like we did trying to buy a cassette tape from here or an audio tape from here or give somebody £200 so they can let me have a recording. I don't want to do that. So the next question is just going back to the question about the Operation Blue Star um, 
question. So this one is, uh, what is the possible motivation for the Indian government to deliberately loot the Sikh reference library? Was it to weaken Sikhi? Was it to sell uh, off the artifacts to make a profit? Or was it just like an accidental thing? Uh, so what do you think was the possible motivation for them to do that? No, it's completely deliberate. There is no accidental, mo you know, it's not an accident. And it wasn't even about looting anything. You know, if they did loot something, they looted, you know, what would have been like the peacock gems and things like that and golden doors, whatever we had. We, you know, there were a load of riches. But it is essential. It has, I'm guessing all of you have watched or may have watched, you know, Marvel's Black Panther. And there's a point in that where the, the, the villain of the film becomes, if people ain't seen this, I'm sorry, I'm spoiling the film. But the, the villain of the film becomes a Black Panther and he gets told that these are all the, the essential herbs that are used to create the next Black Panther and he, he asks for all of them to be destroyed because he knows that after him there will be nothing, you know, that there will be no more Black Panthers, there will be nobody, no, no one to stand upon that pillar and challenge him in any way. When the, the siege of Carthage takes place, when... Um, the places in Africa are looted when uh, Mas uh, Mansa Musa's place in Africa is the biggest repository of books is destroyed, when you get um, ISIS and places like that destroying books all over the place in religious and architectural heritage, what you are trying to do is destroy the basis of somebody's foundation in the same way that the slaves who have come over to America know nothing about their original identity know nothing about their original roots, and they're all Christians sitting in America um, worshipping a white messiah but don't know anything about them, themselves in reality. That's what was taking place. It is the destruction of the Sikh roots, the Sikh core, the Sikh principles. Like we've mentioned here, what grants were in there? We don't know. What could we have learnt? We don't know. What was in there? Was there diaries of the Gurus? Were there personal writings of the Gurus? Since that time, the proliferation of the, uh, the uh, Sikh missionaries has been massive. And all they can do is create doubt and doubt and doubt because what we've lost there is the, uh, the ability to go back and research and go, no, we've got this set here. We've got this set here. And what it is, it's the destabilization of a, a uh, faith and a, a, his, um, a culture. You take away the, the history of a culture, you take away the roots of a culture, that culture will disappear. And that's what was taking place. The whole point of that was that the whole point of taking away the literature, the writings, is that you, we're, they're trying to destabilize it. And that's where you get the movement of the RSS and other agencies creating their works to dilute um, the thoughts of Sikhs where we go back and we can't challenge it because the original source material isn't there. Personally, that is my opinion. Just a quick add-on to that. Um, how much of the original source material do you think was lost? Do you think like what was lost, there was already copies of it scattered in different parts of like India, Pakistan, and the West? Or do you feel like there's certain unique things that are just gone forever that we never transcribed anywhere or referenced that are just completely gone? No, no I, I think that there are things that are gone, are absolutely gone. In the same way that when you know, you look at the Vidya Sagar of Siddha Guru Gold and things he goes missing, you know, in, in the uh, Sadhguru River, in the same way that certain parts of that go, go missing and you never retrieve that back. You can only uh, comprehend or try to comprehend what that must have been. In, in, uh, that's, that's all we can do. I don't think we're ever going to know the actual uh, amount of material that was lost and its relevance to both our psyche as a faith and research for the future. Uh, you know, we're never going to know. I just think it's a, a massive loss. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a targeted way of destabilizing a community. By the way, bye, sub. So we still have some questions coming in. If you want to take a break or just call it a day here, just let us know. No, I keep going. This is, this is like a, a normal interview for me at work. I'm okay, oh, okay. as long as you lot are okay. Yeah. You know, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. 
Yeah, the sangat here is fine. I'd rather you not be happy. The talk is being recorded, so any sangat that couldn't make it, don't worry, they're gonna have access to the talk. Uh, yeah, so I'm far... getting messages messages everywhere to say, please yeah. tell me it's being recorded. So yeah, don't of course, man. Yeah, uh, so right now we're about about at uh, three and a half hours. So yeah, if yeah. it's uh, fine with you, uh, we could just keep on going. And Sangaji, if you guys have any more questions for Pai Sab, just put them in the question box. And Pai Sab, if at any point you want to take a break or anything, just yeah. uh, you know, let me know, and we can even take like a 10, 15 minute break, and then just come back to it, you know, refresh up a bit. It's up to you, Pai no, Sab. No, that, that's fine. I, I really appreciate that. Like I said, I'm quite happy to keep going at the moment. I'm quite happy to keep going. I just hope your the community who are listening are not bored to death. And I hope I'm not wasting any of your times. That's that's my big, big thing. That's all. All right. So the next question is: Can you comment on the difference in Mangals in Puratan Sarups, such as the Pai Mani Singh Ji Ad um, Dasam Sarup, uh, so the one with uh, Jab Sahib? Um, what with regards to how they they write the Ekongar Sadgur Prasad, you know that sort of thing. Those Sri those. Those Mongols we're talking about. Uh, the I'm, I'm not sure. I'm just reading the question out as the user sent it. Because, you know, if we're looking at the Mongols, within the City of Grand Sahib, there's four different Mongols. I can explain those. But they go directly within the Vedanta uh, again. Uh, but those Mongols are covered by the Gurus again. They're, basically, there are certain tenets you have to have in order to create a Granth. You know, you look at it, the, the first... Uh, letter that you have should be the last letter. The first number that you have should be the last number. Those are all in Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. The mangas that you have, the four different types of mangas, Ikonkar, Satnam, Gur Prasad, Ikonkar, uh, Satnam, Kartapur, Gur Prasad, Ikonkar. Uh, uh, sorry, you've got the Maha Mangal, uh, Mahamantra Mangal, which goes all the way to Gur Prasad. Um, you've got four, four mangas all together, and they feature within um, Sri Guru Arjun Dev Ji's Bani when they go Dundalp, Bandha Nanakumar, Sarum Krasam, Dolan Tera Kuprabhu, Narak Dekarham. You got Atam, Chintak Mangal, Ashirwad Mangal, Namaskar Mangal, and Vastur Nirdesh Mangal. So you have four different types of Mangals that you have within Gurbani. Within Dasam, I will be very honest with you, I have not researched the Mangals within Dasam at all. Um, I know there's different mangas that appear, uh, you know, you get the Bakari Daskat as well, you get um, things like that. I haven't researched, so I can't tell you much about it. If it's a mangas within Siri Guru Granth Sahib, you can go through that. Because, it, again, it's not me researching it, it's all in the uh, Gurbani Arshpadar with, with regards to the mangas and where they feature. So the next question is, do you feel most grunts are hidden due to the fear of people uh, wanting to challenge them or doubt them or attempt uh, attempt to alter them? Um, no, I'm not sure. I, I think some, some grunts are hidden for that reason. But I always think to myself that if you were to take that grant to them, you were to digitize that grant and you were to put it out on the internet, then there would be no chance of changing that in any way. And you can show the timestamps and the dates that all the images are taken and everything is done. Um, I don't know. I think there's, you know, there's also an air of arrogancy with, with some people where the case of, I've got these grants and I won't share them. I've seen it on the internet where you get people with, who've got access to lots and lots of grants but will not share them. It's only theirs. Um, there, there's going to be an element of all, all sorts. There's going to be an element of, some people don't want their grants to be given access to other individuals only because they may have spent a lot of money on them or it's personal to them. Um, there is going to be those that do not want the, what they have being put out there and being corrupted. And then there's going to be those who've got a massive air of arrogance and do not want to share what is theirs. So, you know, that's how I see it. Um, th there's, a, there's a number of reasons why, why we don't see certain things come out. So uh, the user who submitted the question about the Mongols would like to just uh, clarify their stance. Uh, go ahead, Singh. Yep. Irvinjit Singh, uh, you can unmute your mic and clarify. 
Okay, just just a moment, please. Okay, try now. Okay, uh, looks like he's having some technical difficulties. So he edited his uh, comment. So it says, yeah. the one he's talking about, uh, by the way, all the questions are located in the question box by sub. So, yeah, I can't see that. That's why I'm stuck. I'm still, oh, okay. I'm a 40 year old old man. I'm still trying to figure out Discord. Here, I'll, uh, good, I'll, I'll tag you where it says, <laughs> so you know where it says general voice right above there, it says question box. So yes. the, the questions with the green check marks are the ones that have already been answered. So okay. near the bottom where it says Irvinjith, it says the thing. Can you comment on the difference in Mongols in the Puratan Sroop, such as by Mani Sinji's Adasam Sroop, the Jab side Mongol, is very different from Samurai's? No, I, no, I can't. Um, and I'll, the reason why I can't answer that is, like I said, it is really, um, it's really interesting to look at by Mani Sinji's Karabi. Because even his mongols within the Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji uh, portion, you know, of Gurbani, are very different to what we see in the standardized mongols of the Siri Guru Granth Sahib. So where you see uh, Sri Raghav Mahalapella, Motita Mandar Usaya Rakhnita Hoja, within by many things you it says, um, you know, it, um, but it starts off with obviously because it's Sri Raghav starts off with the Maha Mongol, then it goes into Sri Raghav Mahalapella, then it says uh, Sri Mukhabak Bhag Sahib but you don't see that, so I can't. I can't. Um, I think the the issue you have with the 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 mongols within the Dasam Granth is that all of the um, all of the mongols and the standardization took place when they had the um, the event at Butterfly Side to standardize the, the Granth itself. So I don't know which Granth they looked at uh, in order to standardize the Dasam, uh, and that's what they've done. They've, Standardize it there. I forgot the name of the uh, the actual event itself, but when they standardized it, it's obviously the the Gurumukhi were there that looked at the standardization of all the grants that were around them, or they've picked a preferential grant that they're happy with and gone, this is the one that we want to follow because we see there's no standardization with the Sri Dasam grant where you get bindings like Ugur Danti, <clears throat> you know, uh, Malad Pasay Dasam, you know. You know uh, uh these these uh Go Govind Gita, these grants that appear within some standardizations of the see that some grants don't appear there. So it would be the same I'm assuming with the Mongols as well. So the next question is what do you think of the idea of revamping the Gurmat Vichar website uh to ensure that it's archived in case it's hacked or taken down? Also, what do you think of setting up a dedicated team of trusted sevadars who are knowledgeable in tech and who can help you get this content out faster? See, I would, I would love that. But um, like I said, as much as I, I, I go on in, in my own hangar, going, you know, I, I've got stuff to do with Gurdwath Vichar, it, the website does not belong to me. Um, the website belongs to a saint called Amradeep Singh. I'm happy for anybody to contact him um, and make those approaches. I don't know what's in the background. I only know through an FTP what I upload and where it uploads. I can't tell you with regards to uh, anything other than that. I, I post on there what I put up. I put all the files up. I put it in an order. I rename them. But with regards to servers, security, anything like that, I don't know. Oh, you know, one thing I've wanted to do for years, but I don't have the ability to do it, is to make an app because I know how difficult it is for individuals to download the Katha or list of the Katha on an iPhone or other phones like that. So for me, it's that. For me, it's, uh, you know, I wish there was an app. So if there are those individuals who are willing to help out, I, I, I would plead with you, please contact Bayam and Deep Singh. Please uh, let him know what you're available to do. And if he's willing to take you up on that CRI, that would be absolutely phenomenal. So the next question is, do Nirmale have a tradition of Amrit similar to the Udasis with their Guru Shishya line? Or uh, would they take Khande Deepal because uh, they aren't generally Shasartari? <clears throat> Nirmale have two traditions. You will find those that are Shasartari, uh, which 
I can say it's very like, like I said, all your Texalis and Nirmali, as far as the, the grants are concerned. And some of the uh, Texalis are quite happy to say that. So San Janel, and people like that, they were all Texalis. And Shastari, they all sort of kind of pile their homework. But they do. There are, there is a Nirmala tradition of good shish and lying where they will, uh, prior to taking their umrah, uh, they will go through this process where they have a good shish lineage as well. And then they will take the umrah as well. But there, you know, don't get me wrong, there are some of the Nirmala schools of thought that do not take Khandi Pahalda umrah once they have taken Charan Pahalda umrah. They'll go, actually, I've taken this umrah, why do I need another one? So yes, there is. There's a tradition of both. Um, to say that they gen- they aren't generally Shastatari, you know, the problem is that when people think about Nirmala, they just go, oh, they're all those people in the orange clothes, aren't they? But they're not. Antisha Singh Jirada Saiwale, you know, you look at people like them or uh, anybody who's come off that line, they all cast- carry their Shastas, they're all trained in their Vidya. Um, you look at Sant Jigji Singh Jihar Kowalwale, Jianawale, you look at all those all those sons who carry all their shasta, they all carry shasta. They're all Amartari. They all wear the Kurpana, they all have the Panchakana. There there's no difference, but it's just um due to the term Nirmala, people think they're just those people without the Shastas. But yes, j- just come back to it. There's two lines. Two lines of thought. Um the majority of Nirmala follow the Kandipa Haldama. Where does Mool Mantar end, and why is there a debate around the, the ending of it? Um, right, there's, there is a debate around it. Mool Mantar is the root, there's only one. So I'll, I'll go by two, two schools of thought. So those people who state that the Mool Mantra ends at uh, Gurprasad state that for one reason only. And you get those individuals that go, the Moor Mantra appears 32 times within the Siddhu Guru Granth Sahib um, because that's where it ends. The, this, is, this is actually a fallout. You have a fallout within the Nirmala tradition on here. So where you get the Akhand Kirtani Jatha going, actually it stops at Gur Prasad. They're actually following a Nirmala tradition here. And the Nirmala tradition is that the Gayatri mantra, which is Om Pur, Puar, Swat, Savita, you know, that mantra which goes on, that mantra has the same number of letters as the, the, the Maha mantra, which we call the Maha mantra, which stops at Guru Prasad. So those people, you know, within the Akhand Kirtan Jatha and people like that who are following it are actually following it because the Nirmalas of old have written that actually we believe the Moon mantra ends here. So this is, this is where, you know, as somebody who follows the Nirmala school of thought, I know where you can see where things are wrong and things are written wrong and they've influenced service. So the number of letters up from Ikhwankar up until Guru Prasad corresponds with the number of letters that are found within the Gayatri Mantra. And that's why they do it. You will find that explanation given within the Katha of uh, the Siri Mahant, you know, um, uh, Mahant Dev Singh. You'll find it within some of the other Nirmalas. Uh, Sanjeev Ji Singh Ji Harkawalwale, they follow it up until that point as well. They said that more Mantra stops there. So then you get the the other story within the Janam Sakis where Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Ji uh, stood uh, such kind in the presence of a Kalpurk. A Kalpurk gives the Maha Mantra up until Gaur Prasad. Then Guru Nanak Dev Ji says, Jap Ad Sach Jugad Sach a Happy Sach Nanako Hasipi Sach. Within the Janam Saki it says, Right, the the mantra was going to be up until Gaur Prasad. They say, Asi Nirgun Parameshwara, Tusi Sargun Parameshwara. Until your name comes into that mantra, that mantra is not Shud. It's not complete. So that's where you get the difference with the other schools of thoughts, because from the Janam Saki it states, up until Guru Nanak Dev Ji's name is mentioned in that body and finished, that mantra is incomplete. So you get the two, two schools of thought. The other school of thought you get is Gyani San Singh Ji Muskeen, because he follows Gyani Balawant Singh Ji. He states that the Moon Mantra is ending up to Gur Prasad, and then after that you have a slok. Ad Sach Jagad Sach Hep Sach Nanak Sach, because he says within the 16th body of, uh, 16th uh, Astapadi of Sukhumani Sahib, you find that there, Ad Sach Jagad Sach Hep Sach Nanak Sach, you find that there. So he says that that slok is mentioned there. 
the Texas and the rest of the Nirmala will say, actually, the moon month uh, goes up until Nana Kosti such. Then the Hung say this as well. The Nam Thari say this. The, all, all the you know all the other sampradaya say this, and they say simple thing. You at the end of that you get a a numeral, and then you get the start of the job. You say where the numeral starts with such and such. And at the end of that party, there's a numeral as well. And at the end of Jabji time, you have a look, and the gurus have been amazing when it comes to this. Most people leave this out, but they have numbered every Shabbat that appears. At the end of Jabji time, you see a 38 and a 1 uh, to say that there's only one Salok, and there's only um, there's 38 body. If there were two Saloks, it would have said 38 2. So that's why that Salok isn't considered a separate Salok. It's considered part of the mantra. Uh, and then, you, you know, so that, that's where that comes in. And so it actually, in essence, supposedly the Moor Mantra only appears once within Siddhi Guru Granth Sahaja, and it should do. If it's the root, if it's the Moor, it should only appear once. It shouldn't have to appear 33 times. So then you have the Maha Mantra, which is from Ikwankar to God Prasad appearing 32 occasions after that. So those are the two schools of thought. I will let anybody pick their own view where they, where they sit. So the next question is, uh, do you have any idea of a Pai Gurdas Ji Varastik written by Sant Bishan Singh Ji Murare Wale? Uh, no, unfortunately not. I've never, I've never even heard of it, to be quite honest. I wish I wish I did. I wish I'd seen it. It would be something I'd love to translate and look through and decipher, but no, I've, I've never, never seen it, never heard of it. Sorry. And the next question is, are there any digitizations of Pai Bano Bir uh, Besarups? Uh, do you think there is a long-term solution to all of the Panth, uh, sorry, uh, all of the Pat Bed that exist within Gurbani in general? Um, the digitization of the Pai Bano Bir, um, yes, there are a number of them um, on uh, Punjab Digital Library, let alone uh, other places. I have seen them. I have, I know that because I have two or three pictures of Mirabai Shabad that is within Ram, uh, Raga Ram Kli found within those grants. Um, so yes, they do exist. The Pai Banawali beers exist. The reason why you'll find more Pai Banawali beers than any other Bihu is because you got to remember when Siddhi Guru Arjun Dev Ji had the Ard Grant compiled, Pai Banuji obviously had it bound and uh, created a copy of it. The Ard Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib Ji remained Prakash within uh, Siddhi Guru um, Siddhi Harbanda Sahib, while everybody, all the Sikh community, was using Pai Banuji B to copy the text of the Granth again and again. So that's why we see so many copies of that, and that's why even Gyan Gyan Singh Ji, when he's writes. The names of the different bhagats within uh, his text. He states that Mirabai is one of the shabads, uh, one of the bhagats of the Guru Granth Sahib. When obviously within the standardized Dandal Sahib Bij, he isn't. So we we get that there with. So you will find digitizations of of the Granth all over the the internet. You'll find lots of. Them. Um, do you think that there's a long term solution to the part beard that exists? I I, I don't. The long-term solution is that those people who go for Santa will know. I'm assuming that this is this is the answer, or this is a question being asked. That the differences in the pronunciations with regards to Gurbani. And the only way to sort that out is a a standardisation Santa course. And to be honest, the, the ones that are run by the Tuxars and Nirmale, the Nihang Singhs, they all seem to be very, very similar, very similar. So there aren't many, many differences. But I think that's what you mean. And I, you know, I think it's essential for anybody who's learning their Barney to, you know, we've got the, the digitizations of Santhias all over the internet that people start listening to those and learning from those. Uh, and then that gets rid of all the differences that we have. If I haven't clarified that and I've got that wrong, please let me know if I've I've mistaken that question for something. Like it's different to me. 
or you can also like you could put up um uh, the question was referring to um spelling mistakes so, so like lagamatra de which jira peda on the which so lagamatra we looking at the different the difference in spellings as in like um between different even how to look at groups like baba deep singh ji group and baba deep singh ji group yeah no no that that makes more sense um that's where obviously we have the the standard the right the, the committee I was thinking about earlier the sorda committee so what you need is the the um the sorda committee and and things like that a committee to go through because the the mantra especially with lagu mantra and things like that it's very simple to figure out which one's right which one's wrong because each shand has a certain amount of letters a certain amount of letters it can have or can't have um you know cuz you see how dore are made up of savanya are made up and things like that so if there's any extra and it doesn't make it we we know that that's that's incorrect so you need a committee going through it. this is where as much as i ridicule uh things like vyakaran and things like vyakaran's needed here and but you need those people who are, who know and have knowledge in loop deep bingo so they can understand what the different shans are what the different meters are what the different numbers of letters are supposed to be within um all of those dore slogs fun here um uh, sorotas and things like that if they know the correct letters then it can easily be amended and you can correct it and go it is this and not this because of this reason and apply some logic behind it Yeah, uh, Sangha ji, we are now in the open um, discussion segment of the event where the Sangha can unmute their mics and speak directly with our guest speaker. Uh, so if anyone has any questions or clarifications or would like to give their thoughts on the event or speak with Bhai Saab directly to offer any aid or anything or answer any questions, um, feel free to do so now. You guys should be able to unmute your mics. It sounds promising. Nobody there. It sounds good. All right. So I have a question. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So recently, I was um, recommended by a friend to read a uh, Saruktavali, Chandke Rajniti, yep. and a bunch of other uh, texts that you have translated. Um, yep. So the thing is, I was looking through the website, and there's so many cool English translations that I want. Uh, yeah. and uh, I was wondering if like what is the most efficient way to get them like do like um, right right yeah. if people want if if you want a single text the easiest way is just to order the one text if you want a, lo a bulk load of text contact me I will try to get them done cheaper uh, the only reason I can't do a single text cheaper is because it depends where you live I'm assuming you live in the states or Canada. Yeah, I'm in Canada. Um, yeah, so if you're in Canada, for I can I can get you a book which is thirty three percent cheaper, uh, but the shipping cost for me for one book is going to cost a lot more. If it's a bulk text, if it's a bulk that you want, and you go, uh, you know, I had somebody here, at one of the local gurdwaras, and said, "There's forty six books. I want a copy of each one for our library." I said, "Okay." If you look at each book, and it's like fifteen fifteen pound each, which is nearly thirty dollars in Canadian dollars. That's a lot of money. You know, you're looking at nearly six hundred pounds, nearly twelve hundred dollars. We were able to, because it's a bulk uh, deal. I was able to get it at an author's price. We were able to get that for you know j just yeah, it was under four hundred four hundred pounds. So it was a saving of about thirty thirty eight thirty nine percent, and that is including the eighty pound package uh, posting packaging that was in there. So if you want numerous books, please contact me. Please Instagram me. And we'll find a way to get them cheaper. And uh, the last thing that I want with any of these books is people spending money that they unnecessarily need to spend because it doesn't go to me; it goes to the publishers. Um, so yeah, please contact me, and I, I can make that happen. And if anyone has any trouble unmuting, um, try to just reconnect to the call. So does, can someone from the Sangha please speak to make sure it's uh, working? It should be working now. Yeah, it's working now. Uh, oh, uh, speaking of the books, 
Uh, if we want to like order a, a bulk, is the best way to look at them on Lulu, or like is there a different website with like a list or something of all of them? There's obviously there's there's a list of them on Lulu. I have got two, one, two, three that aren't on Lulu yet. I've got uh, Jabji Sai Part Eight, Ragamala uh, Katha by Santigani Mohan Singh Ji, and the first volume of the Shabads by Sri Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. So far. By the end of next week, I should have the Savanya Katha by Gyani Shir Singhji as well. So there are extra books. But if you have a look through Lulu, see what you want. Instagram me. You know, uh, that's, Instagram's the best way. It's the one thing I pick up because I have to look at my kids' TikTok videos and rubbish as well. So please, <laughs> you know, please contact me on there and I'll be able to find a cheaper way of getting new books. I say, to that, I say that to the people in the UK because a lot of people contact me by email. Rather than paying £15, £20 pounds for a book, you know, I'm able to get them for about £10, pound, £12 pound normally. It's still some saving, and that's with, with postage. Do you have, like, an official distributor here in Canada that, or, like, a store where you could just locally go buy your English translations from? No. Um, this is a, no. Uh, I approached many publishers at the start. And then uh, I didn't get any reply. A card publishers by her, her Jinder Singh in, in the UK has offered many times, and it'd be amazing. I don't want to put any anything on anybody. Um, but the good thing about Lulu is that if I order them for you, I can get them printed at a local distributor in Canada, and that's where I'm trying to save you the money. Or otherwise, um, if you order them yourself, they will be printed here in the UK. And that's where the cost comes in extra as well on top. So there are printers in Canada that I can contact, uh, which will print the books and then distribute them out to yourselves. And it will be a lot cheaper for you. So, Paisab, uh, I wanted to get the um, English translations for the recommended uh, Japji Saib sticks that you were recommending. Uh, but you were saying they're, they're in like eight different volumes or something. So yeah. how exactly does that work? Uh, are you going to make like a, like one proper one that's like everything combined when you're done all of the body or? Uh, for um, you just I, w- I wish I could. It would, I wish I could. Um, it would just be too big. I look at it and, you know, my moon monthly is uh, over 180 pages long. Jabji Side Part 2 uh, is Bodhya 1 to 3, and that is 177 pages. 190 pages for Bodhya 4 to 7. Okay, body, um, Bodhya 8 to 11 is only 100 pages, so that's then 100 pages for Volume 5. And then 6 and 7 go back to 200 pages, 200 pages. So if, we, if I continue at that length, you're going to end up with an A5 book of about 1,600 pages to nearly... Well, between... 1,400 and 1,600 pages, which isn't doable for anybody. Nobody picks up a book that big and actually reads it. So it's the only way I could create this book and keep people uh, actually reading it, uh, though it's in small portions. Uh, I'm guessing at some point I will make a, a big A4 volume, but whether anybody buys that at the end, that will be, be in. Oh, we'll see. We'll see if that happens. So, the, so a user submitted a question. So they said, would it be possible to open a store or partner with a Gurdwara that would keep a stock of these books on hand and ready where people can reach out uh, to them and, and make it easier? Um, it's, it's a good idea. The problem I have with a Gurdwara doing that is that a Gurdwara will say, uh, as they have done, they'll say, we want this many books. And they will take that many books and say, we will then pay you when we have sold them all. And usually you never get anything back out of it. And you're trying to pay back the publishers the money that you've used. So that's the problem I have usually. I would be happy if any Gurdara would be willing to go, this is how many books we want and we'll pay for them now. But it's a risk that they take. And that's why... Even with these books, I've made them as self-published books, so they only print on demand. And that's why the additional cost is there. If I, if I had gone through to buy a ginseng card publishers and he said, we'll do 300 copies of this book, it would be a lot cheaper for everybody. Um, and that, that's what's keeping the cost up, unfortunately. But I, I wouldn't mind you know, doing that with some good lives. But at the moment, it's, it's difficult enough to get the Sikh community to buy these books. There are some titles that I've had 
two sales in six years. You know, the these books have only started going very recently, but I've been doing this for five years. Five years, and there are months that you get one sale. Most most months, it's one or two sales. So, you know, is anybody really going to pick them up at a good dollar? I, I don't think so. It would be different if um, I had some clout behind me or something like that, but I'm not one of those individuals. I'm just normal normal individual like yourselves just trying to get on with life day to day. So another question is, could you publish a version of your Tika translation that includes the original Gurmukhi Tika in line? <laughs> uh, yeah, considering the amount of pages I have already um, taken up, I, I could. Um, it would just take me forever to write everything up. I could, I could do it. It can be done. It's just that then you're going to get, somebody will end up with a Mool Mantra book which will be nearly six, seven hundred pages long. That's just the more month. It will be massive. It's the Gurmukhi that takes up the more time. The, because I write the Gurmukhi Paramahans in all the time anyway, and I always translate them. But I don't put all of them in, because especially within the Sampradayak Stik, you can find there's 20 Paramahans for one line of Gurbani, and I'll, I'll pick three or four, which are essential. If I was to put the actual text of all the grants that I use, it will be more of a Punjabi text than it will be um, an English translation, which the whole point of doing this is to to get those seekers who are above a an average level and want to go to the next level to read this. You know, there's enough Jabji side basic translations out there. I want to put one out there that you know, for the English speaking for the English speaking community. So basically I want it to be out there for the non Punjabis as well. The Buddhists have tried to buy the rights for the first book off me already because um, they want it. I don't know why, but they want it. So those are the sorts of people I want to look towards where people from other communities are researching Gurbani rather than uh, people having to just read the Bani itself and that putting off English readers. Okay, so uh, Paisab, so on here, we were actually thinking of starting a book club back in January, but it didn't really work out because we got really busy and other events and stuff uh, took some toll on us. But we were wondering, um, would it be possible uh, for us on here, Discord, uh, to like, because, for example, we have like segments where we have like a lot of the Sangat here from Brampton, a lot from Surrey as well, uh, yeah. a lot from California. So would it be possible for us on our end to get a list of the books the Sangat wants and then we organize them based off location and then that way uh, the Sangat can pull their Maya together and then we can, uh, for example, oh. send send it to you and then you can send one big shipment to California and then when it gets to California, the local California Sangat can distribute amongst themselves, one to Surrey uh, and then they can distribute there and then one to you know the East That's Coast and they can do it there. What do you think of that? Easily, idea? easily. That is absolutely brilliant and it will save a lot of money for everybody. All right. People will get the books that are, are required without there being the massive additional costs that are out there. So, yeah, we can do that. That's, that's easy. That's easy to do. America and Canada, anywhere in America and Canada is easy. Okay. Uh, the problems I have is when I'm, you know, I've got, I've got sponsors in, in Delhi and in India. You can imagine sending a parcel to Delhi and in India is bad enough. And then trying to send them to Malaysia uh, and places like that is, that's a difficulty. So, yeah, so America, Canada is easy. Would it be easier? Um, because we have like I'm getting a lot of messages right now from Sangat saying, "Hey, I want to buy a book. I want to buy a book." So instead of them contacting you individually, do you think right now for the Sangat we should just say, "Okay, we assigned one Sevadar for uh, like the Surrey area, one for the Brampton area, one for California, and then the and then that way there's three points of contact for you rather than you having to go on Instagram look at each DM individually." Do you think that works better? It's it's. Uh... To be honest, I don't mind if individuals contact me, but it's going to contact. It's going to cost them more. Mm -hmm. So the way you're saying about pooling names and numbers together, that will work out cheaper for the sangat. That that's that's my thing. I'm looking at. If I can make it as cheap as I can for the sangat, and they can get the books that they require, I would rather. That. This isn't about me making a load of money, because jema the kato pasilani. I feel you know, I'm going to come back and have to give that back in some form, I don't know, this life or the next life, or 
you know, I've, I've gone through the Saki and Ladaiku where you get the individual who turns up as the uh, the worms in a snake. I don't want to be doing that. So I'm not here to take money off the Sangha. If I can get you lot the books that you lot want for the best possible price, and if you lot can pull together, that's easier. If people want to do it individually, please contact me and I'll find the best way for you as well. So either way, it's fine. Um, so, did you say that you have... Go ahead, go ahead. Bye, Sabji. Did you say you have a book of Japji Saib, or sorry, not Japji Saib, Jab Saib Gata, um, afterward as well? That's not on yes. Lulu yet? No, no, I've got it. The Jab Saib Gata's up of San Janel Singh. That's, that's done to the word. To the, every word is translated in English. All the Purmans are in there. So Jab Saib Gata by San Janel Singh is complete. That's on there. I've got, I've got hundreds of books I want to do. I've got 60 projects written on the wall. I've got all sorts. I've got loads I want to do. And then I've been given the duty by Sanjig Ji Singhji to translate their books. Some Thari Singhji have given me all their books to translate. And then, uh, you know, I've been given the Ishwar Upanist to translate by Sandash and Singhji, you know, and, and other people. So I've got loads. I've got absolutely loads. Um, I had a question. Um, are there any opposing views uh, to the view that the name of the Barney of Dakhani Onkar is actually uh, Sri Onkar Sahib and Dakhani is a part of Rag uh, Ramkali. Uh, that is a view and you will find in some of the Gutkas and within some of the old steaks written by the Nirmali, the Barney is just called Onkar. That is it. Sorry, Paji, does that answer, answer the question or... Yeah, yeah, it does. I was, yeah. I was just thinking, like, is there any uh, opposing views to that, that it's not, that it's actually the Kriyong God and the Kriyong is not a part of the Rag? Yeah, uh, basically, that, that's what they're pointing out. And some people just call the Barney Ong God. You will hear that within some of the Gathas um, by like Lulu Alessand and people like that. They'll call it Ong God. The Barney Ong God, the Barney. They'll call it that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I have a question, Paisab. So uh, basically, so every few months we have like a youth camp. For example, we had like the summer youth camp. We had the winter one. So uh, from April 2nd to 5th, we're having our spring youth camp. Uh, and for that, we get like a lot of different speakers. A lot of Sangat from around the world is coming now because of COVID. So like online camps are the places to go. So we're wondering if it's possible uh, because a lot of the people are messaging me right now saying, yo, um, Baisab is so amazing. We want to hear more. Would it be possible for you to make it out as a speaker for our uh, spring Sikh youth camp? Uh, I'll be honest with you. Sing. I would absolutely love that, but my job will not allow me to do that. Um, I, I work in the police. I'm, a, I'm an active police officer. Uh, my job is to deal with um, undercover work and I deal with informants, so I won't be able to leave where I am at all. I apologize for that. I, if I get a day away, it's two oh, days it's, leave. It's that, is a, that is the most I can have. It's, it's oh, like, it's you online, know, is you it? You know how we're talking okay. right now? It's literally yes, this, except with like 120, 130 people listening at the same time. And that way you just have to come for uh, one or two hours or however long you want for like one day, for like one segment. Like for example. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. That's, so, that's fine by me. I, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I misjudged that completely. I thought... Oh, oh yeah, it's not a physical leave. camp. Normally, yeah, COVID normally, doesn't allow that. I was, I, was, I was like, you know, if it's if it's leave, I, I can't come at the moment because I'm stuck. But yeah, you know, if if that's the case, you know, I, I'll be happy to do that. Um, as long as the, the Sangat have been happy with this, and and uh, you tell me what topics you want, and it's guided sure. towards the right age range. Yeah. You know, I I know I go on a bit. Well, I'll go on more. Oh no, the bit. Sangat loves it, hours. man. So many people are messaging me right now saying, "Yo, uh, we love Paisab." How much longer can you keep them here for? It's amazing. Can you ask this question for us? That question. So that's everyone good. absolutely loves the spice up. Yeah. That's that's good. I've tricked you all to making you think I'm I'm an original person, but I'm really government of India. And I've tricked you all. <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> yeah. So how we'll do it is um. Y- Guggen saying you can just get in contact with Baisab in terms of the logistics for the camp. Does that work, uh, Baisab? Uh, anything works. You, you know, it's great to make me understand how to use this. So. Whatever you lot need to do, I'm, you know, I'm happy to do whatever as long as you, you lot as a community are happy with me speaking and just giving me the terms of what you want and the age range. Um, 
and I'm more than happy. Yeah, the I'm more age than happy range is about uh, 16 to about 27, 28. So it's a pretty, Good. it's like basically youth. That's, that's, that's what I like. You know, I just thought if it's young kids, that's, you know, you just got to dumb things down. So yeah, I, I'm more than happy with that. That's fine, man. So uh, the next question was, how do you deal with people attempting to distort the meaning in some of your translations in a way that's against Gurbani? Well, the, the good thing about the um, distortion of meanings is you, you do get a lot of people trying to distort meanings. It's, it's, it's easily done because what people uh, try to use is the, the line of Barney going, ah, bah, 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 bah. and you're just like, you know, you use your logic to try to do that. That's fine, but if it goes against Gurbani and the essential message of Gurbani, we can pr- disprove that very easily. Thankfully, there are tikas going back, however many, there's 700 tikas on the Sri Jabji side by different people. There's tikas everywhere on all sorts of things. So if somebody tries to mistranslate something, thankfully the knowledgeable Vidvans and the, uh, the Mahapur Kamagyanis from before have already done their tikas. So we can just challenge them based on that. And when you've got somebody like Santagyani Gurbachan Singhji's Gatha, who's gone through every type of definition possible, whether it's Khandak or under, uh, you know, or Dandak, or they've gone through Anve, or they've gone through Antriv, or, you know, they've gone through all the different types of Artsi Khan everything, and gone through every Purman and mentioned every sort of text. You can't compete with that. These people who are sat there today as their modern day missionaries who are saying, you know, it's a Brahman Vard, this is this, this is that. And that's not Brahman Vard. That's the same as we get when we're in our job and you get somebody who is just full of ignorance, cannot understand the message being conveyed and just doesn't want to hear it. So it's very easy to challenge that. And we can do that through through whatever means. So you can ask a question, please. Of course you can. Come very deep, man. We love you. Yeah, we're, we're, I love you, man. We're in base. Going on, man. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, well, this is quite a, quite a session. See, I, I want to ask you a question. Yeah, it's, uh, I could ask you personally, but maybe someone else can take something from it as well. So I thought I'll ask it in this uh, in this space, which is very deep. So um, you talked about Sant Hari Singh Ji and Dave Wale and uh, Sant uh, Jagjit Singh Harikawal Wale, yeah. Yeah. And you, how do you refer to them as your stars? I, I refer to them as my stars, but my stars are in, in the same way as you, you'd resp- respond to any group. I, you know, I, I, I call them as they are. The Mahapur Vidwans, I call them, you know, whatever you want to call them. You know. Hanji. But, but them always... specifically, in it, like Sant Hari Singh Ji, Randhavi Wale, Sant Jukdi Singh, Harkowal Wale, like you built um, closer relationships with them. You, you entrusted them with your like you you surrendered to them no well basically when there was nobody else you know when i look at it and think when i had nobody else when there was nobody else when i've gone through trouble times and and things like that they've been able to just sit and talk to me i've been able to talk to them like i'd want to talk to anybody if i found the samaritans you know basically like that uh you know not only have they been there as a vidya star and then given me vidya but they've cared for me as a, just a normal individual, like I'm their child. You know, they help me raise my, you know, my kids and things like that. The pair of them. And the pair of them phone me. The pair of them, you know, whenever I need advice on a grant, they'll do that. You know, with Sanjay Ji Singh Ji especially, they just ask, well, what grant do you need recording now? And you just go, this one. And they'll start the katha on it. You know, Santhari Singh Ji, I said to him years ago, can you, we need a tikka on the Sri Guru Granth Sahib. We need a tikka on these Vedanta Granths. They've done it. They're now doing the Vichar Saga. There, it's 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 so interpersonal. It's no different to how I talk to my dad. That's how I see it. The parents. So did they? Did they? Th- thank you, Singh. Did they present them? Uh, I know it's it's a ma. Jo 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 kuch honda maradi kar deya. But did they? I'm just interested. Like, did they present themselves to you in your life, and and you knew from inside, or did you approach them? No, no, you, you, end of the day, uh, whatever it is, it's just a, uh, with Sanjig Ji, Singh Ji, Harkwal, Wale, we, I, I met them when I was 12, 13. You, everybody knows what their personalities are very, very strict and, and the way they are. But what I saw was 
I used to go to their lectures and I was recording them at the time and they approached me, spoke to me. And then before you know it, they are the most kind-hearted individual I've ever met in my life where people would think they are really difficult to approach. You know, I've just found that they are completely the opposite. So um, from then on, you know, they always phone, they've always phoned my parents, they look after everything that goes on and, and the relationship just changed. And then I realized, you know, they, they just, it was, I'm not going to say it's them or, or somebody else, but when I went through, well, you know, my personal problems here in the UK, when I went through my personal problems, they said to me, they said, look, your kids are here, your kids are old enough. Um, so why don't you take the Mahdi here and we will get somebody to leave their Gaddi here. They're about to go, so you take their Mahdi and become a Mahdi here. You know, those sorts of things. I, I never expected those sorts of opportunities or, or the video from them. Um, but what I heard from them was, so, you know, they mentioned a number of grants that I'd never heard in my life. And that was it. I was, I was sort of attached and I was intrigued. With Sant Hari Singhji, I met them in 1998. Never knew them, didn't know anything about them. Went to one of their kathas, not because they were there. I was actually there to see another gyani at the time. And um, they broke down for the first time the details of all the chakras, the kundalini, uh, everything in the dasam doa in a katha. And that was it. Uh, and from then on, I approached them. And uh, every year I take my leave and spend my time with them when they come. So Maharaj right. Kirpa, wherever Jitis and Yoga and there, Sanj Yoga and Nali, Karma and Sarah. Hanji. Oh, thank you, Kapu. So the next question we have is, uh, what is the history of Kirpan Amrit? <laughs> um, that's that's one to ask the the Nahans, really, because as far as I'm concerned, there isn't. A separate one. However, there is a kurbanam that they either use for young children or females within the bunt. Um, but I don't know much about it. To be quite honest, um, I think it's quite detrimental to have a, a second um, if or, or a, a number that's designed to marginalise certain people. So the next question is, um, what are your thoughts on the death penalty from a Sikhi perspective? Are there any historical references during Guru Sahib's time and uh, different Sampradha's perspectives on it? Um, no, to be honest. Um, the Sikhi is very different in comparison to other faiths. Other faiths have death penalties for sins that they commit. And uh, we don't find that in Sikhi. So... For that reason, I, I don't really know. The death penalty, well, if people need to be put to death, they're put to death. When, I, when you read the Guru Gobind Singh, you put the Masans to death and the way that they were put to death, and for what reason. So a death penalty does exist, but it's not put into a place where we can say through a feudal system how we would judge people based on their karma or, or sins. Do you see Sikhi in overall decline or on the rise at the moment? Um, realistically, Sikhi is on the rise, but it's more picky Sikhi. That's how I see it. There is a lot more people who are adopting the Bana, adopting the Kurbans, who are taking on with who are, you know, you, you see on people who uh, adorn the garb of a Sikh because it's fashionable, because it looks good, because you meet people. I, I, you know, I see a lot of that. I see a rise in that. What I don't see in Sikhi is the knowledge. The knowledge is, I think it's coming back. I think the internet helps massively. I think people are sharing things. But the lack of knowledge in, Sikh, in Sikhs is disproportion it is so low in comparison to like i said i go and meet individuals um, from different faiths and their level of knowledge um, and the way they talk and the way they put things across 
is a lot greater than it is with Insecure. Uh, with Insecure, within... Yeah, with Insecure, I'd say, without a doubt. Uh, and that, that's what I see. I don't see a decline in Sikhi. I see, you know, you see numbers. Sikhi is always rising um, in numbers, but um, in the same way, there's more grains of sand. You, you know, there's more grains of sand than there's diamonds. And what you want is to create diamonds, put the pressure on people, force that grain of sand into a piece of diamond. That's what you want. Because we can have as many pieces of sand as we want. It doesn't mean anything. So the next question is, uh, do you think that the lack of knowledge has to do with limited access to all this gyan or, nor f or no formal institutions in Sikhi, especially in the West? Uh, no. No, I, I've lived in the West. I'm useless when it goes to India. You know, I go to India once every 10 years. I spend a little bit of time. I have learned all my vidya here. Um... And I've learned all my video from when somebody comes, you know, I, I'm really sad. I record everything because if I've asked a million questions, I might forget. I record everything. I listen to it again and again and again. I think I get that from work. Um, and that's where that comes from. I don't think there's a lack in the West at all. There are so many decent Gyanis. And, uh, you know, this is the thing that you've got to do. Gyanis come every, every week to a Guru card. <clears throat> you know, there are some really good Gyanis. There's Bible B things you hear from England who does Gathana in Canada and everywhere. He was one of the first Gyanis I approached in the UK and I was, you know, he had come to do Gathana at the Guru Card. And he's the, one of the first that I approached and I said, I've got this Vedanta Granth, can you go through this with me? And he set out an hour a day. I said, I've got this Granth, can you go through this with me? I've got these questions, can you go through this with me? I did the same with everybody who comes. Now, you know, um, I don't try to bug people. I ask them if they say no, they say no. Uh, and, and I leave it there. Um, but that's what I've done. And I think that people don't take those opportunities. They, they'll go listen to a bit of Katha, go home. They might have a conversation, and the conversation's more on the relative aspects of the world and how things are, rather than on, this is my opportunity to gain this knowledge. Uh, and even if I get 10 minutes of, this is the Jeev, this is the Atama, this is the Brahm, this is what you need to do. Okay, how do I do um, uh, Guru Mantra Simran? Okay, how should I be doing this? Okay, um, I, when I do this part, what should I be doing? How do I focus on my Dhyan? What do I do when I do my Japji Sahib in the morning? Where should my mind be? You know, these sorts of questions are basic questions, but nobody seems to be asking them. You know, um, and, and that's what I'd say. When you get a Vidavan come in or a, any sort of individual that you can learn something from, learn it. That, that's, that's all it is. I just think, I know we haven't got the institutions here. I know we haven't got uh, the opportunity to learn Katha, but um, what we do have is Santa. Start off with the Santa if you need to, just get anything. And then, you know, you look at people like Hajinda Singh Nick, in, uh, like I said, in the West Mint. He does online classes every week. And at the moment, he's going through uh, the Sri Narayan of this, uh, Narayan Hari of this by Pandit uh, Hardev Singh which is a massive, um, basically like a Pagatamala grant by the Nirmalas. And he's just like, I should be listening to that, taking whatever I can. And I, I, I just think that there's a lack of um, desire within today's individuals. Uh, you know, I, I work every day, but I try to make sure I listen to six hours of Katha a day. As I'm listening to Katha, if I hear something I like, I write the times down of that thing. I take a clip of it, I put it on Sikhism and snippets. I just think there's there's no drive. There's no drive and there should be more, that's all. So the next question is, what initially led you to take the further steps uh, in your journey into Sikhi? Um, <clears throat> you know, don't get me wrong, if we're talking about spiritual steps where it's taking on with and things, I've I, 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 you know, I'm not here to lie about anything. I broke my own years ago, and I've been in a a mental place where I'm thinking, when do I take it again? What do I do? Where do where's my life going? I could talk about, you know, so I'm not here to uh, put myself forward as a prominent individual who's spiritually. My, my push into further learning about the 
metaphysical aspects of Sikhi was, like I said, 1998, all of a sudden Santhali Singh Ji opens up about all these things that I knew existed, but I had no desire to find out about them. The moment I find out that this is where your chakras are, this is where your jeev are, this is where your dasandar is, this is what happens here, this is what you can see, this is what you can't see. When I find out that, that's the point I become intrigued. And I just think to myself, well, I want to know all this. Um, you know, I, I was 16, I had a really bad kidney problem. And at 16, I was, I was quite ill. And, and then from that, once I hit 18, that was it. My, I wanted to know because I was like, there's more to this. There's more to, uh, uh, you know, everything. And that was it. Once I hit that moment and I had heard those things, I was one of these, you know, when you see these crazy people who um, go around chasing storms or volcanoes or things like that. I was one of these crazy people who ran around the country in my car when I knew a, a Purcharik was here or a Sadhu was here or a Mahapur or Yanni was here of some uh, substance, substance, some substance uh, that could help me. And uh, that was it. I was done. I was hooked. That, that eventually cost me my marriage because my, my um, ex-wife hated two things. She hated, my, she hated Sadhus and she hated my grants. And that's what cost me my divorce. So, but my spiritual, what, what I, what I wanted my Sikhi is more important to me. So that was it, 1998, I remember that. So can you talk uh, more about the Dasam Granth from a historical perspective? For example, was its formalization as a Granth specifically ordered by the Gurus themselves? And was it present in 1708, as some people claim? Uh, also, uh, why does this debate exist? Um, right. Sri Dasam Granth, we know from the Barneys itself that it was written prior to the commencement of the Amr in 1699. We know, uh, I'm writing a book at the moment, uh, which is based on uh, Gyanis Shir Singh Ji explaining the Tua Prasad Savayi. We know from the stories within the Tua Prasad Savayi, the Athanaka of it is with um, Ratan Rai, you know, uh, obviously he, com he comes along uh, and Maharaj teaches him about dispassion. The Kalas that we already know from the Athanakas that Mata Sundari Ji wanted a child, Ma uh, Mata Guruji Ji was also there. They asked Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh Ji to, that they want a child, how to have this child. And it's at that point that Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh Ji says, we are currently in the middle of writing Gurbani at the moment. So just wait. So what we will end up doing instead is um, this Bhutti that we are currently writing, we will give you that. Make sure you recite the Bani of that, sh uh, that uh, recite the Bani daily uh, as many times as you can. And that was the Akalas. So we get these Athanakas already. So prior to Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh Ji's Amr Sajjah, these, these Banis are being created. By the time we hit 1704, obviously we get this, uh, the Dum Dummy be, being created, the Jafar Nama being sent off from Dina Kangar to Aurangzeb, so that's already been created. Fateh Nama has been created as well. Uh, the Hekayats are with the um, Zafar Nama. So we know that these things are being created in the time of the Gurus. We hit 1708. Maharaj makes their way to uh, uh, Nandir. Nandir, obviously, they show their previous much from a previous life. They show all their things where the Masid was and claim that this is our place of worship from a previous life. Maharaj gets that. They go to Sarablo Bunga where they do all the arts of the Sarablo Granth and write it. But also one of the things that is told within the Sampradaya Katha is that within that year, Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh Ji at Hirak at Gurdwara in Nandir is where they do all the arts of the Dasam Granth. The Dasam Granth is explained there. So when, when the arts are given, given there, so there is a Dasam Granth, although it may not be in a standardized form or a bound form. I don't know how that is, but the, uh, the, the Taksads and Nirmala, the Odasis, the Nahangs, they all say that the arts were done by Guru Gobind Singh Ji there. So we know in 1708 there is a Dasam Granth. Which one there is, I don't know. What Barneys are involved, I do not know. Um, so 
with regards to the standardization, we get from that later on, we get the letter from by money since you have to city guru go over since you leave or such kind uh, and pass their jot on to the city guru run side. So they leave and by money since you writes a letter to Martha uh, uh, is it Martha Saibko? Yes, Martha Saibko. Martha Saib there and they say that we have got hold of these two pillars, we've got hold of these things, we still look for this one to compile the city dust and ground. So we know the dust and ground is compiled, I think, 1714. And it's around that time that we also get, obviously, by Mani Singhji writing the Karabir, which incorporates the Barney from the Siddhi Granth Sahib and the Siddhi Dasam Granth. Now, the problem we have is there's no standardization, because quite frankly, we've already got a beer somewhere towards um, Nadir. We've got the Akalastat and Barney like that within the hands of Singhs already. Um, We've obviously got the uh, Trendy Divar and things like that, uh, other Barney, which are in the possession of other things. Um, so it's, there, it's only when we hit the order committee uh, in the 1800s that there's a standardization of the Dasam Gram. Now, I have not read all the uh, details of the Sordic committee, but it can be found online. Um, people who, it, you know, who spend most of their time interested in Dasam like uh, Kamarup Singh and uh, Gurind Singh Ma, and they, they spend more time on Dasam than anybody else, I think. They might have those answers, uh, but within the Sordic Committee, for some reason, that's where the standardization of the Sri Dasam Granth is um, compiled. I don't know why they're left out. Probably The Gorbin Gita is probably left out because of its size. I believe that's the same with the Ogurdanti. I believe that's the same with all the others, because... One of the things that they did within the Sordic Committee was to make sure that the Granth no, is no bigger in size, in volume of Ungs, than the Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib. Siddhi Guru Granth is 1430 pages, Ungs, and the Dasam is 1428. So I believe they compiled it in a way to make sure it's smaller for, uh, re, you know, j just uh, uh, humility reasons as well. And, uh, and obviously, because of that we have no standardization, we have these. Procrifer Barney's as well that are still sat outside. So I've got, you know, I've got no idea why the decisions were made for the formalization of the grant. And I believe that would have been because of the arguments that would have been taking place where, you know, some Takats have got the Ugardanti Barney being read, the Namtais are reading the Ugardanti Barney, uh, you've got the Mal called Sabasai Dasmi being read, you've got the Gorbin Gita being read by the Nirmali, I, I know that. Um, you know, so it, it's that sort of thing. So I think that was the reason why, um, obviously, the standardization took place. With regards of why is there a debate, is that a debate on the Dasam Granth in whole or the debate on the standardization? Can I ask that? So I think it's uh, on the standardization. Or it could go either way, honestly, but like the whole part doesn't really matter because it's, would you say it's um, basically pretty much every single Samprada kind of acknowledged that Sangrant and it's only that in the modern day where we have these neo-missionaries like posting Sabha era that people are starting to kind of doubt yeah. that Sambani as a whole? Yeah, 100%. The, the Nirmali, the Namtaris, the Seva Pantis, they all, they all acknowledge the Dasam Grant. They all acknowledge, you know, the Barney within the Dasam Grant, there is no skepticism or, or debates on it. There may have been from certain individuals, but as a whole, it's accepted. The Sri Dasam Grant is accepted. Even the Odasis, um, so all four of the yeah, original yeah, yeah. Sampadas? Okay. Yeah, the Odasis as well. The Odasis accept what's within the Sri Grant, so uh, you know, accept what's in the Sri Dasam Grant. The only problem you have with the Odasis is the Odasis are more focused on the Sargon form, so they spend most of their time on reading the the Bhagavad Mahapuran or the uh, uh, Chandi Purans and things like that because their focus is on the form of Ishwar. So you see that when you go there and they've, they've got Murti on everywhere and pictures of Hanuman or Vishnu and things like that. So their focus is more on that, but they don't argue. You look at Swami Brahmadev, like I said, his lectures on Dasam Granth are probably the best you can find on the whole of the internet. He said many a times, put me in front of Professor Darshan Singh and I'll set him right. It was only Professor Darshan Singh saying, 
no, I will only stand in front of a Singh and argue with him and have a debate with him, not in front of Assad, because he is an Amr Thari. Um, so question, um, what is the correct form for Bid Asan? Is it right leg or left? And what is the history of the Asan? Um, also, was Jab Sahib first recited by Guru Sahib in this Asan? Oh, okay. Right. So that question, it says that Guru, Guru Sahib read it in that Asan. There's Gyani Harpajan Singh, you mentions it within his Gatha. That Maharaj was sat in Bid Asan when the first did it. Um, the Bid Asan... Um, I, I have been told that the arson comes due to the way you are sat there holding weapons, but I can't tell you that for, for you know, I can't be 100% in, in any way on that. The best thing I would say with that is to refer to the Nahangs. They, they know more about the arsons than anybody else. I don't know whether that's something that somebody like Javala or somebody like that will be able to help out with, because they seem to know more about the the arsons when it comes to the holding of weapons and the uh, the care of weapons. So the next question is, do you think it's beneficial to listen to something like Suraj podcast, which is basically a summary of the history written, or listen to Katha of Suraj Prakash, on which, um, which has a commentary along it? I think... If you are starting and have absolutely no knowledge of Sikhi, your grasp of Punjabi is really poor, then something that um, uh, obviously Dvala is doing with, with the Suraj podcast is really good because it's, it's like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just as a summary. Yes, it's good. It is good for those individuals that are getting into it. I'd say it's good if you want to know if that are the ideas for you to, to read as well. <clears throat> what i but for me, there is nothing better than Katha. I, you know, I, I've been through the stages where I couldn't understand a word of Punjabi. I've gone through years and years and years of listening again and searching terms and trying to figure out this and go through glossaries and whatnot. For me, there is nothing better than Punjabi Katha because, you know, I, I, I find it difficult when I initially tried writing these English translations and putting the, the mind facet. And the mind facet is supposed to be the Antishkaran, but the mind facet doesn't make sense because the Antishkaran is made up of, you know, different terms. I'd always say that Katha is the best thing, but you've got to have a grasp of Punjabi. It's, it's working towards it. So I'd say what Jawala is doing is really good and it's bringing new people who have had little experience or little, um, little interest into Sikhi to now go, oh, hang on, in 10 minutes I've learned something. So the next question is, uh, why do some people say Mata Sahib Kaur and some say Mata Sahib Deva, which is correct, like from a historical perspective? Yeah, um, the one that is right, Mata Sahib Deva is it's written Mata Sahib Deva in in a load of text, and I don't I don't have it to hand. Jawala actually put up a load of images of from different texts where it's actually written as Mata Sahib Deva. Uh, but if Mata Sahib Kaur is no different. It's the same as when you look at um, the names on some Isha Singh Jirala Saiwala's um, letters. He writes Isha Hari. You know, you look at uh, some Indrajit Singh Ji's... Uh, a name that he puts for Santa Guru Bachchan Singh, he writes Chetan Balas Hari. It is looking at what Deva means, what God means, um, and they're supposed to. I've not had a look at the linguistics, and I could be told that this is completely rubbish, but I've been told that they mean the same thing in the way that Hari and Singh mean the same thing. Chetan Balas Hari means Guru Bachchan Singh, you know, that sort of thing. So I don't know if it's name play. You know, Guru Gobind Singh, called themselves Adam and Shyam. You know, I don't know. So the next one is, what is the historical perspective on Sikhs believing in Hindu Devi Devtas? Did they believe them to be literal beings or just metaphors as some suggest today? Um, well, when Maharaj says, you know, 
you know, is is Guru Nandev Ji talking about metaphorical things or not? You know, you look at uh, what uh, the arts of Onkara, Akaru Karma Karapun, Ardhapinda Pahichan, Charuko Sandaijo, Onkara Pahichan. You know, it says in there it's Akar, which is a Brahma, you know, or Okar, which is a, a Vishnu, Makar is, a, a, is Shiva. You know, these these come into what Om are, but Akar is bigger. If the basis of Gurbani is based on something that isn't true, it makes whatever Gurbani is false as well. What you got to look at it is, and this is where I'd say, this is where you need to term and look at it in a Semitic sense. The Semitic sense states that they have the, the, the archangels of Michael, Gabriel, um, and obviously uh, um, Az- Azrael. So in the same way, that is how you look at the, um, the Devte. Where Sanjay Jitsinji have done a Katha, they said there's no difference. They said Brahma is um, um, Mikhail, you know, Jibrail is uh, obviously Vishnu, and then obviously the last one is, is uh, Azrael, and that's what they are. You've got to look at it as God is above all those, and those are the workers of God, and that's all they are, in the same way that the Semitic faiths will go, these are the archangels, these are the Metatrons, this is this. These are all the, the workers of God. So in the way God is the worker, they're the hands, they do his work for him. God controls everything, and like the same Gurbani, Kamai, Jodhra, Chalipuram. So they are they are present. Not from Maya, those three are present. Iksansari, Kundari, Iklai, Divan. They do their work, but they can't see God. You know, they, they can't see him. They can perceive him. They can hear him like everybody else can. They can't see him. Or Vikhe, or Nanadanavi, what they were So God can see them. They can't see him. Uh, so Gurbani, they exist. It's just we don't worship them in the same way that. Jews and Christians and all, they don't worship the angels because they know that it's God doing everything. But about in the same way as doing that, you just got to you got to compare it in that sort of manner. The problem you have is with the Sanatan terms, they believe that it it was you know it was these deities that were doing everything in the same way that the Greeks and the Romans did. So the next question is, oh, well, also, by, by the way, Paisab, so we're currently at uh, 4 hours, 41 minutes. So if you need to take a break or end it here, just let us know, Paisab. And uh, let's go another 15 minutes and I'll go for a break. Okay, sounds I'll good. Get... Is All that right. right? Yeah, of course, of course. We can go, like, the longest one we've done is literally, like, six hours during Halloween <laughs> where there's a Paisab from Canada who's talking about how in their dream they went to a different dimension to meet, like, Indira Gandhi's ghosts and stuff. And, like... Yeah, so so don't worry. We've done talks that have been way That's longer. Okay. So as long as you want to go, we keep on going. Yeah, yeah. Sangat here no, loves it. Right now we have over 31 members yeah. currently listening in live. At our peak, we had about 80. And so overall, we've had about over 100, I would say, because people are joining in and out. So yeah. Um, so the next question is, have six or Khalsa historically done the Havan? Um. Within the Nirmal tradition, Udasi traditions, Havan still go on. They still occur. I have seen them occur. Um, so yeah, they do. They do happen. They do happen. Actually, within the Hungs, um, they do occur as well. I, you know, I think it's only within the civil countries I've not seen it. Have I been involved in any of them Havans? No, I don't. Uh, do I know why they're doing them? No, I don't. Um, but I've seen them doing it in the same way as the Namtaris. The Havans go on when some of the Dasan Barnis are being read. Um, but I, I can't tell you what, in what context or why it's being done. I can't tell you that. But yes, I have seen it. I went to Bani side where I saw it being done. Um, I have been uh, with the Namtaris. I've seen it done when we were at uh, the Bangar. Uh, Gurdara, which is uh, Fatigar Sahib. Uh, I've seen it with the Nirmalay. Um, I've seen it with some Sutra Shahis as well um, in Jalandar. So it does occur. Uh, the reasons for it, I can't tell you why. Um, and I can't tell you what, in what context. I just know that, you know, with the uh, Nantaris especially and the, the Nirmalay in the Hongs, there was you know, Bani going on at times. So uh, the next question is, um, 
were the original marriages done around a fire? So I, I assume the person's referring to the marriages of the gurus. <clears throat> no, I don't believe it. Uh, you know, from I, I, you know, there are those that will read the glance and go, yes, yes, it does say that. What I've always been taught by my stars is that no, especially Sri Guru Nandaji, when they write out the the mantra and God and they circumambulate that, that's where the first marriage starts. So, um, you know, that that's that's where it comes from. But no, I, I don't believe that is the case. What is the history behind the label 96 Karori? Oh, um, damn. I can't answer that now, but I'd suggest reading Gyani Gurwinder Singh Nangli's Nihanganama um, if somebody wants the details of it um, or a copy of it. I have it in PDF because Gyani G sent it me. Uh, it details why it's called that in there. Um, because I'd only read it the other day. So I can give somebody the details for that, but unfortunately I've not got it to hand. I can't remember it off the top of my head. So, Pai Sab, do you want to take the break now or do you want to keep on going for a bit because a lot of Sangat are joining in now that we put the announcement out. We're getting a lot more questions too. So do you want to just take the break now? If, if that's the case, yeah, take take a break for five minutes and okay. uh, grab a glass of water and I'll be back. If that's Sounds okay. good. All right, so just take however long you want. So Sangachi, uh, Pai Sab is just going to take a break because we've been going for over uh, four and a half hours right now. So put any questions you have in the question box. It can be about Sikh history, Sikh literature, Sikh philosophy, Sikh groups, personal questions, uh, financial questions, anything. Just put it in the question box and um, we'll see you guys back in about five minutes uh, when Pai Sab is back. I'm, I'm also going to quickly go take a break as well. I'll be right back. But in the meantime, you're gonna basically have a copper in it. But Bicep's gonna have a copper. I can't have a copper, mate. All right, a glass of water. They're gonna give you another five hours. Sangachi, uh, how are you guys finding the talk so far? It's amazing. I mean, I don't even know. You know, we had this resources. Of...
Also, uh, what we're planning on doing, Sangachi, is uh, Pai Sab says that he can get us a lot of books at a reduced rate. So what we're thinking is this. Uh, we're thinking of assigning local sevadars in each city um, so that the Sangat can all pool their maya together and order it uh, shipped to one location and then they can distribute it amongst themselves so that way everyone sh saves on shipping and Paisab gets a bigger cut of it because if you order it through the website, the publisher takes 40% of it. So that way it's better for Paisab and it's more cheaper for the Sangat as well. So if you guys are interested in that, just uh, here's what I'll do. So in the announcement section, react to that message with a thumbs up if you are interested in the whole book thing where um, where what we're going to do is we're going to pool uh, the Maya together and then assign different say with us for different locations uh, and that way you can order as many books as you want and then Paisab will have like a custom print for that. So it's going to be cheaper for you, easier for Paisab to ship it. And uh, Paisab will retain more of the Maya rather than the, going to the publisher. So just react to the message that's just posted in the announcement section if you're interested in that. And then after the event, we'll get all the logistics sorted out and everything. So how are you feeling, Paisab? I'm good, thank you. I'm just I'm just saying to just meet someone who's just texted me and said, 10 minutes till the uh, AEW wrestling. I'm quite sad. I, uh, I sit here watching the wrestling about this time at night. Oh, okay. So. Uh, if, if you want, um, no, 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. Sh should we do like a wrestling live stream? Oh man, I'd do that all day. It's really sad. I'm like a 40 year old man. My kids take the mick out of me all the time for this sort of thing. So, uh... <laughs> no, because like last <laughs> night, we were uh, a few of the things here. We were like watching uh, like a UFC match or whatever on, on Discord, yeah. we just live streaming for the whole song because that way everyone could see it. So, if you want, we can in the background live stream some wrestling <laughs> or something. No, 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 see, if, if that's the case, um. We'll never get finished because um, I'll be uh, more uh, focused on the wrestling, which is really sad. So no, don't worry. Okay. I'll sit there talk talk to my workmates about it tomorrow because they're sad as me. So that's fine. All don't right. worry. <laughs> okay. And Sangachi, uh, again, uh, if you guys have any questions uh, regarding anything, just put it in the question box. And if you would like to take part in the whole uh, group book purchasing to help buy sub out and make it easier for you guys to buy the books, react to the message posted in uh, announcements. Okay, so Paisab, um, are we ready to continue? Yes, of course. All right, sounds good. So the next <coughs> question is, <laughs> how do you improve your grasp on Punjabi to be able to read classical Punjabi writings and recordings, uh, especially if you were born and raised in the West? Um, basically, I was the same as everybody here. I was 16, 17. I sat there listening to Katha and... Um, I would grasp about two minutes of it, and that was about it. So I made it a point to listen, uh, repeat it, and continue listening. And then if I needed to, I would go home, or, well, especially at the time, there was no internet. So it was a case of go home and ask my dad what something meant. You know, I'd say, this is what I picked up, Dad. This is what I picked up from the gutter. Am I right or am I wrong? Uh, explain to me what happened. Most of the time, he'd just be like, I can't be bothered because obviously it's, it's hard, hard work trying to explain it <laughs> because uh, Gatha is not the easiest thing to explain to people who, who have no grasp of, of the, uh, you know, the concepts. So what I did was, like I said, I, uh, I continued to listen. I picked up bits. I started listening to more Gurbani. Um, from Gurbani, you start picking up some of the terminology that's being used. Um, I s started to read. Uh, read a lot but then I was lucky I had really good Sangat around me I, I ended up going to university here where you know some of the people around me I had a uh, Baikul Jeet Singh who's now uh, you know he's Sikhi to the max in, in the UK uh, sorry uh, Sikh to Inspire in the UK and then he's now he's now in India but his you know he was somebody who was at uni with me uh, Kamarup Singh who's obviously done all this stuff on the Dasam um he was at uni with me. Uh, Thita Singh Nirmala was probably one of the most influential individuals I've never ever met in my life. He's a, a, a Singh who was born as John Clyde Evans, born into a hippie family, had no idea of what Sikhi was, 
read an English translation of Jabji Sahib and something happened and he became a Sikh. And, but he learned everything before everybody else, whether it was Raghavidya, Sanskrit, Hindi, Punjabi. And having good influences like that and having Sangat around you to go, what about this? What is this? What is this? And then they would bring up a subject topic that you've never heard of before. You know, for the first time, I remember it was Gomer Singh bringing up the Salvador Granth when I was like, what? Never heard of this Granth. What about this? I've never heard of this. So I think it's vital you start. I'm not saying get rid of any bad Sangat or anything like that. You still got to have your friends. You still got to have whatever. But it's good to catch up with people who are like minded, who are intellectuals, who are knowledgeable, and they can start explaining things to you. You know, listening to Katha again and again and again is is essential. And that's what I'm trying to do with my books now. I, The Katha, as it is said, is what I write down. I just put it into an English vernacular so that people can understand what's going on. So, like, the the, the classic example is the Jab Saib Katha by Sanjanel. Somebody can pick up my book, have that in front of them, and be listening to the Katha at the same time while they're reading. And, you know, it's... It's there. It's all there. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do. So the next generation don't have that problem and don't have to sit through years and years and years of studying and learning and things like that. I want to make the Qatar accessible in an English format so everybody can have that, uh, you know, that ability to grasp what Sikhi is really saying. So the next question is, do you have to belong uh, to a sampradha such as like Nihang, Taksali, etc. Or is there is there a quote-unquote mainstream Sikhi? No, you just have to be Guru that's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to join one of these. You know, there's there's many people, like I said, look at Pai Pindar Pasan, look at Gyani San Singh Ji Muskeen. They had been to these sampradhas and learned. They had gone to all these places and gained tutelage from different teachers, but they never assigned themselves a um, a, a, what, what do you call it? They never assigned themselves to a group. They never said that I now belong to this group or I am part of this group. You know, they they just continued on. They they you know, and their Purchar is still there. You know, you look at the Jatidar of uh, Patana Sahib at the moment is uh, Gyani Ranjit Singh Gaur, uh, Gyor, Gaur Muskeen. He learned from Muskeen, but he, he's a head of a Tak. So it, he's if you look at it, he'll, he'll probably go, well, I never had any Sampradayak teaching, but Muskeen's teaching just Sampradayak. You don't have to belong to a Sampradayak. It's just, it's just in the same way as you being um, at university. This is how I always look at it. You being at university and uh, you are looking to obtain the education from different schools of thought. That is all you're doing. You're grasping that. If you want to look at the Sampradayak as an analogy, it is a garden. And the garden is full of different types of flowers. You can pick one type of flower, it'll give you one type of fragrance. You pick the flowers from different sampradas, put them together. You've got a bouquet of flowers, which will smell even, even greater and they'll complement each other. That's what you're looking for. But you don't have to assign yourself a name and say, I am part of this, or I am a Nirmala, I am a Nahang, I am whatever. You don't need to do any of that. So the next question is, how does Suraj Prakash differ from how it is written today and from when it was uh, edited and uh, what was taken out of Suraj Prakash when it was edited? Mm, uh, interesting. Right. The, I have only heard, only because I have not actually physically seen any of the original Suraj, of Suraj Prakash. The Suraj Prakash is, you know, I've only heard from a number, a number of different sadhus who have said there is source material that you can look at, and there are a number of things that have been added uh, within within the grants. So you get, um, I remember listening to a piece of Katha by Santhari Singhji where they were talking about um, Sri Guru Gobind Singh, Sri Guru Arjun Dev Ji in Badali when Sri Guru Har Gobind Ji were born, and the two Bhangtiya which are next to each other, just didn't match up because one said that they were in Amritsar and the other one said they were in Vidali and said this has been added. You can see that because of this. You can see this because of that. So I can't tell you what has been added, what hasn't been added. You know, you listen. Uh, this is why I listen to the Qatar of elders who are 
esteemed and knowledgeable because they will tell you why it's been added or why they perceive that a certain text has been added or why something has been taken out. Um, and they can do that with the loop and and go and things like that. So you talk to all the sadhus and they say, yeah, there's, it has been edited, it has been done this. Some holy things explains basically what te- takes place is um, the writings of the Surah Kharsh are take are taken to uh, Sri Darbar Sahib. They are given to the Sikh Panth. All the rights are given there. Uh, the uh, text is then taken by uh, by Sun Singh. By Sun Singh, he gives it to his son by Gurmukh Singh. When the Dogras are looking to go after um, Maharaj and Jeet Singh Ji, obviously they uh, then go after by Gurmukh Singh and things like that. By Gurmukh Singh leaves his house. Uh, and obviously that's where the original Granth is, so things become altered and changed from there. I can find the link to that story. Um, it's in one, within one of the Kathas, and I may have put a link up on the Sikhism in Snippets podcast. I will have a look. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, so you listen to them, you listen to a number of other people, they, they say it's been edited. There are others who are adamant that it's not been edited because it suits their way of life. Yeah. You know, what I'd say is, you know, if, with the grant, you always look at it and then you've always got to focus on every grant as a, um, you've got to compare it to what Gurbani says. That's what you've got to do anyway. Because um, Gurbani is what we follow. Everything else is a secondary text. Um, you know, and that's, that's why you've got to look at it, especially with historical texts. So wait, do we still have the original Suraj Prakash that was written by Kaviji? Um, this is a question for Sansari, because they will be able to uh, add to that and explain that. But yeah, that, you know, I, I'd say next time that you get somebody like Santhali Singhji or some of the Tuxalis down, it's a question to ask them. Um, just have a look. Podcast 596 uh, is about the portions included in the Gurpurtab that have been added. So I have got a couple of podcasts on it. So a couple of clips on it. So they are, they are there. So another question um, is how do we know uh, every Saki uh, sorry, how, <clears throat> how do we know uh, every Sakiya um, is written to be true or should we take some Sakiya with a grain of salt? Um, like I said to you, my, um, the question you have is with, with the Sakyas, you look at it and you make its comparison or uh, you look at it through a Gurmukh perspective. That's how, that's how you've got to look at it. You look at some of those Sakya and you go, well, actually, I don't, I don't agree with this. Um, and I don't think this is real. That's fine. You might not think it's real, but I, I wait for those people to explain it to me uh, and go, well, why is it real? Why is it not real? Uh, why Why do you think it's been changed or edited or in this manner? Um, so I look for those intellectuals to explain it. But the good thing is you've got by reason he's wrote a load of footnotes within his texts. You know, you, you see like um, uh, Ajit Singh Oluk who edits things from his book because he doesn't agree with certain things. Uh, I know there is a tikka being created, a sampradayak tikka on the Surya Prakash and Nanak Prakash. So hopefully that will cover it. There's a really good dika up until the life of Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh Ji, done by Dr. Kapal Singh. Probably the best dika on the Nanak Prakash and Surya Prakash to buy, if you're going to buy one. The Oluk one isn't great at all. There's there's a lot of issues with it. The other one is absolutely it's brilliant. It's really good. Um, so yeah, and, and obviously if there's an issue in there, they compare it to Gurbani and they say, well, Gurbani says this, so how could this be considered to be good or, or true because of this? Or how could the Guru have done this if in Gurbani it says this or it says this or it says this? Um, so, Parkarni and Gurbani Nali Parkarni. That's what you're going to do. So, uh, the next question is, do Nirmalas still learn Vidya from Gyanis of other religions slash traditions or was that only in the beginning? <clears throat> no, Nirmalas, you know, Nirmalas look to learn from wherever they can. So you will see the Nirmalas going to uh, other other places, not just Nirmalas. You look at um, somebody like uh, Gyani Gurwinder Singh Mangli, who is in charge of the Sarbubunga. He's an, he's an Adasi. 
who has spent a considerable amount of time. Sorry, sorry, I said it. He's in the Hangsi. He does a Katha of the Sar blog on um, on the internet and things like that. And you know, he's really focused on that. He's the one that's challenging a lot of stuff on the um, Brahm, uh, Brahm coverage and things like that. So he's challenged a lot of those things. But what he does uh, also is he has spent time learning from the Nirmala, uh, on the Nirmala grants. He has also spent time learning from um, Ghazis and uh, Mullah uh, and uh, yeah, Muslim priests, Muslim clerics. To learn how to recite the Zafar Nama, Ganj Nama, uh, by Nandalalji's Bani properly. So, not only within Nirmala tra- uh, traditions does it continue, but it continues on in those traditions as well. You know, the Hongs go there to learn. Uh, you know, people like, um, not just in those traditions, but Gyani Ma- uh, by Man Singh Chor, Gyani Man Singh Chor, he learned from the Muslims because he then went to Iran and did Qatar there and things like that on Gurbani and stuff like that. So yeah, so people are still learning from other other groups um, in the same way that you'd learn at school. School is, you know, a, a normal educational facility is not a religious facility. It's It goes against what Sikhi believes in some of the things that we learn, but we still learn it. It doesn't go against Sikhi to learn things from other institutions or places. The thing that you've got to focus on, and it says within the 52 hukums of Sikhi Guru Gobind Sikhi, is to learn the texts of other traditions, but keep your focus on Gurbani. If it supports Gurbani, use it. If it goes against Gurbani, do not use it. The next question is regarded to the one about Suraj Prakash. It's that um, which, if any, Saki grants written after 1708 had any alterations uh, made with malicious intent? Mm, right. Uh, the, the malicious intent. If you are in the hung, you are going to say that actually some of the stuff in Suraj Prakash you believe in. If you are in Nirmala, Odasi, Sivapanti, there are some aspects with regards to Sukha, Chadka, the, you know, those sorts of things. These minor issues that these Sampradas have with each other or these differences, they will argue upon. And they will say, well, According to Gurmat, that is wrong. According to this, this is wrong. And then the Nahangs will go, actually, according to the Rath Mayada of by this, I saying this is right. According to the Rath Mayada of this individual, this is still right. So it all, it all comes down to that sort of thing. It all comes down to um, the perspective you are trying to go towards. You know, and there are individuals that will say that things are corrupted, and there's others that will say, actually, that Prasang isn't corrupted. So an example I give you is a Saki within Surah Prakash, which talks about uh, the history behind Dig, the history behind the growth of cannabis and the use of cannabis and the Mahatma of using cannabis. Now, it's in Surah Prakash, Ajit Singh Olak has completely left that out of his translation. It doesn't, it doesn't appear at all. Um, so that's not down to malicious intent. I know you're asking if it's down to malicious intent. Those aren't down to malicious intent. Those are down to person's ignorance or a person's viewpoints or a person's own moral perspective. With regards to alterations or the sucking of grants, you know, uh, after 1708 with malicious intent, there possibly could be loads. There possibly, there possibly could be lots of things that have changed. But unless we have, and I always say, unless you have original source material, you're not going to go. So the next question is, what is the history of Brahm Kavich and why is it disputed recently? Uh, right, I'd, um, I'll, I'll touch upon it, but there's there's a lot of information on that. The, it's been disputed recently when Baba Hanam Singhji of uh, Daksal has come out and said, Brahm Kavich is not a, a body of the Gurus. It's not in any of the good girls that we've got. It's not in any of the grants we've got. We can't find it in some of the Dasam grants as well. And again, Ingrid Singh Nangri has found uh, the the Barney within a couple of Dasam grants. He finds uh, he finds it on a Shaster. Um, there are many people that repeat it as a Bolla. They say that it's given by Shemir Pasha. 
Um, obviously, the disputed issue with that is in, within the Gorpurtab, it states when Sri Guru Hargobind is talking to um, Bhai Bidhi Chand and he asks for somebody asks a question to do a Gurbani. Previously, what used to happen is the, the Gurus used to recite a Shabbat that used to come to them now and then and create a Shabbat. Instead, uh, Sri Guru Hargobind he recites the Shabbat by Pagpubirji, Baji Jesse, Baji Gajami. So, talking about this is all a play, this is all an act, this person is an actor, all a Vedantic Shabbat. And Bhai Bidhi Chand says, Why didn't you, at the time, create your own Shabbat like the previous Gurus used to do? And they say that as a Sikh Guru, we've been told that we are not to utter any Shabbats. We're to add the Tana to the Sri Guru Granth Sahib, and that is it, but not to create any Bani. So the 6th, 7th and 8th Guru were told not to create any Bani. The Brahmka, which is said to be a Bola of Sri Guru Hargovindji, so that's disputed because of that reason. The other thing is uh, disputed. Some people say that the Brahmka, which is actually the Chalpa Isai, and it's like, that's, that's what Baba Hanam Singh says. He said, if the Brahmka, which was such a powerful Bani, then Sanjana Singh, while we were in the Tarmiyad Morcha, would have said to all their things, everybody recite the Brahm Kavich. Everybody recite this. Everybody keep doing this. And instead, they don't. Instead, uh, obviously, they say that the, they were told that the Brahm Kavich is the Chalpe side. It's, it's the Rakya, the Shabbat. It's the one that protects you. So the dispute comes there. Now, as far as I'm concerned with the dispute, there's the book come out by, uh, again, uh, convincing Nangli on the Brahm Kavich. Um, and I think Bai Sukha Singh was looking at getting that translated at the time when I spoke to him. Um, so hopefully that comes out and clears the the uh, issues between the texts. The issue you have is, other than the Nahams, again, this is one of those texts that none of the other Sampradas have, have been reciting. So all of a sudden, when it, it gains a bit of popularity, you get some of the other sample of those going, I don't know about any, I don't know about this. So the question, the problem, the, what should be happening is they should sit aside and have that conversation between themselves to elaborate upon what are, what are the issues rather than basically having a, a tantrum like a Karen on the internet. Um, so, Paji, the next question is, why is Vahu Vahu Sache Pasha Tu Sache Nai read in a part at the end of each body in Rag Rampli, even, th- even though it's only written in Guru Granth Sahib Ji after the first body? Is there a historical context? Right. Unfortunately, I don't know this off the top of my head, but I've heard it in the Katha by Gyani Harpaj Nasini Dudi Kayale. I will find it and I'll send a link. But I can't tell you off the top of my head. And they explained it too. They explained, I don't even know if they explained for or against it, but they do mention it and they do talk about it. So unfortunately, I cannot elaborate for, for the Sangha there, to be honest. I'll just be misleading you. That's all I'll do. So the next question is Is it good or advisable to take a notepad to a Gurdwara Sahib when listening to Katha or to make notes while listening to Katha online? Is it uh, a good habit that's, to make? Um, when we were talking about how did I grasp my Punjabi, how did I grasp, uh, you know, the Katha, that is exactly what I did. I had a notepad, <laughs> had a notepad with me. I had tapes with me recording things. I sit there taking notes. I think uh, the sons hate it when I'm sitting there in front of them and uh, all of a sudden... Um, they'll be saying something and then they look towards me because I'm writing something down. And I do, you know, I, I do that. If they say something, I'm just like, hang on, I need to write this down now so I don't forget it. Um, for me, I, I do that all the time. Now, thankfully, with the with phones, you just put your phone on airplane mode and as soon as you hear something, you put it in your notes section. I do that all the time. My notes section in my phone is full of different pieces of gutter, different things I've heard, different things I need to listen again different things I need elaborated on. Um, I think it's a really good thing to do in the same, the same way that you would do if, if you're a reporter and you've gone to an incident where you want to hear what's taking place and somebody giving you an account. Um, I think it's something you should do. So the next question is, uh, it says, Pai Saab, uh, have you ever had Darshan or uh, Pratan Sarup Sahib and where the most Puratan one? 
Uh, unfortunately, the only sloops that I have had darshan of is we had a Pratan sloop within, within our family. So I had darshan of that prior to being given to a, a Guru card after my uh, Nanaji passed away. Other than that, I've seen Pratan sloops only within Guru cards in the UK. Um, they are, other than a few, that I, I was only interested in one because it had the Mahala Dasma in it. I've not seen any others. I can't tell you the age of it. It wasn't handwritten. It was a printed one. Uh, but it was um, um, bloody wrong. It wasn't bad shit. So the next one uh, is regarding you doing Japji Saib Katha on YouTube. Uh, the user said it was very deep. And they're asking, uh, do you have any plans to do a Jap Saib Katha or other Nitin and Baniya? And... Um, the person says, no. do they realize how much we appreciate their katha and their panthic contribution? Um, no, I'm trying to think who's right. That's been written by Jasmeet Singh, I'm guessing, who had spoken earlier. Yeah, Jasmeet Singh. I know, I, he's, he's prob- yeah, exactly. He's the only one that's probably listened to the katha and everybody else. No, we, we did the Jabji Sahib katha up until I, I, we didn't even complete halfway, but there was like 80 videos because we were trying to get in as much depth as we could. Um. And obviously due to COVID, same as everybody else, everything fell out and I was trying to sort the books out and things like that. At the moment, there are no plans to do any more kata because the the plan now is to get everything into a written format uh, through the kata that we're doing. Uh, sorry, through the kata that's already online. There's so much kata online and I just want to get that done so that individuals can take laha of the kata and, and realize what is within the Gurbani kata we have available. So I'm not looking at promoting my own cafe in any way. Um, I'm just glad that, you know, just meet Singh does appreciate it. That, you know, but I pray my Singh, dude, that's how he is now. So, no, I appreciate that. But at the moment, no plans. We just want to carry on putting stuff on, on video that we have. So the next question is, Pai Saab, have you studied Shastra Vidya? And uh, are there any books out there talking about Shastra Vidya and its evolution from the Guru's time? Unfortunately, I've I've uh, I learnt basic Gatka, and that was only at the start. I didn't do any Pantra. We had uh, Nahang Nadar Singh, he was in the UK with us, and we are talking early 2000. And we went to a couple of his sessions, but I didn't really learn anything. I went there because I would have... A conversation with Nadar Singh, uh, Thira Singh Nirmala, a couple of others that we were there, and we were more there to learn more and express views and talk. I wish I had picked it up, and, I, and you know, it's something that I wish I'd done at the time. There are books about <clears throat> Shastra Vidya available. There was one by an individual called Nanak Singh who had written a really good book, and there's another one called Shastra, Na- Shastra Mala. So, those are the two that I would suggest picking up. With regards to its evolution, unfortunately, because I don't have the ability or the knowledge of uh, the basics of Shastra Vidya, I wouldn't be able to say what the evolution is or the changes. Oh, Pai Sub, sorry, could you say what oh, was the first book you mentioned or the first individual? <clears throat> the first individual was by a Singh from Holland by the name of Nanak Singh. His Sounds name perfect. was Nanak Singh. And uh, yeah, he's. He's passed away now, but he was an individual in the 3HO, but he knew his, his Gatka or his Shastra Vidya, and he, he was the first one to um, write a book upon it. Uh, Gatka is taught by Nanak Dev Singh Khalsa. That's it, 1987. Thank you so much. No problems. So the next question is, are the Sawzakis authentic? And uh, which ones are authentic and which ones are false? <clears throat> so this, is a, this is a question you hear that there are Sol Sakya, there are Pancho Sakya, there are there numerous Sakya. From what I hear, and <clears throat> I've never studied it, I've got the Sol Sakya Tika by uh, Pratap Singh, so I need to have a look at it. They also, there were originally some Sol Sakya, they were later corrupted, and due to the corruption, um, we don't know what is real, what isn't real. I've never gone through it myself. It's probably one because of this conversation now <laughs> that I'm going to write on a piece of paper and 
next time one of my studs is in contact with me, it's it's a question that I'll be asking, and uh, and for some some work upon it that I can start researching. But I can't I can't elaborate further on that, unfortunately. So the next question is regarding Gurbani pronunciation. It's um, where do the different pronunciation styles of Gurbani come from? Is it from local Punjabi uh, variation that was spoken? For example, uh, some say Sajjan Sacha Pat Saho and some say Sajjan Sacha Pat. Okay, I don't know how to read that because the person wrote it in English. Uh, I wrote. No, that's it. So, 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 first one, Sajjan Sacha Pat Saho. Yeah, and the other one is Sajjan Sacha Pat Saho, isn't it? Yeah. So the difference is in the Sasa and the Shisha. Um, that all comes according to the Samkhya. And I would say that Gurbani is there is there's a slok of <clears throat> yeah a slok of Sri Guru Tegh Bahaduji where they write a shabad you know, they write a slok but they miss out a letter in one of the the words but you have to pronounce it with the letter the reason they missed out the letter is due to the number of letters that can be written in a slok. There's 24 and they can't write any more. But when you recite the Gurbani, you have to say the extra letter. I don't know whether it's in a slok or it's in one of the Shabbos. I can't remember I was reading it. And for that reason, I would say Santhya is essential. Because when you go through the Santhya, they will explain why you say it in a certain way, what it is. Thankfully, we've got one, two, three, about six different types of Santhya on Gurmat Vichar by different people. We've got the Pindri Sampurda, we've got two by Taksal, which has got Sardarshan Singh, Yani Shir Singh within there, by Purvinder Dwal Singh Butter, we've got uh, one by Pai Kur Sharan Singh. Uh, we'll have a few more coming soon as well. Um, I think it's... I, I've I've never been one for something I haven't had time. And then all of a sudden, once um, the lockdowns kicked in a year ago, I started listening to all sorts of something, and I learned more from there than I than I thought I would. Uh, I think it's essential to do the something to realize how to pronounce something because they'll explain why it's pronounced in that manner as well. So the next question is, what's your view on Sharda Puran Granth and its authentication? Um, there's a number of uh, Sharda Puran Granths in. Uh, obviously, you know, considering those like buying money since he's buying other allergies and things like that, the majority of them just focus on the different um, body of the Sujab Jisai, the direction you're supposed to sit in, how many days you're supposed to do the mantras and things like that. Um, I think it's, I, I, I personally think they're they're real, only because if you look at the Muktamara Granth, it's very similar there as well with the Muktamara Granth with how many shabbas you do, what file you get, how many times you should do it, which way you should do it. So, I, th- I think there there is something there, but however, when it comes to authentication, I've, I've got none. I'm going by my own supposition and what I believe, and to be quite honest, that's not enough for for some people, and it shouldn't be. You know, I'd suggest doing some research on it and see what there is. The first thing I'd always look for is, especially on these uh, Punjab digital libraries and places like that, we'll see if they can find the initial manuscripts. If you can find those manuscripts, then you can start looking at dating them. Then you can start looking at if there's differences in what you're reading, um, you know, and, and that's where I'd start. But with regards to authentication, I don't have any. But like I said, with grants like the Muktamara grant, things like that, they are very similar. So the next question is, what are your views regarding the katha that happens in Gurdwaras nowadays? For example, um, many katha vajiks seem to be repetitive and not as scholarly as they could be. And the person says that personally, I think having debates and a two-way interaction would be helpful to better gain understanding. Uh, I, I agree with the, the two-way interaction. I don't think the two-way interaction can take place within the presence of Guru Sahib because Shantamai uh, Hunajira, you know, in the Durbar. I think if you have a session where, you know, if it's not within the Sangha, then it's set up as a case of it's a, a two-way conversation, then, then that's completely fine. That's different. Um, I agree that a lot of Gatha is rep- repetitive. And a lot of Gatha, for me, 
I can go and listen to and I can come home and go, not learn anything new today, unfortunately. You know, that that's why I go. I want to learn something new in the same way that I'll pick up a new book and I'll want to learn something new. I'd like to pick up something new that I can add and add, use it to add value to something I'm trying to explain. Um, what I think should be happening is that, like I said, Gothavarchik should be checked for. Again, like, I think we need more accountability. We need more accountability with our Pracharaks that come in to see, well, what is their vidya? Uh, what can they do? What, are, what other Gathas can they do? And, um, you know, the other thing is you should have a good enough um, set up at the Gurdwaras for the management committees to know that the Katha that's been good is, is at a decent enough level. There are many a times that you can go to a Gurdwara and the Katha has been done and the arts have been given completely wrong. Uh, I've been in that situation. I've been in that situation with Santari Singhji when they just tore someone apart basically because they had done the Katha and the arts were completely wrong just prior to them. And then they've gone to another one where somebody sat there and they're just reading from the stick, and that's again, it's not what you expect from a kathaka. You expect a kathaka to be elaborating upon what they're talking about, um, giving a testimony or opinion from a different grant, supporting their opinions, you know, within the katha itself. So I agree. I, I think there's a lot of repetitive katha going on, um, and I, I think, I think, you know, people like Gani Shir Singh, you've got it right where. Every now and then, you, you know, they'll do the katha, and then every now and then they'll hold a camp, like, or they'll hold a discord like they have on here, where people can ask the questions and talk about things. And I think Pracharaks need to do more of it. I, I see it with some Pedi Singhs especially. Um, they used to finish the katha, go back to their room, and all the Sangath would come into the room, and then you'd have a question and answer session. And people would ask all the questions they want, talk about whatever they want. And I think Prajaris needs to be more open for the Sangha as well. So, yes. So, the next question is Were other Granths, such as Dasam Granth and Sarbul Granth, also referred to as the Guru uh, the same way Siddhi Guru Granth Sahibji was? Or is it just the Nihangs who believe in all the three Granths being as the Guru? Well, like I said, um, even if you. Um... You have a look at the Nihang belief. The Nihang belief is always that the the Guru is the, is the three grants. There's there's no difference between it, and that's why they kept on the same plinth. Because end of day, it's come from the way in the mouth of the Guru. So if it's come from the mouth of the Guru, it's divine. That's how they see it. Um, do other sampradas believe that? Um, no, not really. Um, some of the other some of the other sampradas only believe in the Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib being the Guru. And the Dasam Granth and the Sarva, they do believe to be authored by Siddhi, Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh. However, they don't hold it to the same, you know, they, the Prakash has done the same, they, they still give it the same respect, whatever, but they consider the Guru to be the Guru that's uh, in, is in the Guru Granth Sahib. So, but it's only in the Hangs, and the Hangs are very, very distinct with the uh, Sharda of the three grants and the way they treat the grants and the preparation of the Amrit and everything in the presence of all three grants. It's um it's really different and it's really it's it's quite nice to see the different perspective. Whether you believe in one or not, it's 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 their perspective, it's how they see it. So on the topic of the Dasam Granth, uh one of the questions is what is the history of Prakash of Dasam Granth Sahib at Gurdwaras? Because nowadays it's mostly a Patna Sahib and Hazur Sahib. Well, we, we know that the Dasam Granth was Prakash uh, at the Akal prior to 1920. The original, the Dasam Granth from the 1920, which was um, thrown with a barcha from the Akal you know, it still exists today with the, with the tears in it from, from what happened. So Dasam Granth was Prakash there. What happened was you get a big change in, in thought in the 1920s. You get the Pasadian movement happening. You get, obviously, um, I forgot his name. I forgot the person's name who, who threw the Dasam Granth as well. But he throws the Dasam Granth from the Akal Takhat onto the Parkarama outside. And the whole thing changes. You get uh, people like 
Kartal Singh Kalasi Vala, obviously they were against the Dustin Grant and the Shorsing of the Rana. So the only individuals, that have, the only ducks that have kept the original Prakash are the Sri Patna Sahib and Hujur Sahib. Now, those people who hate Dustin Grant uh, or are opposed to it will turn around and say, it's Brahmanwad, and that's why Brahmanwad continues outside of Punjab, and they've kept it there. Uh, so that, that's the issue that you have. Um, the Prakash of Sri Dustin Grant it is... You know, I, I don't have anything against it. We had it here but in Leicester. We've had it in different places around the UK where we've had programs. I think it's really good. And, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's Sri Guru Gobind Singh's bark. It's their work. Um, and, you know, it's, <clears throat> you know, those people are going to oppose it, going to oppose it. Um, I think the, uh, the, the issue you have is I, we are getting a lot of um, Sadhguru issues when it comes to the grants, especially the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji in India, where somebody has gone and ripped a couple of angs or done something or you know um, done some bad to be. And the one thing I like about the Nantaris is that when they do Prakash of the Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, they are doing uh, the Bani. They are reading the Bani. They are doing what they need to. Uh, with the Khan parts or Sampad parts or whatever. As soon as all the parts are done, Sukhasan is done, of whichever Granth, whether it's the Siri Guru Granth Sahibji or the Dasan Granth. And I think that needs to be done a lot more, where we, if we really respect the Granths, uh, either Dasam or Sarbal or Siri Guru Granth Sahibji, we should not be just leaving the, the Siri Guru Granth Sahibji or, or the the grant itself in Prakash, on its own, nobody around it, so that we be can take place. So uh, you mentioned Sampradas being a part of a garden. Are there any Shabads which relate to this um, that you would offer for this analogy? Um, no, I think, <laughs> right, this is quite sad. This comes from my analogy when I talk... When anybody goes for a job interview, the one question you are definitely going to get asked is the inclusion of diversity. Diversity within the workplace, diversity within the community, diversity, and how it assists. So the two um, metaphors I use, are one is the garden, and the, the, the Khalsa Bant being a garden uh, full of different, um, different fragrances and everything. Or the other one you use is uh, if you go to a an event and you've got an orchestra an orchestra made up of one instrument sounds like noise put them all together you get a melody and that's what it is so they are not within Gurbani they are just my own I like I said I use them for a diversity question all the time and I always have done and I always use them for when we're talking about Sikhi and the inclusion of uh, all the Sampradas as well So the next question is What's the history of doing arti with a plate and candles like done by Nihang Singhs? Is it mentioned in historical texts? And uh, another one is, uh, where did uh, the Shera celebration uh, begin? Um, where mm, Bani's no from Dasam Granth are read, uh, originate from? Right. Um, the second question, where did the Shera celebrations begin? Um, I can't answer that because I don't know. Uh, I, so it's, I don't want to, like I said, say anything. I just know that we have obviously the the, the Shara Mahatam Grant. People like Jeevan Pal Singh who are in Leicester Day and uh, sorry, not Leicester, in Southall and uh, Star just in the Singh who run the Nahang Santir Day are the individuals who can clarify the um, that sort of question. They're really knowledgeable. They know those sorts of things. Um, but unfortunately, I can't answer that one. Um, the history of doing the arti on the plate. Um, the arti on the plate is con it's a constant thing that continues on within the Nirmala Samprada, the Udasi Samprada, Sutra Shahis, uh, Seva Panthis, Nihangs. It's the one thing that you will find in all four Sampradas. It continues. Um, it comes as part of the nine, nine different types of bhakti. One is Acharan bhakti which is to do your bells and uh, have your plates and do the arti and things like that. So that's where that comes from. 
So out of the nine types of Bugbee, it's one of them. Um, but I think so. Arjun Bugbee. Arjun Bugbee. It's something like that. I'll have a look uh, if I can. Um, but yes, it's one of the nine types of form. Nine forms of Bugbee that you do for the Saragun Sweep. So regarding the Sargon uh, Sarup, uh, is using idols to represent the Sargon form of Vaiguru a valid practice in some Sampradas of Sikhi? No, because the, the Sargon, you're looking at the, the Gurshavad form, right? You know, you, you, that's, what, that's what they're looking at. So the uh, Archana Bhagavad is down as worshipping. So that's what that is. So you're worshipping. So you're worshipping the Shabbat, you're worshipping everything. Uh, whether it's the good Shabbat or the good Grand Sarji or whatever, you're not looking at that, but it's the worship that's done. Um, in the same way as somebody would say, well, why, why do we do Chorsa? You know, because you get that question now, I don't know why, but it's the same thing. It's the worship of the Guru who said there, isn't it? And that, that's how they see it. So the next question is, were idols and statues placed at Darbar Sahib or like around its parkarma during the time of the gurus, as some people claim, or was it uh, just done afterwards? Uh, well, <clears throat> highly debated topic. Uh, only because it says that there were statues. You know, it's, it's been mentioned that there were statues placed around the bar side, um, but we know that the bar side was an open complex at the time. You used to look at the pictures; you can see the old pictures of school children sat there being educated around the. The Parkarma of the Bar so you can see all these sorts of things. So you you gotta remember up until a time when they actually created um the complex around the Bar so you had people living there. So what's to say that they weren't there, idols or things or whatever outside their house? I don't know. I, you know, it's not a question that I can you read about it in books and you think to yourself first thing I think to myself. How was it even possible to do that, to have idols in there? I don't understand when that could have been. The only time I think that could have been was during the times of the Saudis and the, and, and the Minas who were there. But again, there's no accounts to say that when buying money since you got there, that there were idols there. So I, I can't answer that. It's just a supposition. Unless somebody's got some written material to prove that, I don't, I, I don't know. So the next question is regarding uh, photos and pictures of the gurus. Um, are there any photos of the guru sahibs that were like authentic that actually depicted them? Um, and, well, not, uh, not, the, pho yeah. not photos, yeah. but portraits. Oh, so I guess. Yeah, yeah, paintings. Uh, yeah, and the yeah. person says that they heard that uh, the only guru that has a photo that's uh, authentically depicting them is the ninth guru sahib. Is this true? Uh, Nami Pasha had a portrait made of themselves where the individual who was creating the portrait was unable to draw the actual form of Sri Guru Tegh Bahadurji's face due to the illumination coming off their, their face at the time. So Sri Guru Tegh Bahadurji, using their own hand, did their own self-portrait. That portrait is now in the Kolkata Museum and can be found there. So the next uh, question is about a blog you published. So Amar Jyot Singh says, uh, he says, I found a blog that you published on Nanak Prakash. Uh, did you ever finish it or publish it? And he put the link in it. It's in the text, uh, sorry, the question box section. Um, the Nanak Prakash blog we did was, it was just a start. And so we were doing like a body a day. And then I realized, I thought, well, there's 113 of the eyes. Each body is about 90 a day. 90 times 130, I thought, I'm never going to finish this, I'll end up dying. So uh, we left it, and then basically from that, we now have, although I've not used that, we now have two books on the Nana Prakash Gata by Gyani Harpajan Singhji, and that two book, those two books only cover the Mongol uh, Gata because it's so in-depth. And then we have the first two books by Gyani Kirpal Singhji Boparaiwale as well, on the Sri Nana Prakash, and that only covers the first five of the eyes so far. Um, I am continuing on both of them. My plan is to get them finished as well. 
any any top any projects that I start, I am looking to finish them. So the only way I can give myself a kick up the backside is by starting it and doing a part of it because I know I have to complete it. So the Bunch Prakash I started, Japji Sal I started, you know, these are all going to be completed, but the blog is basically a basic version of the books. The books are more in-depth. So the next question is, uh, what are the philosophical differences between the non-dual Vedantic schools and Sikhi? So the non-dual, you mean Advait. Advait means the, the oneness. So there's a couple of them. You've got to remember this. There's not one school of thought. So if you look at Shankaracharya's uh, Advait form, uh, Advait uh, Vedant, what that states is that there is one Brahm and everything else is Maya. So that, that's what that's saying. So everything that is perceived, everything that we have is, uh, is Maya. So what we get is that. So then we get um, Ramanuj's type of uh, Adavad and he says that actually we have, we have Brahm and then everything else is an extension of Brahm but we perceive it to be Maya. So we get that. So we, there are a load of different um, types of uh, the Ved. And there's the Ved of Ed as well. And there's the Shish the Ved. So there's, there's a number of them. What I'd say is pick up the Gurbani Vedanta Nidne and that will explain what is close and what isn't. Because some of them are way too radical and don't even come close to Sikhi. Some of them have leanings towards Sikhi. And then some of them go totally opposite Sikhi as well. So just to clarify, the user who asked the question, the type of Vedanta they were talking about was uh, Advaita Vedanta. Hmm. Shu, I, I don't know how to pronounce these, Baji. Can you? Shuhadavita. <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce it. I don't know. Could you please read this for me? I don't know. Is it should? Is it should? Should or the better? Should yeah. the better? Vishesh the better. Vishesh the better. Um, I can go into them, but we'll be here for some time. Uh, the best thing I would say is pick up Gyanu Balwan Singh's book that we've we've spoken about. Uh, Gyanu Balwan Singh's book, Gurbani Vedanta Nidhi, has all of those in there, and it explains them within. You know, I think the Shuddha Vedanta one is done within 10 pages. The other one's done within six pages of the Shista Vedanta. You know, I, I'd suggest picking them up because you need to have a look at the terminology there. Um, you need to have a look at some of the Vijayar Saga that goes with it as well. Um, I know that's not an answer. I'd, I'd suggest rather than me going into Vedanta and everybody sitting there going, I don't understand that because you've not explained this. But explain this. The easiest thing to do would be to pick up that. Which one would you say is the closest to Sikhi out of those three that have been written? Um, I'd go for... <laughs> Advaita is always going to be the clo closest. Um, because w what we're looking at is is that, you know, Advaita is what Sikhi is. Sikhi is independent from, you know, from the Vids. It is Advaita. The only thing is, it depends on what you are looking at. When you look at Vedanta, you're looking at a specific school of thought, while Sikhi has different situations it places you in. So Gurbani says, Jagarachana Sabachuta. But at the same time, Gurbani says, E Jag Sachiki Kotri. So you're saying one is saying it's false, one is saying true. So which one's talking about the essential form, which is talking about the, uh, the temporal form? And that's what you have to look at because. Uh, what uh, what uh, Advaita is saying that everything is temporal. And what the other one is saying is that uh, Vishisht says that obviously every now and then what you're seeing, what you're perceiving is true. It depends on the context. And what I'd say is when you're doing Gurbani the Earth, you will every now and then go, this is talking about this type of Vedanta. This is talking about this type of Vedanta. Have I confused you? Have I confused everybody? A little bit. If you yeah, want, Baji, so. you can go more in-depth into the Vedanta thing. 
Like, um, for example, like, yeah, they're both about, like, non-dual, but uh, one criticism of uh, Advaita Vedanta I've heard is that, you know how they say, aham brahmasmi, like, I am Brahma? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. like, in Gurbani, we say, like, sab govindha, or, like, we, we place it on, like, being, like, the dust of the feet of Vaiguru, or, like... Exactly. Like, so it's more, one's more humble, the other one's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm that's what, Brahma, or something, I don't know. And that's what I said, too, that's what I said earlier. When it comes to learning about Vedanta, the big difference you have with Vedanta is the person can just sit there reading, reading, reading. And they say that because if you look at Nishchandas, what he says within the Vichar Saga is, Ahana Brahmasmi, Ahana Brahm Akre. You know, he says all those things that I am God, I am this, I am that. Because that's what the, the form of me is. This is what I am. This is a true source of what I am. But Gurbani says, you know, Madhasa Kadasa. You know. Ham Garib Maskeen Prabhupada, you know, Maharaj says that themselves, Guru Ram Das, you say, Ham Garib Maskeen Prabhupada, and you're just like, are you really? You are, you are the divine source here. But they never in any place rule themselves out to be, um, you know, they never consider themselves to be the, um, the, the greatest of greats because it's all just humility. So they go to Gobind Singh Ji, when they are talking to Kalapur, they say, Akit, Akit Abhat, you know, they say that I am the tiny insect talking now. You know, they never consider themselves to be divine. You know, there are those, you know, those lines in Gurbani, like I said, Mantu Jyotsuru Pahapra Mokshan, those lines are there. But again, you are to remain within humility. Um, you know, and Sri Guru Gobind Singh writes, Har Har Jandu Ekha Dirdu Chag Chanai, Jal Teo Pujitarangji, Jal Ibi So those, those are all there, giving you the divine were, you know, lines which match up with the Vajar Saga, which match up with other Vedanta texts. Um, but Gurbani is there. You need to have a Guru. With Vedanta, you don't need a Guru. You can just read all this. Become full of yourself and uh, burn in your own ego and pride. Gurbani doesn't allow you to do that. This is why with the old sadhus, they will teach you stuff and then go, right, for the, for the whole day, it's your turn to go and get the water from the wells. It's your day to go and do this. It's your day to do that. They keep you humble all the time. What is the sixth stance on free will and the seeming quote unquote contradictions in Gurbani regarding free will? Like, for example, on one hand, it says uh, everything is hukum, you know, like hukum and the subko, bar hukum na koi. Yep. And then on the other hand, it says um, uh, you reap what you sow. What is that line called in Japji Sahib? It's. Um, uh, my brain is fried right now, Paisa. I don't know how you do it, man. You're literally like, you're like a <laughs> god, metaphorical. No, well, <laughs> no metaphorical. <laughs> I wish that was the case, um, but uh, I don't know. I, I just, it's something. I, I think it comes to somebody if you uh, if you enjoy it, and uh, you know this sort of thing. I'm, I'm quite happy to do. Um, you know, Gurbani says, So what you have is. Uh, everything is within hukum. So you will be within this world, you'll be within this life, you can't get out of this life, you've got to do whatever. Your karam that you have, your parashchita, sanchita, uh, paralab, you know, uh, sorry, your kiriman, sanchita, uh, paralab, so they all come together uh, and cause your birth. And come, you, you come to whatever birth you're given based on your karmic future and karmik past. You know, ape bija ape hikau, nanakum so you get that one. Uh, you know, within it says um, it says that within the Masnavi as well that what you reap is what you sow, uh, and that's what you get. You get some near this, some near this as well. That that comes according to karma as well. So you have a sense of free will. Everything is written as in what you will reap, what you will sow, but you have a right to go right. I've just hooked up with this individual. I've gone home with this individual and I'm about to do something which I know is a budget for them. You have that free will to know what you're doing because you can't just turn around and go, I commit that budget because it was written by God. That's not how it works. So you have a certain amount of free will and God gives you that free will because you are not a puzzle. So God gives that ability within your mind to make that decision. Yes, those positions are created during karma, but then it's for you to pick up. So you can either go, I can do this or I can do that. So we have a certain amount of time. But not everything that we do, every second that we, we do something is, is um, 
it is all written, it is all done, but we still have the mental ability to have some free will. So you can turn around tomorrow and go, um, I'm not going to wake up in the morning. I'm not going to do my nothing. I'm not going to do these things. Why should I? It's already written. And then when you go in front of Maharaj, then the question is going to be asked, well, you didn't do that. So, And you can't just turn around and go, well, it was already ordained and foretold that this is going to happen. You know, it, it just doesn't happen. You know, I've, I've been through that situation where I'm sitting there thinking, well, everything's all written, so it doesn't really matter. Or if it doesn't really matter, then why do I do these things? Why, you know, why would I get judged on something that I, I don't perform? I know that's not really an answer to the question, but it's, it's just a view on how that works. And uh, I don't think you have complete... And basically, you can't go, when it says, Hukumi and the subcore bar, we live within an expanse which is um, within will. So when we are here on this earth, we are within the will of time, we are within the will of death, we are within the will of life, we are within those things. So when people say that, they're like, look, everything's in Hukum, whatever's going to happen is in Hukum. No, but when it talks about that, it talks about those things which, um, you know, Sri Gurdjieff, as he says, Chinta, Taki, Ki, Jejo, and Ahoni, Ahoni, those things that are going to happen are going to happen. That's the Hukum of the world. And that's, that's where I think some people get too engrossed and they start thinking, actually, the Hukum of everything. What, what what I was just saying is, everything is within the Hukum of how creation exists, how everything exists, how everything is happening. Does that make some sense? Hanji. <laughs> so um, the next question is, what are your thoughts on excommunicated six, such as uh, Kala of Ghana and Professor Darshan Singh? They're, they're excommunicated. You know, they're excommunicated for a reason. I think if you're excommunicated here, you'll be excommunicated there as well afterwards. In the same way, when um, you know you, you you get those things about people who are excommunicated and and never come back in the month, I just think it's arrogance. You know, if you if you've made a fault, you've committed a fault, um, and they can come back into the month like we've seen with Baba Santa Singh and people like that. But yeah, they're excommunicated. So what you will have uh, to deal with here, you'll have to deal with in, in the next world as well. You, for me, it's the um, it's the story of the Charlie Sings with the Badava, where they give the Badava to Sri Guru Gobind Singh, and the the Saki comes back by, by Maha Singh saying they can't they can't open the doors of the Badavas on the doors. If the Bant, you know forsakes them here, they'll be forsaken after this as well. That's a personal view. I know yeah, I've got nothing to back that up, but that's what I just look at that Badava that was given to Sri Guru Gobind Singh. So the next question is, what are your thoughts on 3HO and the Yogi Bhajan sect? Like, would you consider them like an official Samparda or like, what are your thoughts on them? <clears throat> no, they, they, you know, like I said, there's loads of Sampardas that exist now. You know, to, to turn around and go, well, they, I can't keep things up, I don't exist, or they don't, they all, they all exist, they've all got their own separate um, existence now, and they are, they are what they are. Um, my personal view, I don't have a personal view with them. They're not, um, I've got a couple of really nice friends who are here. They teach yoga. They do some amazing things. Uh, you know, Jalapri God, she's in Leicester. She's really, really good, really nice. Some of the kindest souls ever. Um, but with regards to their institution and what they do, I don't really know. Um, I've got nothing against them, nothing personal. And at the same time, I've got nothing to say that they're really great neither because my exposure to them has been very limited so the next question is from a user who asks where can I buy the book Vedant Nirnay uh, the person saying they're having a hard time finding it online um, whoever it is can you ask them to if they can just contact me on uh, Instagram I will send them a link and they can buy it directly from Jawahar Singh, Kurpal Singh. Um, I've got a direct link, so they'll be able to just order it with PayPal. It, it arrives within a week at airmail. Uh, so that's not a problem. I can sort that out. So the next question is, 
why were the Muslim Rababis and Kirtanis uh, not allowed to do Kirtan in Darbar Sahib anymore? And uh, what are the historical e- accounts of Sikh women doing Kirtan at Darbar Sahib? Oh, controversial. Um, basically, the uh, anybody who isn't a Sikh became uh, disavowed from doing Kirtan at Darbar Sahib. Prior to that, you hear, you know, the Katha of Gyanisans and Jimuskin, and he says that while he was alive, there were uh, Muslim Rababis doing Kirtan at Darbar Sahib and places like that. Uh, when he was young, but obviously it was all stopped uh, by the SGPC and they made it that unless you are an Amatari Sikh, uh, you won't be allowed to perform there. So it's it's a decision that's come very recently. I remember seeing uh, Bai Lal Chan, uh, who was obviously a descendant of Bai Mardan Laji, and I remember him saying, you know, all his desire was to just perform Kirtan one last time at the Rabar Sahib, and it was denied um, prior to his death which is a bit sad. Um, I think it comes down to the the same ethical code that Sikhs put on any Pujarik now where they want to just make sure that they're not engrossed in inhabitants, they're, they're not eating halal meat, they're not doing these sorts of things that people frown upon. Um, for that, they're, they're no longer there. With um, women uh, performing keep the, the bar side, again, that's a bit of a controversial one. Uh, I don't know if there has been an instance of women actually performing Kirtan in the world. So somebody will correct me, which is fine, because I need to know that sort of information if that's there. But I don't think that's there. There's been a couple of pictures which have been on the internet of going, these are women performing Kirtan in the world. So they're not. It's actually Kirtan at Darren Darren's side. Uh, but I don't think that has been the case, that there have been there. It's in the same way that when they do the, you know, the washing of the... Uh, the inside of the bar side in the early mornings. It's only men that do it. Uh, personal views. Um, it's something that the SGPC needs to sort out and give a clarification of why that is. So, uh, in the next question is uh, in accordance to the question about the women doing Keaton. Why uh, are they not allowed to do Keaton at their bar side now? Uh, like, for example, I think there was even an interview where I think Tuma or someone was saying, oh, this is uh, not having women do Keaton was the Mariada that was uh, in place since by Mani Singh Ji's time or something. Yeah, yeah, it was. All right, and the, the simple simple question, the simple, simple argument given by the Sampradas for why women are not um, allowed to perform Keaton at their bar side is because men are pervy creatures. They will see some attractive women on the TV or at their bar side and be more focused on um, uh, the feminine form than the keep them going on. Now, I've heard the counter-argument of women saying, well, why can't that happen the opposite way? But that is, that is the, the argument that they normally give. Um, and that is it. They don't give anything more than that. They say this is a place, this is why Gotha cannot go on here. You know, this is supposed to be a place where the focus is supposed to be on the Shabbat only and nothing else. Well, obviously, yeah, there and mostly people trying to take selfies of themselves. That's what it seems to be at the moment. Uh, but yeah, they don't, they don't allow women to keep them. That's the excuse that they use. Wait, so correct me if I'm wrong. Historically speaking, I'm pretty sure I read in... Uh... Prachin or Naveen Pant Prakash that Jassa Singh Aluwalia's mother was doing Keetan at Darbar Sahib, right? And I think there was also British accounts of Sikh women doing Keetan during Maharaja and Rajit Singh's era. Is that, is that true? I don't know. I, I've not gone through Prachin myself. If it's written in there, it will be. You know, and, and that's as simple as that. If there's accounts within the text to say that women have them there, then there is no excuse to stop it. Um, and it's going to be very easy to have that overturned because if, if that is the case, it's there. Yeah. So no, that's, that's a really good one. I'll have a look at that. And also, even recently, there's a video on YouTube of a 3HO, like a, a white Sikh convert, doing Keaton at Darbar Sahib. And this is recent in our lifetime. So if they're no, going to use the whole... Yeah, are you sure? Because that that's Darren Darren Yeah. Are you sure that's not Darren Darren Sahib? Because that's what I've seen. Uh, I heard I it thought, was we Darbar thought it was Darbar Sahib. Sahib. If you look at Darbar Sahib, 
And yeah. If you look at, and if you look at the way the bar side is inside where the kitani sit and where the door is at the back, um, Tarantaran is a bit different. And uh, if you look at that picture, you'll see it's Tarantaran, not the bar side. Because I thought it was exactly the same. I thought it was the bar side until somebody showed me the layout of it. And wasn't there also like a story where like this one uh, BB wanted to do Kirtan and then this one Nihang was like, okay, you do Kirtan, I'm going to protect you, make sure no one stops you or something? Or is that just like a myth that people make up? I don't know. I've, I've never heard it before. It, the, 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 pros, the problem is there's, there's so many stories. There's a possibility it could be true. There's a possibility it's just one of those Sikh urban legends that <laughs> happen. I don't know. I don't know to be quite honest. So the next question is, um, what do the questions we ask tell us about ourselves? And what do they tell the person with knowledge whom we're asking the questions to? Uh, if you say well, that you write a list of questions to ask a Mahapurak, then is this a continual practice? And do you have specific questions for specific Mahapuraks? For example, a list of questions for Sant Hari Singh Ji and a separate one for uh, Sant uh, Jagjit Singh Ji? No, well, I have a list of questions. And whichever Mahapurak turns up first or Gyanji Vidwan turns up first, they get asked that question. Yeah, that's it. as simple as that. So I don't hold questions for specific Mahapurks, you know. Um, with regards to what does it tell a person, it tells a person where you are in your spiritual stage. I remember asking what I would now consider to be quite embarrassing questions initially, which you think to yourself, why did I ask those? Because they're really, really easy, really specific. I should have known those. But then you get to a point, and I remember asking certain questions, and I remember uh, Thurdy Singh just looking at me going, ah, so that's where you are now. So that's where you are. You've hit that stage, have you? And he's just like, well, what does that mean? Um, you know, what, what are you trying to say? And he's just like, you know, from that question, you're now asking about this. You're now asking about this state. You're now asking about that. Um, so that's where you grow up to in your reading. That's where you grow up to in your, your section of knowledge, you know, and things like that. So it tells the seeker where you are. It tells, it tells sorry, it advises the person who's being asked the questions where the seeker is in their spiritual state or their quest or are they going completely offline so the next question is if the atma and paramatma are one then what feels pain after death for example uh, the jamjuts uh, beating or narak uh, so um, what feels pain after death if not the atma it's the sukham sarir so the Sukham Sri is made of the Panjagyan India, Panjakaram India, Manabud. Um, it's also made of the Panjaparan as well. That is what gives with you and that's what feels the pain. Because the Atma doesn't feel any pain at all. So it's always the Sukham Sri that goes with you because there's going to be a form. You have to have a Sukham form that is it within uh, the, the Jamdu to rip out and take with them. Because uh, obviously that intellect and the Chitra Gupta have got to be there to, to give that account. So yeah, it's not the Atma that goes. The Atma is the Karan Sri. So you have the Karan Sri, Sukham Sri, and the Astul Sri. So what gets ripped out of the uh, the Astul Sri is the Sukham Sri. The Sukham Sri is what gets judged. The Karan Sri is the Atma. So that's what happens. It's the Sukham Sri that goes. That's what gets ripped out. So a side question. If everything is Vaiguru, then is the Shukham, Sukham Sri... Also, that or is that just not existing because that's duality? Is that the error or? No, oh, su sukham sri becomes duality because the sukham sri is not the causal form. The sukham is the intrinsic form, which still has the Puran with it, which still has the indriya with it, which still has the, those things with it, panjagyan indriya with it as well. On top of that, it has the man and the buddha with it. So, so it's, it's like Descartes. Descartes says, "I think, therefore I am." Basically, you still are that duality until that point. The current sri is getting rid of that. You know, there's a really good prasang in the Nanak Prakash when Rai Balad is passing away and he thinks to himself that he wants Guru Nanak Devji there. When Guru Nanak Devji goes to him, then they explain to him that he's going to pass away, that he needs to realise his true self. If anybody wants to read something, it's one of the best passages available because he explains, you know, Rai Balad says, yeah, but I'm this body, I'm okay. 
you know, so I'm going to go and he's like, no, you're not this. And he's like, okay, I'm the mind. He's like, no, you're not. He's like, I'm the Buddha. I'm not. Okay, I'm the the bunch gosh. I'm this. I'm that. And he's like, no, I'm not. I'm not. And it's where Sandhu Guru Vishnu sings. He says, ye ne, ye ne, ye ne. This de pare sattah so. So you've got all those things to go through. So Sukham is not Garden Sarir. The Garden Sarir is a uh, within Barney says Brahm Pati Bishandari Pool Shankar Dev. So you know that is talking about a tree and it says that says that the causal form, which is the seed, is exactly what you find within the fruit. And it says the saints, the sadhus are the fruit. The set the Brahm is the seed at the start. Um, and the saints are exactly the same as the Brahm form. In, in fact, the only difference is that they have the body around them of the apple. Otherwise, the seed is exactly the same. And they say, Brahm Pati Bishandari Pool Shankar Dev. So they say, you know, that, you know, Brahma is the, the trunk, the, the stems and the, the tree, um, the twigs and everything are Vishnu and the pool, the, the, um, the flowers are uh, Vishnu. You know, so that, that's what it says. That's Gurbani. That's what Gurbani says. So that's where it talks about the Atma and Paramatma and the Garden Sri and the Sukham Sri. Um, so, yeah, so the Sukham is not Garden. The causal is, like I said, it's the seed in that. And the, what we talk about is basically when a person dies, what you're doing is you're ripping the apple off. The apple is still, you take off the, the, uh, the outer sheath, which is the body. You've still got the pulp, you've still got everything, but the garden is still in there. So that's what's being judged. So the next question is, is the text Sikhandi Pagatamala, um, which is said to be written by Pai Mani Singhji, uh, is that uh, authentic? Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's said to be authentic. It's believed to be authentic, uh, Sikhandi Pagatamala, which goes into the um, the 11th, oh, sorry, it doesn't go into the 11th, but it goes into obviously all the individuals that Pai, Pai, uh, Pai Gurdasji mentions that... Uh, were associated with uh, the gurus. So yes, it is supposed to be um, authentic. You can find a copy of that written by the Lord Chan Singh at the moment um, through the universities, and that's quite easy to publish and buy. But yes, it is supposed to be authentic. There's supposed to be a number of grants that are linked to Pai Mani Singh. Is there One an English them. version of that? Uh, yes, there is. On the Sikhi book, Sikhi book Club, there is an English version of it. I can't remember what it is, but Harjinder Singh Nick uh, from Birmingham co copied me into a link for it. So yes, there is a complete translation of that. Uh, and it's available, like I said, as a PDF. Next question is, is the term Jatha, uh, like is the meaning of the term Jatha the same as the word uh, Samparda? Or like, can they be used interchangeably or do they mean the same thing? Um, I think Samparda is more of a school of thought or a school and Jatha is just a, a gathering. Um, it's basically like saying a school and a class. That, that's how I see it. So where you get the, you know, Dam Dami Taksar, Jatha Randawa, Dam Dami Taksar, Jatha Sangrawa, Dam Dami Taksar, Jatha Rajpur, you know. So they're all, they're all considered to be parts of the Taksar. However, uh, they've got their own little little bits. So speaking of the Thaksal, <clears throat> one of the questions was, could you give like a recap of um, the Dhamdhami Thaksal? Like, was it originated from Baba Deep Singh Ji or uh, from the Nirmala orders? And is the debate around its origination uh, a ploy by the Indian government to take it down? Um, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I don't think it is a ploy because it doesn't change anything. If you turn around tomorrow and say that the the, the Sampradha is a Nirmala Sampradha or it's a Seva Panthi Sampradha or it's a Nihang Sampradha, what does it take away? It doesn't take anything away from it. You can still stem that lineage all the way back to either Pai Mani Singh or Pai uh, Baba Deep Singh. So it doesn't take anything away. It's just saying that actually there is no separate Sampradha. We believe this to be an origination from the Nirmala order or we believe this you know, some people say we believe this to originate within the Nahang order because it starts with Baba Deep Singh Ji, goes to Baba Gurbak Singh Ji, and then from there it follows all the way down. Uh, you know, and then it changes order, and that's it. So it doesn't take anything away. It wouldn't take anything away. If tomorrow you turn around and go, Sanjana Singh Ji, you're from a Nirmala lineage, 
what does it matter? You know, say whatever. The missionaries are shit hot on this, and they talk about this all the time because they always say that the Duxal is a Nirmala Sampurga because they, they, they've latched onto this for that reason. But what does it take away? It doesn't, it doesn't add any credit for the Nirmalas, because what does it add? It doesn't take anything away from the Nirmalas. And for the, for the Duxal, it doesn't add or take anything away neither. What, you, what would take something away from it is if you had a broken link in those arts at one stage. That would take away from it. But what you can see is there's a crossover of people, uh, and it's unbroken. And then you can say, yes, the arts have been handed down from the times of Sri Guru Gobind Singh all the way through this Padnali. Um, that's what I would think would be dangerous. And that's why, you know, in the same manner, the Namtaris realized for themselves it was dangerous not having a good Padnali properly. So that's where you get the thing with Baba Ajapal Singh come up. So I, I don't think it takes anything away at all. I don't think it discredits Duxal in any way. Um, so, and there's no one who's got better vidya than Sadhguru Gurbhacha Singh Ji's kata. I, I, I'd say that day after day, without a doubt. There isn't anything out there that's better than that. So the next question is a follow-up to oh. the question regarding excommunication. So the question yeah. is, weren't Sikh institutions once controlled by corrupt Mahants, uh, like when General Odair was given uh, a Saropa for his actions. Uh, so then, how can we generally conclude that being excommunicated by those who currently control it will result in the same after as well? Um, yeah, we've had, we've had corrupt individuals. You look at uh, Mahant uh, Narendas, like we said, Nangana uh, Sahib. So he has been there. But, you know, quite, quite easily, when you challenge the authority of the Guru and uh, your answers such as Professor Darshan Singh or people like that, they're not willing to have that debate, not willing to have that talk. They'll make excuses all the time. Um, and this is the same individual who's got out of Dwayar Prasad Sarai and Jalpe. I actually have. And all of a sudden he says, I didn't know that they were written by the Siddhi Guru Gobind by Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh all these years later. So it isn't to do that. Sikh institutions, like I said, we have that in issue, like we said earlier about the SGPC, that the fact that they're more focused on political people coming at the moment rather than the Prachar and keeping the Prachar going and not watching the, um, the conversion by individuals to Christianity. Um, it is an issue. It is an issue. And it should be considered as a, a level of corruption. But, um, you know, it's not a case of somebody being excommunicated for no reason. So I could understand if somebody said, I've been excommunicated and I've got all the proof I need to talk about this, but you're not giving me that. That isn't the case. Uh, you want to hear Professor Darshan seems talks on the Dasam ground. You can hear him all the time because he's still talking about it, still passing about it. So the next question is, what is the maryada for Jora Kashera and why was it stopped uh, for Singh Sab, uh, for Singh Singh Sahib Zindar Barsad? I've got no idea. Um, because I think Singh Sahib Gyanyi Ram Singh Ji continued to wear his uh, Jora uh, Kashera and obviously they didn't change Ed the Star to a Nork the Star as well. Um, I don't know, to be quite honest. So the next one is, um, do you know anything about the court case where it was acknowledged that old Sikh references were returned to SGPC, but SGPC kept it hidden or gave it away? No, I'm, I'm, I don't fully know about it. I, I remember uh, Dr. Anurag Singh putting a load of stuff up on Facebook with regards to it, with regards to uh, media reports, with regards to other information that he had, and he was questioning what was going on, but I did not follow that up myself. Uh, but yes, if you look at Dr. Anurag Singh's page on Facebook, there should be some information on there about it. 
So the next one is in regards to the ban on women doing kirtan. So the question is, uh, wouldn't uh, saying that men might be attracted to women or something like that be similar to the justification given for veiling women, which itself is discouraged in Sikhi? Well, no, we're not looking at veiling women. I'm just saying that is the excuse that they give. I'm not here to justify that, and I don't agree with that. Because if that's the case, the Chanaka Niti says that the lust that women have is greater than men have. That's what it says in Chanaka Niti. So you're trying to tell me that if that's the case, that some women might not lust after the Kirtanis that are performing the Vasa? I don't know. It's just a supposition. Like I said, it's, it's an excuse that is given. And it's a reason that is provided by individuals who are in, uh, in control or have a, an influence on what is being um, done at the Vasa. So, no, you know, with regards to veiling, we, we know that veiling is not allowed. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just their justifications. The next question is, is Gyan in all its forms ultimately useful? Well, Gyan is you, completely, you, you know, you need to use Gyan. Gyan and Jangudya, uh, Gyan, Gyan and Dira and Banasa. You know, it says that without knowledge, you're unable to eradicate the veil of um, illusion. You know, Maya is something that every individual is inflicted with. A via, Maya has three Shakti, and one is a Varan, the other one is a Vakir, one is Mal. And it's only through Gyan that you are able to get rid of them. The Vichar Saga talks about Gyan as being essential. If we look at all the Pagats, you know, um, this isn't from me, but I'm you know, paraphrasing what I've read in the Vivek Pardipka by Peter uh, Singh Nirmal. And he states in there that out of all the Pagats, there's only two that had got there by devotion, the others had got there by knowledge. They'd gain knowledge, obtain knowledge from teachers, you know. But you look at um, the two individuals, which is Mila, who's who doesn't feature within the Sri Guru Granth Sahib, she features within the Pai one of you. And then you got Bhagat Naji. Those are the only two that do it by devotion and bhakti. Gyan is essential in order to um, to move yourself both spiritually and in this world as well. You need a, an element of knowledge in order to to uh, compete in this world. Wait, just quick add on to that. Would you say that that's um that's the one of the differencing differences between Advaita Vedanta and Sikhi? Because Advaita Vedanta, I think they say uh, Janam e Moksha or something like Shankaracharya says that you, without knowledge, there's no Moksha. But in Sikhi, yeah. there's examples. But in Sikhi of, doesn't say. Yeah. In the, Sikhi, in Sikhi, but, there are examples, and we've got many a times with the six, many a times with with books. The difference is. By Gurdas, he goes through the six forms of the six Shastras. And this is essential. This is why Vedanta is, has one difference in Sikhi massively. It states in there, and uh, by Gurdas, he give, does a condon of all six Granths, including the Vedanta Shastra. Within the Vedanta Shastra, he states that uh, Bias uh, created the Vedanta Shastra, but still his mind would not rest. It could not come to a rest, and he, he was quite angered. And it's only through Narada Muni arriving and performing Kirtan Bhakti that was able to soothe his mind. So within Gurbani, Bhakti is essential. Guru Har Gobindji within the Gurpratap Suj Prakash has a number of Sikhs that turn up. One of the Sikhs turns up and says, Do I need Gyan or do I need Bhakti? And Guru Har Gobindji addresses that question very, very, uh, through metaphorically. He says, Simple as this. He goes, if you have too much sugar, you have a problem, which we know as diabetes. He goes, if you have too much uh, cure, then you get cholesterol problems and you, you get a problem with your body as well. He goes, if you have both in equal measure, then that's good for your body. It helps you, provides you strength, provides you support. He goes, if you do bhakti on its own, you have no gyan. If you do gyan on its own, you become hankari. He goes, what you need is both. And that's why the Miripiri aspect, the Seva Simran aspect, all those things go toe to toe and hand in hand in Sikhi. So, yeah, God Pratap Suj Prakash, Chema Pasha, they explain that. So, the next question is uh, you know, how in Buddhism there's a map of meditative progress given by the six uh, jhanas? 
so can one roughly track where they are in their own spiritual journey? And uh, are there any meditative maps given in Gurbani? Gurbani mentions the six of the Shastras, uh, sorry, not Shastras, the Chakras. Sonia Jog Jogatat and Pehad. It says within Gurbani that through listening to the name of God, a person gains the ability to understand the uh, knowledge provided in order to open the Chakras. Sonia Jog Jogatat and Pehad. And the Gani Gurbachan Singh explained. And then they explained what you see at each level, what Chakras you see, what you see internally. Now, this is considered as Hatha Jog. Heart of Jog is, you know, through through difficult practices, you can see all these things. Through Sad Jog, through Simran and Gyan, you can open those things quite quickly anyway, without having to apply pressure to Kundalini. So internally, I'm guessing you can see things. Not just through that. It depends on what you see during your darshan. There are four types of darshan. One is Chitta darshan, one is Supan Pratak darshan. You know, so you see different things, you know, whether... You know, when somebody gets a glimpse of something that they shouldn't do, you know, or you get a glimpse of an individual, but you think it's a glimpse, but you're actually talking to me, you have a conversation, and you say the wrong thing, or you don't ask them the question when the opportunity arises. You know, these sorts of things occur within your life. You know, the, the, the problem is making sure you grasp that opportunity. Um, I know enough people that have missed an opportunity, said the wrong thing, or had darshan of somebody when they were there and they've said the wrong thing and not had it again. So you, you'll know your spiritual map according to Gurbani. Gurbani talks about the chakras, talks about the different types of darshan, talks about all sorts of things that appear. Um, um, again, within the Guru Pratap, that's covered within Guru Gobind Singh's life as well. So the next question is, uh, it's regarding Janakya Rajniti. So um, what is Janakya Rajniti? How is it viewed in six schools of thoughts? And what's the best English translation of it that you recommend? Uh, my translation is the best. Uh, that's just me self-promoting. <laughs> um, the, the problem is, what are you? there's, there's a number of Janakya Rajniti. There's four Niti Shastras that you can pick up. One is the Janakya Niti. One is the Vidar Niti, which is also known as Yudhisthya Niti. One is the Shukar Niti. One is the Patri Niti Shastra. So those are the four main Niti Shastras which all involve politics, how to deal with day-to-day -day situations, how to live your life, and what to do. So that's what the, the Granth covers. Now, Siddhi Guru Gobind Singh Ji had a Kavi Sainapat within his Kavi Darbar to translate the uh, Chanaka Niti in accordance to um, how to live as a Sikh and how you should live within different countries, under different rules, and different families, and uh, all sorts of things. So, Chanaka Niti is there. Um, now, there are a number of Chanaka Niti translations you can find out there. Um, there's loads, there's absolutely loads. I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but at the moment, the only translation that exists of Kavi Senapat's uh, Chanaka Niti is the one that I've done. And that is translated from Mahant Suji Singh's Dika uh, of Jarakaniti. Now, I have now got obviously Santori Singh's Jarakaniti, and it's even better than the one that I had previously. So the next task is to be able to get that translated and completed properly. So that's the next task. Well, at the moment, the only one available of Jarakar, of Kavi Senapati, which was done under the court of Guru Gobind Singh, is done by myself. Uh, and it's on the site, so if you want to have a look, you can have a look. It is in total um, about 125, 26 pages. It's not that big. Um, so yeah. Wait, so a quick question regarding the Janakya uh, Niti one. So the one that you sell uh, is from Guru Gobind Singh Ji's uh, court poet Senapati. So is that like yeah. the, the sick version of it? Because, for example, a yeah. Singh was uh, telling me about Chanakya Rajanthi and he's talking about like the, for example, the seven bad qualities of women or something. And one of them, it's like impurity. And he's saying, oh, we don't follow that version because that's like the Hindu, uh, yeah. that like, because it's like a Hindu text, but Sikhs are reading it. But you have to have like a Vidya Guru to tell you what's the Hindu part to ignore and what's the Guru part. So how do you know when yeah, you're reading the translation, which one is which? Basically, um, the ones that you'll pick up, every one that you'll pick up 
that is not Kobe Sanopots is uh, Jarnacus, which is written obviously 2,500 years ago nearly. Um, it was written during the time of the uh, Moria um, uh, dynasties with Ashoka. So he writes everything according to his tradition and time there. The one that Guru Gobind Singh has narrated by Kavi Sanapati is edited. So there are still some things that you look in there and go, is that right? You know? But, um, but yeah, it's a, a lot less of a lot of stuff misogynistic than, it, than the original text. So is it safe to say that if we get the translation that you have, the current one, before you come up with your new one, um, so would you need like a Vidya Guru to go through that or with you in English? No, or no, can you no, just no. read it? Or will no, you become these, like these, a misogynist these... if you read it? <laughs> no, no, no. no you become a, you know, that's going to happen anyway with some of these Sampardas. But, um, no, this is Mahansurji Singhji Seva Panthi who had, took that Amrit under Santagani Gurbachan Singhji and then became the head of the Satogali Sampardai at Ravari under Sant Kirpal Singh Satogali Ravari. He is the one that does this translation. Uh, it's actually his Astad, uh, sorry, his Vidyarthi Harbansin Nirmal that writes it up, but obviously writes it under the name of Mansur Ji Singhji because obviously he learnt the arts under him. So it is Sampardai, according to the Sivapanthis, but the one that Sant Hari Singhji have done has got more in it. There's one that's been created by Sanji Ji Singhji Harkawale. There's a lot of faults in that one. Um, so I wouldn't suggest picking that one up. Even in the text, there's a lot of issues. But with this one, there's um, you know, the one done by Santo Ji Singhji. Is, it's got more parmans and it's got more things explained in it. Um, so yeah, it's definitely one on my list to do. You know, One of the things that's in there is talking about um, the upper this, you know, the having a conversation with your life partner and making decisions and things like that and there's more things added to it there's footnotes added to it there's more you know it's just from the Guru Pratap to uh, support it as well um, so yeah this is a lot a lot better um, but I just need some time to get it done next question is what is the relation of yoga in Sikhi, such as moving energy from the belly button to the Dasam Dwar? Well, like I said, that is what is called uh, Pranayam, and that comes, you have eight limbs to do with, uh, sorry, eight limbs to do with yoga. And out of those eight limbs, one of, that, one of them is the breathing techniques that you use through Pranayam. It's called Hatha Yoga. Um, Hatha Yoga, basically, uh, people use it, especially the yogis and things like that, to heat their nabi. What they're trying to do is, by forcing the breath down and heating certain areas, they're trying to melt away the charbi, the, the fatter and the, the pajangam nadi, which is mentioned within Guru Bhani. And then through the pajangam nadi, enter the kundalini and go through the chakras that way. It's what uh, Guru Bhani talked about as being hot to jaw, not to waste your time on, but it is still there. Um, the relationship between Sikhi and yoga. Um, yoga is done as a uh, more of a, a fitness thing today. It's it's one of the one of the six schools of thoughts, obviously, and it's a perception of what God is and how to reach God. On my book of the Vicharamala, I have a, a picture on the front. Um, actually, I won't go into that. Um, but basically, but uh, out of the six shastras, yoga is one of the shastras. Its relationship to Sikhi is, um, it's not, it's not as linked as you think it is. You know, I know the 3HO do a lot of yoga and a lot of things like that, but really it's not as important. The only reason I say that is because I don't see the, the Nahangs doing it. I don't see the Sivapanthas doing it. I don't see the Odassis doing it. The only people that support it, uh, sorry, the only people that do support it are the Odassis every now and then, like you said. But that's only because they, that's what they used to do. Next. Oh, sorry, quick question. Uh, you said uh, Vichar Mala. Uh, do you have an English translation of that uh, that you saw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's done, yeah. My okay. other Vedanta books, I've done oh, okay. the first chapter of uh, Pandit Gilab Singh's Purbhoj on the Nautic. I've done the Vichar Mala. I've done the Chanaka Niti. I've done the um, Sarkatavli. So those Vedanta ones are done. And then the Vichar Chandarodaya is in two parts. That's done as well. 
Uh, so Vijar Chandra there is basically a question and answer session about the Vijar saga. Uh, so that's done as well. So i just got to work on Vidal Shatak, the Adam Prakash, and then I've got all the openness to do as well. Wait, so is uh, the, so Vichar Mala is done, Vichar yep. Chandra Yodhya is done, uh, Chan Kyaniti is done, Sarak Tavli is done. What's the other one you said? It started with a V as well. I'm just sorry, I'm just writing these down because I'm trying to order these yeah, for no, me. No, 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 no. <laughs> They're all on the site, so you can have So, uh, uh, Chan Kyaniti is done, yep. Vichar Mala is done, Prabod Chandra Natak Part 1. Because that's going to be a five-part book. Uh, Vichar uh, um, Chandra or their part one and two are done. Sarkatavli is done. So they're all translated and complete in English. So these are all the Hindu Vedanta ones, right? They're all the Vedanta ones that you learn in the Sampradas before you learn Gurbani. Okay. So in Gur- so within the within the, all the Sampradas, you will learn like like I said, Santhari Singh just released his book. So you'd learn the Chankaniti, uh, then you'd learn the Sarkatavli, then you learn Pavra Samrat, then you learn um, Vicharamala, then you learn the Adyatam Prakash, then you learn the Vichar Saga, then you learn, sorry, before the Vichar Saga you learn the Virag Shatak, then you learn the Vichar Saga, from the Vichar Saga then you look at uh, Birti Prabhakar, from Birti Prabhakar you look at Mokspan Prakash. And so those are the Vedanta ones you look at, and then there's Tarak Sangra, there's loads of others. That you look at as well. Uh, so those are all your foundation before you start Gurbani in some of the sample of So a uh, quick question regarding that. So for example, currently me and a lot of the Sangat are taking the Brahmavidya course with Swami Ram Singh Nirmala. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. he actually, uh, right now we're doing um, uh, Adhyatam Prakash. But Prakash, yeah. like I was talking to a Taksali friend of mine, uh, and he was yeah. basically saying that that's unorthodox, and that you're supposed to do that last, and you're supposed to start yes. with Saruktavli and Chanki and Iti, well, yeah. and then Japji. Chanki, so. Chanki is what you start with. Like I said, Santhari Singh has just released the Panchkaran Tavli, and the Panchkaran Tavli is, like I said, just been released in India, and that is the Granth which has all, well, it has the first five Granths in the Elan, but the Adam Prakash is after you. Learn the first four. So yeah, you're supposed to because in, you're going to learn things in the other other prakash, um, where you talk about the jivani of the devte. You talk about the, the the how long the life is, how long certain things are. Uh, you know, it's written by Pandit Sukadev Singh. You know, and in order to get to that, you should be reading the other text first. You wouldn't jump to a college degree without doing your foundation at high school and secondary school, basically. And that, that's how you look at those learning steps. So the next question is, uh, what does the line Che Kar Che Gur Che Upadesh mean? And are all <laughs> six schools uh, that it's called uh, that's talking about valid, or, or does a Sikhi <laughs> incorporate these uh, six schools? Oh, well, that's that's good because I was about to mention that in my last last uh, bit. Right on the on the front of the Vichar Mala. There's a picture I've got up, and on the front of the picture, um, the picture is a, a picture of an elephant, and then six individuals feeling the elephant, different parts of the elephant. Now that is Chekar Shegur Shevades, Gurgur Ekovis, and Baba Jekar Kartikis. So what that mentions is there are six schools. So Chekar, Shegur. So they all have six different gurus, six different teachers. Shevades, Chekar Shegur Shevades. Gurgur Eko Vesanek. So they're talking about the same thing. So all the gurus are talking about the same thing. So what you have is the elephant on the front of the Vicharamala being touched by six individuals. These six individuals are all blind. So this is a metaphor that comes in Vedant. So the elephant is the metaphor for God, and the six blind individuals are those trying to perceive God. And they see, so you get one person pulling the tail and he goes, Ah, God, this elephant's like a rope. The other one's touching the knee, going, this is really scaly, you know, and, and really tough. The other one's touching the belly, going, oh, this is, this is quite smooth, and it's, it's quite plump. The other one's touching the tusk, and it's going, well, this is really hard. It's, you know, it's like a shiny wood. The other one's touching the trunk, going, this is like a hose. The other one's touching the ear, and going, this is uh, like a fan, you know, uh, that we, you have a nice stick. So what, what all six are doing is they are telling you a truth. 
They have to, what they, none of them are lying about what they are seeing or what they are perceiving. So that's what that says. Shea God, Shea God, Shea Buddhas. We have six different Shastras, six different schools of thought. So you have the Mimansa, Yog, Vedanta, uh, Vasheshak, um, uh, Nyai. I uh, forgot the other one. So it's off my head. And uh, you've got six different Gurus. So they all have a different individual who teaches that. And then they all give six different Upadish. But they're all talking about the same thing. And that's what that is, that's what Vedanta is saying. So what they are saying is the truth, but what they're giving is a partial truth. And in the police, it's exactly the same. You have an incident, but you have six different um, witnesses to it. They will give their perception only. Witness perception varies based on what is going on. And that's what that is. Shekhar, Shekhar, Shevdes, Guru Vedanta, Vesane, Baba Jag, Pratik, Yudha. So what, what Maharaj is saying there is that what they are saying is all true, but they only have an aspect of the truth. What you need to do is get the whole truth. So in no way is it a condon of the six shastras, because what they're saying is actually, if they, you know, take the example of the elephant, they're touching the elephant, they're getting different parts of the elephant. What they're saying is right, the elephant does feel like that. The elephant does have that feel to it, the body to it or whatever, and they're describing it correctly. The only problem is they're not getting the full picture. So that's what that is. That's what the Sheikh of Sheikh of Sheikh of is. I hope I've made some sense there. I know it sounds stupid. It's with an Yeah, analogy. I really loved the elephant analogy that you talked about. It was very yeah, intuitive. If you, well, if you don't get on, um, any of you get on Google now and you just type in into Google and put elephant and six blind individuals, you'll see the picture come up and you'll understand it. So the next question is, uh, the three yogas uh, given in the Bhagavad Gita are uh, Karam Yoga, Pagati Yoga, and Gyan Yoga. Is Karam yep. Yoga uh, accepted in Gurbani? Yeah. Why not you? Well, the big part of Gurbani is your head. So Karam Yoga is, is Nitanam Haruj Karna E Karma. You know, yeah, to not do certain things. Or you become a Tarkaya to do certain things. That is Nitya Karam that you have to do. So Karam Yoga is accepted, but you have to do everything. If you, and there's a great, there's a really good saying um, in a series called Rami. Have you, I don't know if any of you are watching, there's a series called Rami, and there is a quote within there about an orange by Mahershala Ali. After you lot finish, just get onto YouTube, type Rami quote about orange. It's about two minutes long. And it's absolutely brilliant. It's basically Mahesh Ali saying that the orange yeah, is, has got two sides. It's got a bitter outside and it's got a sweet inside. And basically, your Rehab is, he's talking about the Sharia and he's talking about the inner Islam. And he's saying basically, if you look at Sikhi, it's exactly the same. Your Rehab is there. To protect the juicy flesh from the inside. Without your head, it just goes goes crap. But to just think that your religion is based on the red, uh, which would be the outside of the uh, orange, it is just a bitter flesh, and it would just taste bitter, and it has nothing to it. So you need the bhakti and the gyan as well. So that's where that is. So you need the karam bhakti gyan. You need all three of them. So the next question is. Please share a short story or something that inspires you about Sant uh, Wawareyam Singh. Sant Wawareyam Singh. Yeah. Um, short story. Uh, short story is how they. Very quick story. I, I met Sant Wawareyam Singh a number of times. Very enlightened individual. Such a beautiful personality. The Devans are some of the best. If you want to invoke a dispassionate discourse, Watch Ed Devan on Pai Manjji. Uh, Pai Manji. It's one of the best I've ever heard in my life. Uh, Santhari Aam Singhji. My dad spoke to Santhari Aam Singhji. Asked them to come over to our house to uh, come and have some food and do some vichar. And Santhari Aam Singhji looked at my dad and they said, it's not in your karam. And my dad said, well, no, no, look, we're, we're here today, but we won't be able to come because we're already booked up. We're going to somebody else's house. They said, we'll be back within a year. And when we come back within a year, uh, 
it won't be any problem that we come to your house. So they said, no, no, whenever you come, you give us a call and we'll come. And something else, you know, said, that's fine. We'll do that. We'll do that. Well, you know, that's not a problem. The following year comes along. My dad goes to India. Um, three days later, uh, we get a phone call from Santori Armstrong. He's saying, uh, we're calling to say, you know, you want us to come over. And my mum picked up the phone and said, unfortunately, Sardarji, uh, they they've gone to India. And uh, Santori Armstrong, said, okay, I'm and that was it. And that's the last time we spoke to them because a couple of months later they passed away. But it was something as little as that. It was a case of they had said it to my dad and they knew that was going to happen. And, you know, to somebody it's just a coincidence, but to us it was a case of they never came. They never came and they said what was going to occur and that happened. So the next question is, uh, it says, there's an audio on the site of Sant Jagjit Singh Harkowal narrating a grant on Brahm Church. Uh, is there a PDF of the grant that they're narrating? Um, I haven't got it, but it wouldn't take me um, it wouldn't take me long to try to get hold of that grant. I'll speak to their their um, Vidyarthi who's at Sultanpur. Uh, I'll give him a message tomorrow. I'll see if I can get hold of it. Uh, if not, he'll uh, send the details and we'll PDF it and we can get that up. So the next question is, what is Mokshpant and Virti Parvakar? Parvakar. Yeah. Okay. Virti Parvakar is talking about the different Virtis, which is your different types of intuition, the way your thoughts are. Yeah, Virti is that. So that's what that goes into. It goes into the different types. There's seven different parts of that grant. Um, it is normally taught as your second last grant on Vedan. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's what that is. I'm not going to go into it anymore. If somebody wants to know, I've got a really good PDF, um, not on, on the grant itself, but a lecture, or well, I'd say a thesis on the Virti Parvaka. And it's about 200 pages long if somebody wants to know more. Uh, Mokshman Prakash is the, op- it's the main grant written by under the Gulab Singh, it's his main grant which talks about everything. It's basically a collection of his uh, theses on Vedant. So he talks in there about the Atma, talks about Paramatma, talks about everything, talks about whatever you, you'd want to know about Vedant. It's, it's the most difficult grant uh, out of the Vedant ones that I've seen of Pandit Gulab Singh's. Um, there is only one Tika. And that is in Sanskrit, and that's written by Pandit Tara Singh Nautam. So at the moment you can read the text, but yeah, it's not a, not an easy read. So quick cool question, do you have an English translation on your website uh, for that, Vritti, that one, and the Moksh no, no. month? No. Okay. No, do you plan not yet. on one before you die? I, I plan on doing, I plan on releasing a minimum of six books every year. So a maximum of 12 books every year and continuing on Gurmat Vichar podcast and everything until the moment of death. So yeah, because that was the seva that was given to me and I was told that that is what I'm supposed to do until I pass away. So yeah, I'm not going to quit or continue doing it no matter what, what happens in life. So can we? So in your, in that schedule, can we try to get you on here like uh, once every month for like a few minutes? Is that, <laughs> is that fine? Can we have that little slice? <laughs> You like, you like can have whatever you want. And do they put the up the panthi seva karni hai? Tusi panthi hai. We got like thirty <laughs> sangat still listening right now. So it's it's always been around thirty people when we put the announcement. Out, we had like fifty people join it again. So it's like there's been a lot of sangat sticking around. <laughs> so the next no, question is, uh, what does the line uh, "bed put kateb kaho mat chute" mean, and how do we reconcile this with Gurbani at the same time criticizing some other religious practices? Right. The, the thing that you've got to look at is there are a lot of um, you can have a look at a Pankti of Gurbani and go this is criticising this, this is criticising that what I would say with any line of Gurbani is first find the Shabad second find the Atanika third find who the Upadesh is to fourth find who is reciting that line is it a question, is it an answer is it being answered by the Guru or is it being answered by the person who is being given the Upadesh to only then can you get the true context of any Shabbat. 
And this is why I like the Sampradayak arts that you find in the Amir Pandar or Sandhya and Gurbachan Singhji's Katha or the Gurbani Art Pandar. Because just <clears throat> finding a Shabbat, like I said, if you look at Balhua Bandan Shate, Tachuna Hotopai, you know, you read that and the Guru is saying that I'm powerless, I've got no ability, I'm trapped, I've, I've been, you know, I've got all these chains around me and I'm stuck here. And then the next party, so, uh, you know, Nanak Sautkis Pumale Hatham, it's me Hatsai, and you think, why is the Guru saying that to himself? And then you realize that's Guru Govind Singh's replying. So it's about the context of the Shabbat. So if I can, you know, I can't answer that because I don't know what the Shabbat is or what the context of the Shabbat is. If I was to read it, I'd be able to give you an answer, but at the moment, I can't say. So the next question is, could you please give a quick summary of uh, the Jeevan of Pai Manj, uh, Manj Singh Ji? Yeah, that's fine. Um, actually, that's the latest book I did. Um, so Pai Manj Ji Katha was done over eight days at Martin Gurdwara by Santhari Singh Ji. So I transcribed that into my latest publication. It covers two of the eyes of the Sri Gurdwara Surya Pai Manj is known as Pai Manj because of the village of Pai Manjgi. Manjgi, that's where he lived. His real name was Pai Divata. Pai Divata initially used to worship Saki Sarva, and then he met Sri Guru Arjan Dev Ji, said he wanted to become a Sikh. Sri Guru Arjan Dev Ji told him not to. He said, if you become a Sikh, you'll end up losing everything. He goes, you'll lose your animals. You're, you're the leader of the village. You'll lose everything. You'll lose your respect. You'll lose everything you ever had. There is nothing that you will still obtain or keep. And he said, I don't care what it is. I'll give up the Saki Sarva, the puja of this Muslim beer. I'll do whatever I want to obtain Saki. So what happens is, obviously, he breaks the, um, the place of meditation within his house for Saki Sarva. Slowly what happens is that his animals start to die, his livestock starts to die. The people in the village shun him, say it's a curse because he broke this place of worship that he had in his house. Uh, before you know it, people are not talking to him. They take the uh, leadership of the village away from him. They call him an outcast. They take over his house. He's got no money left. Uh, him, his wife and his daughter <clears throat> then move and make a makeshift house. He collects grass every day. He sells the half of the grass for two rupees every day and they eat whatever he can find with the two, uh, with the, um, sorry, Sells it for four rupees. They keep two, uh, not two rupees, two pesa. So the smallest amount of coin. Two pesa. They keep one pesa and they use the other pesa for food every day. They've got no food. They're in poverty. Siddhi Guru Arjun Devji tests them twice by sending a Hukum Nama. The Hukum Nama sent by Manj, but the Sikha that is sent there is told, <coughs> sorry, is told. And not to give the Hukum Nama unless Pai Manj gives 25 rupees, which 25 rupees is a massive amount of money even today if we look at equating it. Um, what happens is the Sikh turns up, stays there every night. Pai Manj is elated. He just wants to hear about Guru Arjan Dev Ji again and again. He keeps asking for the same story to be recited again and again and again. The Sikh is upset because he feels that how is this individual going to afford 25 rupees for his Hukum Nama? But in the end, uh, Pai Manj asks, what is that? you're here, tell me what's, <clears throat> what's the issue. And he said, and he just basically says, Pai Manj, I don't want to say, because what is happening is I need to ask you for money for this Hukunama. But the Guru said, I cannot give it you without the money. So the mother, uh, along with Pai Manj, decide, what do we do? The daughter says, put me into bonded labour. Put me into bonded labour. So they don't sell into slavery, because obviously that's against the key. She's not sold. She's not sold as a slave in any way. So what they do is bonded labor. They go to somebody and say, we've got our daughter. She will work. She'll come to your house every day uh, and she'll work and do whatever household chores you need as long as you give her 25 rupees. 25 rupees are given. She starts to work there every day. So she travels there every day and does the work and comes home. 25 rupees are given for this hukum nama to the sing, to the sick. The sick hands over the hukum nama and uh, the hukum nama just says, by Manj, remain where you are. Um, you know, and that is it. That's all it says. So, you know, obviously the thing, the six says to Pai Manj, you know, 
with all this money, you know, why? And he just says, I'd give my head for the guru. He goes, if I was to give my head, he goes, that's a cheap price, which is mentioned. Um, uh, it says, he uh, you know, it says that within by Seva Singh's Shaheed Balas or Pai Mani Singh, uh, that this body is just dirt. Uh, the best thing to do is make it a sacrifice for the Guru. <clears throat> Story goes on, this happens a second time. So the second time comes and they want another 25 rupees for a Hukunama. The Guru sends this. And uh, this time the wife decides to put herself into bonded labor. The Hukunama says, um, let's hand it to Pai Manj. Uh, as you are reading this, uh, leave your house and come straight to Amrsa. So he comes straight to Amrsa. Um, as he does that, he comes in the in the presence of Guru Arjan Devji, who ignore him completely. And then Pai Manj decides, right, I'm going to start doing seva. He does a lot of seva. And he brings all the wood, firewood for the Langar. Uh, uh, um, Amrsa. And it's at that point that uh, what happens is uh, Guru Arjan Devji asks about Pai Manj and they say, Pai Manj is, is Seva Di Murti. They said, there's nobody that does Seva like him. And Pai Guru uh, Arjan Devji goes, okay, if he does that, can you tell us where he is uh, eating? And they say, well, he eats in the Langar every day. And then Guru Arjan Devji goes, well, tell him from now on he's not to eat in the Langar. He's not doing Seva. He's working for a living. At the end of the day, he's getting paid by eating longer. So from now on, he's not allowed to eat any longer. So he then comes by Manj, then gets told he's not allowed to eat any longer. He is happy because he's like, so the, at least the Guru thinks, thinks about me. He goes, the Guru hasn't forgotten me. So where anybody else would become dispassionate, upset, and go, where am I supposed to eat? He carried on. His body became weak. He only ate from other things or whatever he could find. Eventually, he's one day got the wood uh, firewood that he's bringing back to uh, the Langahor as he's coming through the jungles the the wind comes in all the midday hits his face he can't see where he's going because of a dirt storm and he falls into a well as he falls into a well he raises the wood above his head and he's stuck in the well and he stays in the well for a considerable amount of time just doing Waheguru Um, you know he is He's got the weight of this wood above him where anybody else would throw it underneath him and stand upon it. He keeps it above his head. At that point, Siddhi Guru Arjan Devji realizes how me, runs off their Singhasan and runs up barefooted and tells people to bring a rope and bring the horse. It's at that point that Siddhi Guru Arjan Devji run from uh, home on the side to get to the cool of Bhai Manj, where Bhai Manj is doing Simran and Bhaj. And uh, that's when Maharaj asks the Singhs to look over the side and have a look and find out what's going on. Bhai Manj explains that he's got the uh, the wood for the Lunga and he's stuck down there and wants them to use the rope in order to collect the wood. The rope is used, the wood is taken out first and he, they ask him, why don't you want to come out? He said, no, this is the, ro- uh, the wood for the Lunga and because of... Um, the longer wood not being uh, affected by the water. He wanted that to come out first. So only later on, obviously, he gets taken out of um, the uh, well. And by Manj finds Siddhi Guru Arjan Deji there. And it's then Siddhi Guru Arjan Deji giving the word, you know, Manj Bihara Guru Nuh Guru Manj Bihara. Manj Guru Ka Bohita Jagalanga Nahara. And um, it's because of by Manj's test that uh, Siddhi Guru Arjan Deji says, look, you are the same form as me. Ask for whatever you want, and by Manj says, never test the Sikh again like that again. And it's because of that we get Sikhi really cheap, while by Manj had to endure all those things. I know that's a quick stop gap summary of what it is, but that's what the story is. By Manj get, went through such hardships so that we could earn Sikhi very easily. So, Pai Saab, uh, we were able to pull up the full, full. Um, line. Uh, Gagan Singh, could you please do the honors? Yeah, it's a shout by Pat Kabir Ji. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, that, that was the shout there. That's fine. So, the shout the basically, Pat uh, Kabir Ji is there 
where he has the uh, the Muslim who are involved in committing the halal slaughter of chickens. I think that one is. Uh, is that the one where he says, "Why do you kill a chicken?" There's, it's basically that. That's I think that's what the shovel is. They are committing halal slaughter of a load of chickens, and that's when they say that this is written according to the ribs and the kabir. Well, not the. Um, it's written according to the kabirs, according to their Muslim. Um, uh, the Muslim way of life, what they're supposed to do, their Muslim custom of halal meat. And that's when Luigi criticizes the religion. Because, as we know, you know, those, you, can, you kill them in certain ways, and that's what it's about. Uh, there's a number of shabbats that come on with that Ghazi, because there's another one where he mentions to Bhagat Kabirji about becoming circumcised and Bhagat Kabirji obviously criticises that and says, end of days you know, what happened to, what about women, don't they get circumcised, if they don't get circumcised how can they consider themselves to be Muslims um, so I think that's what that show is but I'll check it anyway I'll check it tomorrow So the next question is could you name some sevadars currently doing some really huge sevas for the month and uh, the ones who aren't that well known? Um, you know, for me, I look at in the UK, there's there's a number of individuals who don't take a lot of credit for the work they do. Uh, by you know, Jeevan Bal Singh is a singer in Southall. He does a lot of seva. He knows his good body. He does his something. Teaches Vedant. He does all the Poti Seva, looking at old grants. They store a load of old grants. What, what he does is is immense. You know, through him, by from Singh, they, they released the first part of the Nanak Prakash Poti in, in the UK that they're run, doing through a Katha. They run the Nahang Santhe as well, so they do all that. Um, you know, people like that. There, there are so many of those people who, who are doing stuff for the Panth, but take no credit. He's the one that wrote the book about um, Santisha Singh Jirari the 13 Diamonds, which is a really amazing book. He also did the Gyan Kirna translation for Gyani Pritam Singh. Uh, so he's one that I'd look at always. Um, second one I'd always look at is Hurd Singh Nick for Agal Publishers. Absolutely brilliant. Um, one of the nicest guys ever. Um, what he's doing with his talks on uh, Narayan Hari Pish. He obviously runs a load of books. He's got uh, audible um, for books coming up. He's just done a, a podcast with the Carlos podcast this week talking about the projects he's running, um, his reflections on 1984 and the game of love. That's the best books when it comes to talking about the, the Shijid things from 1984. You know, they're, ju- they're just two. You know, in Leicester, we've got Gany Buljinda saying he's really good. He's teaching a load of kids at Ard Kirtan. Uh, he, his katha is amazing. He, d- he runs a shahid bunga. Um, as a vidyarthi, he's, he's got some of the best vidyarthi you can see coming up. Um, you know, that, I'm, I'm just talking within within the space of 100 miles from here, so let alone a lot of other people, what they're doing. Um, Amadeep Singh in, in the UK, he's he's doing a lot. He's, a, he's really an influencer on all this sort of stuff as well, trying to promote a lot of Sikhi stuff. Uh, just Meet Singh, who's running, um, I used to know him from Seek Awareness back in the day, but he's now doing a lot of stuff with Nahang Mariada and, uh, you know, starting Zafar Namakatha in English and things like that. Seeks to inspire always. There's, there's loads. There are loads of people who sit in the backgrounds, don't take credit and don't put themselves forward. But, yeah, it's, it's amazing what's what's happening at the moment with, with the Seek youth or individuals here, you know, my age who are trying to just put things up. So we're uh, approaching seven hours now, and looks like there's only one question left. Uh, awesome. So Get that what, done, because yeah. I'm a working yeah. two hours. So oh, okay. Oh, sorry. So sorry. I didn't know. Okay. No, so, sorry. So sorry, the last question is, um, 
so okay so Paji so after reading all the grunts all the texts all the Barnia all the esoteric hidden grunts that you read what would you say is the most important lesson that you can take away from everything that you've done the most um, important lesson and there isn't one uh, I'll, I'll tell you why there isn't an important lesson I've learned from it I'm still on the same path as everybody else I'm still seeking I'm still learning and I've still not achieved either mukti or anything like that so there is no lesson I'm still trying to obtain that lesson and I'm hoping at the end of all this that that is what the lesson is that one obviously it promotes the books and, and it allows other people to learn but secondly that it allows me some good karma for either the next life or the next passage of life thank you so so much for joining us today by sub uh by sub do you have any uh, closing comments or is there anything that you need for from us of course we're going to be in contact with you uh further to set up the whole um buying the batch loads of books for the sangath as well as uh, any other future events but if there's anything anything that we can do for us uh, sorry that we can do for you please let us know by sub no no i'm, I'm just um, what i said i'm just thankful that you lot give me an opportunity to be on your platform Secondly, I'm just thankful that people have stayed to listen. I, I just hope I haven't bored you lot all to death or put you lot off completely. That's all. But, but no, thank you very much for your time. All right. Uh, so everyone, um, you can check out uh, Pai Saab um, on Instagram at uh, Sikhism in <laughs> Snippets. Uh, you can uh, check out their books online on lulu.com, uh, but it's recommended that if you want to get them, just uh, send Paisab a message on Instagram and he can get you the books at a reduced rate. Uh, and then it'll be way cheaper for you because that way the publisher won't take away 40%. Um, and then uh, you can also check out Paisab's link tree, which is also posted in the announcement section. It has all the links to everything. Uh, check out gurmatvichar.com. Uh, check out his book reviews on multiple books that he has. Um, and then he also has Gurbani, Kirtan Katha videos, uh, publications. He has the podcast. If you would like to support Paisab, you can do it by following uh, Sikhism in Snippets on uh, podbean.com. Uh, you can, uh, he is, Paisab has launched a subscription service. So how it works is that each month you can give a little bit of money and how it works is that, uh, they, uh, Paisab, can you talk about the subscription service? Yes, yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Um, simple as this. If anybody does support the subscription service, um, please contact me with your details, uh, for address, um, and email only because I'll be sending out books. The way the subscription service works is if you, um, Subscribe and it's over $25 a month. Every two months you will receive a new book. Minimum of one book, sometimes two book. We're trying to do a total of 12 books this year. So every, month, every second month I will send out a number of books to you. Um, and that is in recompense for the support you are giving for the podcast and the books itself. The books um, I update on Sikhism and Snippets on Instagram what the new books are going to be and when they come out. So in the next couple of days, people will be receiving Jabji Sahib Part 8 and Sant Yani Mohan Singh's his Gatha of uh, Ragmar. There will be more books coming out. And, and like I said, please, if you do support, please contact me and give me your details so I can start sending things out to you as well. Uh, alternatively, if you don't want to support that and you just want to buy the odd book, Baisal has already given you the details. Please have a look through the uh, link tree at the books. Have a browse. If you are interested, please contact us and let us know. Or please contact uh, those individuals on Discord to set up a, uh, a group book uh, order. Thank you very much. Sankaji, can we please get a very loud and very powerful Jakarta for Paisab? Grisivics, do you want to do the honors? Of course, of course. Gajgene al hojabe fate pave sahib shri guru govind singh ji nu manu pave sat shri akal gur gur akal deek deek fate har madan fate wahguru ji ka khalsa wahguru ji ka khalsa
ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ